want to let everybody know we live right now, so everybody can see us, everybody hears, so we good. But uh, we first of all, we about to start. Just everybody introduce yourself, man. Uh, Mr. Melvin, you start off. <laughs> Mr. Melvin, Melvin Sanders Jr. <laughs> Baton Rouge, Louisiana, born and raised. I'm so Baton Rouge, I'm Earl K. Long. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Don. Wow. Baton Rouge. Wait, we can't hear you, big bro. Come on, we got to mute our stuff. Let's mute. Oh, yeah, mute the Facebook. That's, that's true. Hold on, let me see. We only need the phone. No, don't don't mute this one. Mute the uh mute the Facebook audio one. How do you do that? DJ? Oh, I'm not even connected to Facebook. Yeah, right, I ain't even on Facebook. But y'all good, y'all good. Uh, talk, say something. We're good. All right. Let's get to go. Man, you chopping it. You chopping. I don't know why. What's going on? Go say something. It's still chopping. Oh, no. Go ahead. We can hear you. Right. Maybe it's yeah. Wi Fi. I was going in order. Look, I was going in order of the squares that I see, but now I done flipped around. So, but go ahead. Yo, Don Thomas, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, all the fellas, you know, everybody on here connected. So we know each other, we grew up together. I'm from, me and Melvin, around the same age, Drake, 44. I mean, uh, Drake, Britain. We all came up, we was around the same age. Most, most of y'all on here probably, you know, younger. So that's about it. Yo, Ken. Yo, yo. Here we go ahead. My turn? No, here. Oh, here we go. Yo. Can y'all hear me? Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, Erie Rings, also known as Platinum Pocket, representing the, the town, city, or if you want to call it a village to uh, Denham Springs, Louisiana. <laughs> also, you know, affiliated with, with Baton Rouge, Louisiana. You know, just glad to be in the service one more time. Praise amen, the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, I don't know who next. Somebody next. Uh, Ruffin, you right there. Go ahead. Good. Yo, this is the one and only Ruff and Jackson. Baton Rouge, one of the, I guess, you know, pocket dominance out of this whole bunch, man. It's, it's so much knowledge that's, that's in this room. So glad to be here. Definitely most appreciative of it. Dre, you next. His name is Andre Harrison. Of course, I'm from, from Baton Rouge area. So, but originally out of Denham Springs, so I know Erie, grew up with Erie, grew up with all these cats. Listening to them, playing with them, inspired by all of them. Man, this is crazy. <laughs> but love you guys. I Look, if it wasn't for y'all, most of y'all don't know this, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. Yes. But uh, awesome, awesome to be on the call with y'all. Uh, Ken, Kenjamin. Uh, how you doing, everybody? My name is Ken Chapman from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, a small park called Scotlandville Avenue L. A lot of folks don't know about that. Over there by Southern University. That's my college. That's my school. My rep. And um, I'm just glad to be here with you guys today. And um, you can give these legends their flowers while they're still here. So I'm definitely glad uh, to be a part of this panel tonight. Thank you for having me, man. It's gonna be a blast. I'm ready. For sure, Jermaine. 
Yes, sir. I'm Jermaine D. James, senior of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, man, I'm, I'm definitely grateful to be on this call. Everybody on this call, I have a story with, I've worked with, I've looked up to, I've done work for, and man, I'm just glad to be on this call, man. Uh, hopefully this will, will inspire some other guys uh, to chase their dreams and to live up to their responsibilities. Thank you for having me. Fine. Uh, okay, that boy John in the building, in the car, bro. Be safe, bro. I knew you was going to do that. Hey, man, my eyes are on the wheel, man. My eyes are on the road. Oh, my God. All right, bro. Introduce yourself, bro. I'm a, I'm a safe driver, man. All right. John Jones, uh, Baton Rouge resident by way of New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh... Some of you got some of these guys on this call I've been knowing since I was in my teens. Others I knew when I first moved to Baton Rouge. Uh, and I can truly say since I moved to Baton Rouge, it's been a true, it's been a true brotherhood with uh with these guys that's on this call. Uh so I'm I'm honored, man, to know you guys uh and to be a, a peer uh of you of you guys. I think the only person I don't I don't really know is uh is brother Melvin, but I I'm familiar with his work uh via voices of praise. So I mean even when I was in my teens, uh you know his his uh his music would, would play on the radio in New Orleans uh you know when I was 10, 11, 12, probably driving you know, ride with my parents to school, I would I would hear his music. So uh, I'm I'm still I'm still connected to him whether he knows it or not. Him and uh, guys like David Anderson and you know Sean Sean Raymond, some guys you might you might uh, you may or may not know from uh, from the Baton Rouge area. So uh, glad to be on the call. Thank you for hooking this up, man. Oh, cut it out, man. Never. That's this. I, I had to. Everybody that's on this call, like y'all all played a, a special part in my in my life and the homies that that's in my age era life. You know what I mean? Like if you talk to any one of y'all, everybody got a story about each one of y'all. And that's the crazy part. So I it's it's crazy how this live shaped out. It was just only gonna be like the cast that I knew. I just knew like like I tell y'all, I was telling y'all earlier, man. Mr. Melvin, I call him Mr. Melvin. He a pastor. He's the living legend. All this, but I just got manners. So Mr. Melvin literally like be putting us on gigs or whatever the situation is. And I talk, I conversate with him a lot, man. We always talking. And when I heard y'all say something about him yesterday, I was like, no, bro. Mr. Melvin was crazy. Then I talked to Dre today, and Dre was like, bro, people don't know Melvin was cold. I'm like, God. <laughs> Wait a minute. I mean, so I gotta call Dre. I gotta get Mr. Melvin on the phone. Just you know what I'm saying to start it off with with the history from y'all. Mr. Melvin, my first question gonna be from you is like who were y'all listening to when y'all was growing up? I'm Dre not on the call yet, but I'm asking you, like, who did you start listening to? Like who were your your you know what I'm saying, the people that you looked up to that you was trying to go run and see when they was playing? Um for me, honestly, hold on one second, man. Hold on one second. Yeah. This this is a raw interview, you hear me? This this is real raw. We we all everywhere. Like this this fire. Right, right, definitely. But uh my influence, my first influence was my uh my brother Silman Sanders. So he was my first influence. And from there, my influences uh without question were number one, David Anderson. Number two, uh, Jonathan R. In no uh, certain order, it was 1A, 1B. David Anderson gave drummers like myself from the Baton Rouge area, people like Erie, who's on this call as well, gave us hope. Because when we looked on YouTube and saw James Moore, and my favorite thing was when, he, when David Anderson hit the cymbal on the song and the cymbal fell off, Anytime uh, I got a chance to play that song, I would loosen up my cymbal. So at that right point, I could do it so the cymbal could fall off. So for me, the DNA of this region in Baton Rouge, for me personally, would be uh, Silman Sanders personally. But the DNA comes from, in my opinion, 
David Anderson and Jonathan Arbor. That's just my humble opinion. Yeah, that's crazy. That that's crazy. I I um I I've never got a chance to. I, you was the first person to tell me about Jonathan. Um, today when we talked, um, I definitely seen. I saw, I saw David Anderson. We we all got a David Anderson story, and that's crazy because that's how deep um his DNA is in all of us. And from it coming from one of the goats like that, we all look up to that we all from you. It's just crazy that he really came down to all our generation. Like it's a lot. I was telling my little brother today about David Anderson. I was like, bro, like Ken said it best. Like he was our Vinnie Calhuda. Like real talk. Oh, exactly. Like, like that was the perfect description for this man. Like even in my young age, I said, I'm like, bro, look at this dude playing all these drums with no shoe on. Right. <laughs> with no shoe. Um, Don and Eric, this question is for y'all too. Um, y'all both had a um, you know, a, 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 a Melvin story or whatever. When was y'all first time y'all saw him or y'all heard him or y'all got a chance to, you know what I'm saying, witness the greatness? Well, for me, uh, <clears throat> Melvin was, uh, I first saw him at uh, my home church at Richardson Chapel, man. He came uh, with a, they had a musical, and uh, Bob was singing one of the Atlanta Draper tunes. I had my tape recorder, man, and I recorded that thing, bro, and I listened to that. He killed so hard, too. I, I mean, I, I just listened to that tape for months and months and months because the the power that he was playing with, I mean, uh, I wasn't used to that. I was used to just my church and, uh, you know what I'm saying? So that really put me up on game on how to, you know, how to smack him. Just listening to Melvin and uh, right here, had an attitude, he always been cool. And just seeing him play with Vop over the years, even though we were the same age, he was a little bit more exposed before me. So definitely that was, and we had a great relationship over the years from day one. That's fine. Oh, and, and, and that's, brother, Mrs. CJ, I want, I want people to understand that. The guys and our, we, we had camaraderie. Yeah. It was camaraderie. Like, it was to the point, if I wasn't playing, if Kenneth Mitchell or somebody wasn't singing, and I wasn't playing, but Erie or Andre or Ken or somebody was playing, <laughs> Dre, that's you over there watching Facebook and got the Facebook live on. Dre, that's you over there watching Facebook. Huh? <laughs> you got the Facebook live stream on, messing up our conversation, bro. Facebook live stream on, messing up our conversation, bro. No, man, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? We got, we got a brief yeah, intermission for a technical deal. You got back on. You got an echo, my boy. You got an echo. All right. Eerie. Eerie. Uh, your story. You. Uh, <clears throat> I first heard about Melvin, uh, just like Don said, with Voices of Praise. But I was actually at the recording. So that's how I got my experience with Melvin. And Are you serious, so, man? Yes. I was at the oh. record, and I'll never forget that. Oh, wow. I'm humbled. Oh, okay, I'm go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, I mean, that's why I'm never one of my, my favorite drummers, bro. You know, growing up, you know, me being from Denver Springs, nobody knew who I was, but I was always observing and checking out, you know, drummers. And, and Melvin... And uh, David and Jonathan, you know, especially being the church guy in Christ, those were the cats back in the day, you know. Yeah. So it was a it was an honor to to see him uh, live. You know, I heard a lot about him and whatnot, but to see him live, you know, it was it was it was a humbling experience. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For sure. And and um, they played a huge part in my plan. You know, and you know, through the years, me and Melvin always been in mad close, mad cool. You know, his family, everything, being over there, right. acts because quiet is kept. They don't, 
They don't know that I'm horrible at tuning drums. Erie used to tune the drums at the church every time I got a new set of heads. Oh yeah, Erie is the tuning guru. Erie, like man, I would call Erie to tune some drums in a heartbeat, bro. Like real talk between him and Ruffin and John Jones too. I'd be like, yo, y'all tune oh, drums. Yeah, bro. Ruffin got the juice too. Oh yeah, I'd be acting like I have no idea how to tune, but like, yo, man, show me. Uh, this yeah. right here. I hear you. Uh, who, Ruffin, you had a, a, a Melvin story too yesterday, right? Bro. I got plenty of Melvin stories, bro. I need, Melvin, I need everybody miss the Melvin story, bro. Let me tell you, bro. First day I saw Mel play, man. Mel came to a church uh, called Mount Zion Baptist Church on 1920 Progress Road. I, I like saying it like this because this is how I was, I was taught the whole, you know, my whole life. 1920 <laughs> Progress Road, Pastor George C. P. DD Pastor. That's what the program said. You feel me? That's old school. A lot of people right. don't know nothing about this. <laughs> yes. uh, you had all the other ministers listed on the program. But yo, we did a musical man and Voices of Praise came through there. And one time Mel came through there uh just singing with his sisters and and, and uh bro, he had a, a natural wood uh little, I want to say it was about a 10 or 12. It's a 30. 13 by 13. 5 that Jermaine James still is holding hostage. <laughs> hey, when you ready for it, let me know. It's sitting right here in my closet. So Can I, I just look at it? Can I look at it? I'm going to have to go get it. Okay. Is it that Remo so snare? I no, I had a custom made snare. Yeah, maple custom made snare. With gold trim. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Have it. it ain't went nowhere. Okay. Oh, and Jermaine yeah, I remember has that it. one too. Say, bro. Yeah. Mel walks in with this this drum in a case, you feel me? Michael Noto's case. A lot of pet cats don't know <laughs> nothing about Michael Noto's. Michael Noto's was the drum store to go to when you needed something. It was like our CNM, yeah. Guitar Center, whatever you want to call it, bro. Like, you had to go to Mike, or either you was going to Ziegler's. And everybody know Mike had the, the most updated drum gear, most likely, unless Ziegler's just pulled some secretive stuff off. Uh, man, but Mel came in there, bro. And Mel was a humble cat. Like, you know, Mel ain't come in there with this, this like, I'm about to just tear it up. Mel was just like this little quiet dude. But when he got on the drums, bro, he had a loud talk. Like, <laughs> he really, he really made you listen. He really made you like, you know, if you was talking in the, in the musical, I guarantee you, you shut up because Melvin was speaking, yeah. and, you know. A lot of people don't realize, bro, drums really carry so much weight. You know, being a percussionist out here, man, uh, you, 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 you're the person who sets the tone. You know, anything can set the atmosphere for, for anything. Thank you. Anything, uh, that's my girl bringing some tea, so I got to be, be respectful. Hey, man, I'm at the house. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I got, so, you know, man, when you think about it, bro, you know, uh, like I said, man, Mel just made a, a big noise. You know, when you, you think about it, man, we set the tone, you know, the first thing you're going to hear is mostly the drummer counting in everything. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, unless it's just, a, you know, you, you a, you're the MD and the head person, but nine times out of ten, the drummer's setting the tone. It's setting the atmosphere. So, man, Mel would do that, man, and, and he would speak, you know, a big ministral gift. From his, you know, from his body, man, and I, I thank God that he's he's one of the people that I know out of this whole bunch, man. So, yeah, Mel, you the, you the guru, bro. Man, I ain't gonna say all that. I'm just <laughs> humble, man. I'm hey, humble, man. Don't make me tell my secret. I still get to see you play a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he told me today, though. He told me he be having to jump on there sometimes, man. He's yeah. still a guy. He said, man, look, I ain't trying to cut chops, but I, I'm sitting in that pocket. Hey, hey bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One day, I'm going to try to get on there, bro. Mel showed me a lick, bro. I'm still trying to finesse. I told you, CJ. Right you yeah. thought I was lying. Yeah. <laughs> bro. Mel got a lick that I'm still trying to finesse, bro. Hey, I guarantee bro, that. I'm telling you, that's crazy. I called it in the day, bro. I called Erica, got on Erica, because that's like my sister. I got her, I'm like, bro, why y'all never told? Why I don't I, I? I don't know this, bro. Like, what's going on? Um, so yeah, I was. I, I called everybody mad. I'm like, y'all tripping? Hey, I CJ, I gotta fight you for Erica because that's my sister. All right. <laughs> 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 let's call it in. Look, I'm just playing. But go ahead, Jay. Uh, tell your story. 
man, believe it or not, like I, I've been watching Melvin and David Anderson. I was told you growing up. So they used to come through our convocations and blaze. But the story I have for Melvin is I was at Harvest Time Fellowship. I might have been about 18 back then. And a uh, buddy of mine, Chris Quillen, other buddy, Chris Howard, we were all that shit. And Melvin walked in and I kind of froze up. I don't know if you know it or not. <laughs> Great Britain was there. I'm like, dang, that's Melvin. So, like, everything I'm wanting to do, I can't do because one of the big dogs that I really, <laughs> really looked up to was standing over me. Well, by the end of the night, man, we went from talking about music to everything. And I formed, I formed a bond with Melvin like no other, man. We, we've been like family ever since. Yep. Like, we may not see each other every day, but, man, like, I've, I've had some good times with Melvin, man. Like, 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 that was some of the best times of my life back then. Yeah, man, Harvest really Time. Harvest yeah, Time man. Fellowship. Yes, oh, yeah. That's crazy. Uh, Andre, give me a Melvin story. Man, I really hold on. Am I echoing? Let me, let me nah, you nah, you good. You good. Okay, you good. good. So I think the first time I saw Melvin was uh at uh is it Mount Zion? New Zion. New Zion. New Zion. New Zion. Um and uh he was playing for VOP, of course. And I was like, you know, uh, at the time, I was trying to, you know, get out there and play for VOP. Um, but uh, Mike ain't tell me they had a, this this new cat coming <laughs> in that, that after David left, you know. And I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to play now. And then I come in one day, and it might have been for the record. And uh, Melvin sitting on the drum, I was like, man, who is this? <laughs> this cat right here, like, and uh, you know, you look like your sister a little bit, so you know, I was like, okay, them, they must be related or whatever. So, I, you know, they might have him playing drums, and then I was gonna see if you know, Mike was gonna call me up. But I uh, mean, when you started playing, I was like, what? What? No, I thought you, you know, I was looking at you as a person that was just like a stand in at first, and then I was like, no, this dude played for, for, for Vibe, like, he the dude, like, he. He's a real drummer. So <laughs> I guess in my mind, like, because all I used to see was David Anderson and uh, who was it? Uh, uh, and Jonathan R. Uh, and Jonathan R. Yeah. And man, you just, you kind of reminded me of Jonathan because of how you played. You was like real solid and hard. And then I was like, I was already intimidated because it was you. And believe it or not, it was Liz Anderson playing. Yes, the David sister. Right. Y'all was killing it. And I was like, man, you know what? Let me go back. Let me go back to my little shed and uh <laughs> and try to get good. Cause man, I was I, I was like, man, if I could just play with these musicians, y'all had the real. Sometimes y'all had Jerry Henderson in there. Sometimes y'all had uh Cecil, Mike, sometimes Russell, and uh like right. all these musicians. Right. I just wanted to play with y'all, you know. But man, it was that was my first time ever seeing you play. I was like, man, this dude got it on lock. So I'm gonna go in back, try to train myself to be better for next time. <laughs> but, but no, it's, man, it's, that was yeah. It's amazing you say that, Dre, because everybody thought initially I was simply the stand in. I was. It was let him get let him get us through until we find find a drummer. Then Kenny Mitchell was like, "Okay, I need to come do this workshop in Pontchartula. I need you to do this workshop in Hammond, and the rest is history." I was initially the stand in until they found somebody. Wow, that's that's absolutely that's crazy. crazy. Like I, I honestly thought you played on the album. I think you did because I saw your I, name on the credits. And I, opened I played up the CD it. case. That's when CD cases was in. And you can open up, see the credits, and see who who actually was on the album. Yeah, I know I saw your yeah. name in them. I actually played the entire album. They have Jonathan's they name did. and David's name. I played the entire album, but we we were about team, so everybody's name was on there. I played the entire album. Oh my god, that's crazy. That is crazy. I I was pretty sure David was on there, but. No, that's sir. Crazy to know, man. That's, From song that's one awesome. to the last one, a uh, uh, little 18 year, 18 to 19 year old. That's, <laughs> that's super that's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. Ken, well, that was my experience, man. I, I, you know, I, I, I kind of looked up to you after that. I was like, man, this dude got on the record. He young. I'm like, I got to do something, you know. But, man, that's awesome to know. I never knew you was on the whole thing, though. But it was yes, solid. Sir. I'm going to tell you right now. I learned some licks off of there. 
<laughs> so we all did. For sure. Definitely. That's the crazy part. Even even for me, bro, like I listen to that album. I'm like over and over. So I if y- if I listen to it, I know y'all did. That was around yeah. close to that era. You know what I mean? So that's crazy. Ken, what's your story? Uh my story with Big Brother Melvin is not so much drums, uh-huh. but how he um treated me as a young chap back in the gap, man. I always know every time I see him, like Melvin always got this serious face on. Like he, <laughs> if you don't know him, you look like he punched puppies in the face. Like he, <laughs> like, <laughs> like he will flip your forward focus over. Like <laughs> but when I say he, he has a pure heart of gold, man. And he just took me on his wing as a young chap. And I probably heard Melvin play one time. Right. Uh but he took me on this wing, and it don't even be on some drum stuff every time I see him. He'd be like, like, you good? Your family good? I was like, I'm good, big bro. Yeah. And like, it's been love since I was a young teen, man. Until and I and, and I and I and I and I always have it, it respected you, Ken, and you know that's why we can we can say this when you went through you know a situation publicly on international television. I was right there. Thank you. Man. To encourage you. So you know, I love you, man. Love you back, man. That's love fire, you. bro. That that's that's super super fire. That like I said, that all of us got that connection with you because I, I had that connection even before I knew you played the drums, and that's how I know it was genuine or whatever. Um, it, it's like you you do have a heart of gold. Like everything that he said is true, and I know everybody on this phone that can attest to can attest to that. It's like, man, you. You know, like you a different cat, man, and it's and it's so genuine. Like some people, you know, you can tell like people be fraud, but like right. you really genuine with like you just yo y'all good, you do y'all good, you need anything, you know what I mean? Like right. the, like like the gigs you you help us with, you you access y'all good, everything straight. You don't even be there, right? Right. <laughs> you have nothing to do with it other than getting us, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. But I just appreciate you just so much as everything else, man. I appreciate you for getting on this call with us. And Sharon, but we not finished. But uh, so my next question is: so passing the torch to Don and Eric, like when you first when you first saw these cats coming up, like what was your what was your first um, impression of those guys? Uh, for me, Don and Eric. Yeah. When I heard Eric, and we said this on the post that you uh that you posted about who inspired you on your instrument. Yeah. When I when I heard Eric. I heard the most immaculate drummer that I could hear. It's like, you know how in music they say you don't hear no rub? Yeah. It was, there was no rub. And it was like, he sounded literally like a freaking drum machine. And I was, it made me want to go to the, to my church, to the church to shed for cleanliness because he had pocket, but he has, he has what I call a moving pocket. He's not just pocket. He's aware of the drums and can do whatever he wants, but he's immaculate with it. Don, a technician. He makes me thick because he can read music and I never could. And Don is just a beast with his drum awareness. He's a technician at it. And that's something, when I saw Don, I said, I will never be a a technician like him. And it made me feel good to find out later that he actually was in the band. So he had an advantage over us who was just born to play. He cultivated his. Yeah, for sure, man. It, it's crazy that you said it because I tell I, both of them know that. They already know that. Um, I tell Erie, I tell Don the same thing. Excuse me. Um, Erie, bro. Like, Erie, man, bro, I'm just pocket. That's his saying. Man, I'm pocket. I'm just, I'm just this and this and that. But, Boy, Erie is crazy. Like, oh, yeah. bro, like, do not sleep on Erie at all, bro. Like, at all. The, 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 you said you described it great, Um, a moving pocket. Erie is definitely a moving pocket. Like, he knows how to fit in all right. those spaces, all those gaps. To, and it feels good. You know what I mean? His feel is crazy. Erie, nah. is that drummer. Erie is that drummer who will never be without a gig. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. With no matter what time, no matter right. no matter nothing, because he knows how to make it feel good. Don, like you said, a technician. Like Don, to have Don, to have you 
head playing one rhythm with this limb. Exactly. Creator uh, rhythm with this limb. We're playing something in time with your eye. Exactly. And, but that's how he thinks. You know what I mean? And in order to be, in order to be fluent, you got to have your limbs doing all of that. So when you see technician, that's crazy that you describe those two like that because that's the perfect description. Right. And he a technician, but he'll make you dance too, buddy. He'll make oh, you get about sure. the instrument to dance. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. These dudes, like, like I said, man, even even when I hear them today, like even if if um we doing a gig or we all doing the same gig, I make sure I go sit by the drums or uh, wherever they are and I'm there, I'm gonna make sure I sit by the drums. Me and Eric did Cinco de Mayo like what it was like a year ago, maybe Eric, where I was sitting at, right behind the drums, right? I was your drum tech. <laughs> I was your drum tech. And the same thing when John would be playing with uh John Green and we'd be doing the Michael Foster project. I, I remember at the varsity, I'm sitting right on stage, like right on the stage by the uh step, just watching. And I know I, you know, I don't, I'm just a kid when it comes down to watching my instrument or watching musicians, period. Like I don't care what you play, if you dope. Like I'm trying to watch the whole thing, and y'all, I'm, like I said, man, y'all inspire me. Everybody on here, everybody inspires me to be great. So that's why I'm trying to make sure everybody that's my age, that's younger, know who inspired everybody on this. You know what I'm saying? So please, 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 please ask me about the other dramas that's on there too. Hey, oh, hey, before, no, no, before no, you listen. go further, before you go further, I just want to put in to me growing up, uh, Erie and uh, Dunn. Those like my big brother. My, I'm actually a product of both of those two, plus a couple others. But for me growing up, Erie was like uh, Chris Coleman before I met Chris. Man. Yes! Dunn, Dunn was like Steve Gadd mm -hmm. to me. Until you preach it. You know, and I didn't know Chris Coleman and Steve Gadd growing up. So when I heard, and I actually heard Chris and Steve, I was like, oh man, that's done, well, done, dude. Yeah. I never heard this before. We're going to call you Chris Dave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the fact. We're going to call you that's Chris Dave from Baton Rouge. Like, you're not going to beat my brothers out here. You're like, you're like man, extreme. That's but see, bro Brother Ken, I didn't know that you were disciples of those two, but it makes sense the way you play because you have an immaculate technical approach. It makes sense. That's crazy. Thank you, man. That's crazy. Uh, honestly, honestly, honestly. No, I got, I got to interject on Ken. I'm going to tell you, like, I remember the days when Ken and, and me and Ramaya used to be in a uh, room and Ken Shout out would to come Ramaya over, Trent. man. Ramaya yeah. Ken would come over, man, and play on these little raggedy drum sets we had at the house. <laughs> and dude, when, when Everlasting Life first came out by Kim, Kim Morell. Oh, boy. This dude was like, it was like a method man learning those chops, like all them chops that I was trying to learn off the album. This dude would come in and, and like literally slow them down and let me see them like verbatim every single note, every wow. single rhythm. I said, how do you even break down that many notes? <laughs> I mean, to, to, the point, to the point he knew what Tom to play. Like that, that freaked me out. Like this dude, I was like, this dude gonna be ridiculous. I was like, I, I can't even, how do you even, it's like he was picking out piano notes. Yeah. Right, That was right. Weird. That was weird to me that, that, bro, you can't be that technical. I was like, how you gonna be that technical and have feeling? Like, you know? You so right. You but, right, Dre. It, you know what I'm saying? It was crazy. That that's crazy. I'm a I'm a we're gonna come back to you, Drake. But I'm gonna ask you, Ken, when you first heard Erie and Don, what was your what was your what was your you know your mindset? Like when well, you heard, you know, what page is it live on? Coming from a small town of, of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, it's 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 mostly like a quartet type city. So uh, you know, like the, the the Gerald Haywoods and the um uh, Nissan stores and all that stuff. We weren't really familiar with that growing up. So anything that was above the or different from the regular quartet norm was like space age to me. You know, so you first time I think I heard Gary was he was playing with uh, uh, a group with uh, Terrell Griffin. And um, I think he had this green pearl drum set. 
Yeah. Yeah. Green pearls. You know what I'm saying? I never seen somebody with an eight-inch tongue. That blew me away already. Sp- sparkle green. Don't. Skylandville, don't. You got to put sparkle green in there, dog. Right. I'm a little poor kid from Skylandville. <laughs> And I'm seeing him with extra drums. So I was like, how arrogant is that? Like, you got big drums, to... big symbols. Like, yo, grandma loved you, man. You, <laughs> you got all the drums. And this cat did, I call it the Robocop feel. But uh, <laughs> Erie was just so precise and clean with singles going around the kit that I literally almost cussed in church. You know, uh, thank God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway uh yeah and as a kid that blew me from the regular two and four and nothing against quartet but it was it was just from the norm it was it was different from the norm so i was like after that i was sold i was like who is this cat so i'm expecting him to be mad arrogant because you know sometimes some good guys uh who's great they uh they crap is mad arrogant i don't understand that that's never been me uh, God bless them, or whoever they are. Um, I'm gonna call them their names. And um, yeah, and he, and he just took me in as little bro from day one, man. Nothing much love, nothing but love for my man, Erie Chicken Grease Range. That's his nickname. A lot of folks don't know that. And but Dunn, Big Brother Dunn, man. Uh, I met D Rock. That's what I call him. Um, uh, I think I was like ninth grade. I was going to Baker High School. And um, they had me on quads, you know. And I and I, I'm from Skylandville, you know. That's right next to Southern University, so I'm used to the HBCU way of playing marching style drums versus going to this core style uh, drumming at a uh, Baton Rouge. I'm not Baton Rouge. Uh, Baker High, more on an LSU type style. And um, Dunn comes in from Alcorn, and he, the first rudiment, not rudiment, but the cadence he taught me was sweet cookies. I don't know if you remember that, D-Rock. Uh, sweet yeah. cookies. And it was this melodic uh, thing on the quads. And what quads are, a lot of folks don't know, uh, is it's like a set of four different drums uh, that go around you. And, you know, you go around like that. But uh, you can make different uh, melodies with the drums because uh, each one have a different pitch. And he taught me this tune, man. And it made me approach drumming from a melodic aspect. From that point on, he don't even know he created a beast right then from that. Cause was heavy as hell, but I was willing <laughs> to endure it because Big Brother Dunn was teaching me some space age stuff. That's what I called it. Yeah. And from that on, I took that approach and applied it to regular drums. Like, how can I be more colorful, tasteful with my approach with music versus me just filling in uh, the gaps or spaces with actual hits. Like how can you bring, you know, more melody to the actual music, you know, cause you're painting a picture. The silence, the silence is a canvas and the music you create is color. So it's like, how are you gonna paint this picture? And that's how I actually, approach music from down one from uh done and also uh honorable mentions uh to uh, like three other drummers who shaped my uh my playing uh drew gibson andrew andrew gibson cardell uh he's not on here but uh he might be following us big ups to him uh he used to always hum different tunes for me to play like he didn't play it but he was like i want you to do this and he'll debox something and i was like bro i'm what are you doing? Like, that's illegal. Like, why are you spitting on me? Why are you beatboxing this? <laughs> and like, but he, he pushed me, like stretched me to do some stuff that was out the norm. Dre Britton, that's another mention. Like Dre Britton was the first cat who taught me power as a kid of how, cause I was playing light. I had some, some decent stuff, but it wasn't projecting right. Dre taught me that. Um, yeah, and also Dre Harrison, man, he taught me how to approach music from a different type of, of finesse, uh, <laughs> kind of like a CCM type of approach, you know, versus the the R and B way of approaching gospel music. Can I? Inter- may I interject? Yes, sir. 
I have to I have to ride that horse. You see, I'm t- I have, with Dre. Mm-hmm. I call like Dre. Everybody uh, mentions him. Oh, the Mitchell sisters drummer. But Dre to me is like was like Anthony Davis. Mm-hmm. Dre went from being a six five guard to a seven foot center in one summer. And of this course. is why I say that. I went to go uh, off to co- play college ball, but my first year I would still commute from Lafayette to Baton Rouge. And I saw him, and when I saw him, just like Ken said, he wasn't no gospel drummer. He was a multifaceted drummer and he had spurt. The spurt was over just a couple of months. I was like, this ain't the Mitchell sister drummer. This somebody whole oh, well, this a whole nother beast now. Yeah, he, he was not Teddy Campbell. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. He, he was Teddy Campbell to me. Perfect. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, Jermaine. Erie and Don. Man, I fortunately, like I said, I grew up with Erie, man. Erie has a story about me when I was a small elementary school kid. And if he says it, I'm going to rip his dreads out. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Um, I was doing like one of my first recording sessions in my probably late teens, early 20s. And uh, we was in this cat named Doobie Studio. Shout out to Lynn Butler, man. And uh, I was like recording a joint and it was like, you hitting your snare in the wrong spot. Like move your hand up and hit that snare closer to the middle and watch what happens. And uh, we went and, and I worked on it. I worked on it. I, I We had the same snare, that uh, Pearl 12 by 7 snare. I tuned my snare just like he had his. I started playing like, I literally looked at the indentation in the middle of my snare and tried to make it identical to here. Like, seriously, like, if I'm hitting what he hitting, I'm sounding good. Um, Erie, Erie was one of the, the cast, Ken. Erie and Ken changed the game for me. They inspired me to go buy MPC 1000. Uh, I went over a whole summer shedding every day at my house on an MPC 1000. I said, nobody will ever see me uh, and not be able to play with a clip. That was one of the things I, like I made. Like, I'm going to get this down. Because I grew up, and I was telling John Jones the other day, I grew up in a church, man, where it was just organ and drums. Uh, I didn't play with a bass player until high school. Um, you know, we learned what we, uh, we learned the music on the way to rehearsal. You know, we, you found out what you were singing on Sundays, but I got around some real organized cats. Don Thomas, man, like, again, we all were coaching. So I always knew Don and Erie, but when Don came back from Alcorn, uh, he really caught my eye, man. I could tell you so many stories about Don. Me and Don played together for years. We started playing at the table as bread and, uh, uh, we started playing gigs together. I actually like tried to repattern my feel after done because I had played so many gigs and I watched so many people dance to him and cry to him and be inspired. We would play, you know, birthday parties and play like a gospel song and people going in. And I just watched how he approached it. Uh, Dunn would always tell me, I want you to try this, do this. Dunn would have a little cowbell in front of the kick drum. Uh, the way he just played it, he played a snare. Dunn had a dent in his rim. Like the rim was warped on that little uh, Yamaha snare he had because he just, he played that snare in that sweet spot. And uh, man, I don't know if y'all ever knew this, but I'm always watching everything that I picked up from him. I incorporated not just on my drum playing and on on my keyboard playing too, because those guys are musical musicians. And if you listen to them play, they're they're trying to tell you something. Uh, They'll set you up with with a feel on the tongues. They'll set you up with a wash on the ride, stuff like that. I, I actually was able to kind of get inside of Dunn's head. And, uh, man, we had a great run over those years. Great run, man. We played some great music together. That's fire, bro. That's super fire. Ruffin, what's your uh, story? Man, uh, for me with E, bro, E was in my wedding, dog. So that says enough right there. You feel me? Yeah. Uh, e was. All right, so I'm going to put it like this. I'm more like the baby of the whole group. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't really, you know, really know that because uh, I'm probably, probably like, I want to say maybe two years on some, some guys, you know, four or five or whatever. Not trying to call everybody age out. But for me, bro, E, the first time I met E, I met E at Glory Lane, I think. And we was at a musical. I had to play, I don't even remember the group, but. You know, at the time when you you have no guidance, you learning on your own, 
you know, you'll see a lot of people, you know, again, we have social media like we're doing right now, man. So, you know, when you see somebody, you only had one one social media, which was your brain. And you got to think about how that rhythm went or you had to really see what they licks look like unless you or, had or a tape a recorder. recorder, a tape recorder, man. So, yeah. you know, a lot of the licks I learned, man, I, I, I started learning rudiments in sixth grade. And I didn't even have a drum pad, no pillow, no drum. I was learning rudiments in the air. I mm-hmm. kid you not. Uh, you know, but man, he saw all my my mistakes that I was doing coming up. And uh he was like, Man, if you would take some of the patterns that you do, bro, and just learn how to space them out. And and you know, he said, Man, you you seem like you're on the right path, man. From that day on, man, me and E just clicked, man. Me and E worked at a music store, a guitar center together. Uh, you know, drum, uh, you know, drum techs and selling drums and stuff, man. So uh, we we always had this tight bond on drums, and we just learned how to get together and share, man. So it was an honor to uh, to have his knowledge, you know, for him to let me pick his brain. Mm-hmm. But Don, bro, Don. He's serious, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's crazy. Done, bro. I saw Done with Vop. And I was just like, where are these cats coming from? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know these, you know, I ain't know at the time, you know, Done was coming out of college or this and that. Like, say, I ain't had no, no leadership you know, what I learn from. I just knew how to put some pennies on a, a cookie can metal bucket, make a snare out of it, take the coat hangers that had the, you know, the little removable brown parts when you come to the cleaners and make some drum sticks, tan that up on stuff. Man, I was just an at-home kid beating on drums, wishing for a dream, just to play. So uh, when I heard Don, man, Don's sound was just so impeccable, bro. Uh, Don really was game changer. Don came in there with this big Yamaha drum machine. Again, Michael, I think you had to get it at Michael Noto's at the time or Ziegler. It was one of them stores. Or maybe seeing them was at the time, bro. But man, when Don figured some, some ways to do that technical stuff, bro, and Don came in with them loops and you was just like, man, who this cat? But he was, you know, training with Jonathan Ard. Like everybody say, bro, Jonathan Ard and David Anderson really had, you know, a lot of seasoning up in here. Uh, to do with wait, it. wait. So Don was in the lab with David and Jonathan. The, I believe so. Because so Don, man, he, you've been holding secrets, Don. We gotta so talk, look, Don. So look, <laughs> I, like like I said before, bro. My first experience to see two drummers play at the same time was Don and Jonathan Art. Like they literally played together. I I never forget this, bro. We was at uh. uh God, it's a church on, on right behind the UPS building uh, uh, off of airport, by the airport. I can't think of the name of the church. Is it uh, Pastor Lit? Yeah, I think so. I I know, think yeah, it, it is, but I don't know the name of the church. The yeah, the church. But, uh, bro, they had two sets, bro, and they had piccolos. You know, Don had his jam stare. Don was Yamaha. That was his thing. He was like Yamaha, like forever. So... Uh, Until he got that Mapex, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, right, man, when he uh, when they they played together, bro, you you just saw this phenomenal gel that I was like, how y'all did this? Like, how long did it take for y'all to practice to to get to sync it? You know, sync with each other on these patterns and, and crazy rhythms, man. You know, and they was killing, bro. So f- forever, I started watching Vop, man. Listen. I'm 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 a part of Vop right now, bro, and I'm honored to be a part of the history of musicianship that I've seen come through there. You know, not just drummers. You know, John Sam, you know, Tim Britton, uh, right. Terrell, all these cats, man. I they played an intricate part, you know, for me. Like, I think well, I, no lie for me, I think Shantrum Harkins, Rodney Jackson, people like that, keyboard players, Lynn Butler. You yeah, know, a lot of people don't know this, man. Me and E say, bro, me, E, and Jermaine. Oh my God. Y'all do not know. We play with Lynn Butler on, on a project. Ken Chapman, too? Ken Chapman, too. My yeah. bad, kid. But, uh, <laughs> hey, bro, it was crazy because y'all, 
it's it's so much knowledge. Like we all just one day was playing with this one person, then all of a sudden, Lynn, I don't know how she did it, but all of us was playing together. Jermaine, Erie, and Ken recorded the album. I end up coming after just to, I don't know for what reason why I was chosen, but hey, I was just honored, bro, because I'm like, hey, man, let me tell you something. See, you can learn so much from every person that's in this, this room to it ain't even funny. And I'm still learning with these guys to this day. So I'm appreciative of love. Dre, I'm going to tell you now, bro. I wish I could have got to Bethany just to see you play a little bit more, man, because, you know, in my in my time, a lot of people don't even understand this too, bro. Uh, certain churches you grew up under, they really just taught you what their beliefs and style of music and all this was, man. So, right. Sad. Uh, so, you know, I didn't get to see the exposure more of what Dre Harrison was doing, but when I heard he was at Bethany and I got to see it, I was like, Man, this dude is some like almost type production type stuff, like right. serious. Teddy like, Campbell, yeah, like lights and everything. My boy playing rock music, like CCM before CCM was really popping right now. And I'm like, with some man, nasty what? feel. Say, bro, let me tell right, you, Jay, something. right, Jermaine. I don't know how y'all feel. feel about this. I'm gonna tell y'all this in the honest truth. I cannot stand playing without hearing the bass drum in the sub now, bro, because. I know how Dre Harrison felt, bro. To play a drum set with no no bottom in it in the system, it hurts you because this dude was in a in a living dream before his time. You feel me? So, bro, like like I say, man, with Don, no Don, bro, got Don got so much technical knowledge, man. If you want to really learn some fundamental stuff, bro, uh, it, it, he will be one of the go to guys as a guru, man. Like I say, E bro, E pocket is so e extreme. E you you had no so choice extreme. but to shut up and listen to him. So so that's my stories of him, bro. That's Man. my stories of him, bro. That's fire. Man, that's that's fire. fire. Reverend Jonathan Jones. Jonathan Jones. Here back, echo. Here back, echo. Yeah, I think somebody's practicing. Somebody's practicing. Somebody's practicing. All right. I think we're good now. Yeah, we good. There you okay. cool. cool. Oh, oh, CJ, look, too, man. I don't know if you're... Uh, I, I don't know if it's already. linked. I did it already. Oh, you posted they the link the to... the whole first half, though. They missed the whole first half. But oh, I don't know okay. It's going to go up. We're going to keep okay. it up. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Is it live now? Yeah, it is. On your page? Oh, okay, because my wife was trying to... Anyway, nah, um, so I'm going to tell you all an interesting story uh, about Don and Erie since we kind of we kind of on them. So... This. It was maybe 2012, 2011, I think. And um, we were just about to do Sharonda Cooper's live project. And um, uh, I think, uh, Ed, I don't know how Edric and I were, were talking about the band, but some kind of way, um, some kind of way we, did, we, we didn't have an organist. So I, I think, uh, I think, before uh, we we may have been using Ricky Draper, I think, uh, for some stuff. But I don't I don't know if Ricky couldn't do it or something happened. But anyway, uh, I wound up playing uh, organ on the session. And now that I look back on it, I shouldn't have. <laughs> I, wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't. I was nowhere near ready to play organ on that session. Hey, that was not, you not stepping like, in the water. So I hey, I stepped good. in. Oh, I you stepped in the water and the water was you cold. Did, you did awesome, bro. Chilled <laughs> your body, but not your soul. It chilled my you body, my bro. <laughs> but anyway, man, so I, I remember being on being on Oregon. And so because I was on Oregon, I couldn't play drums. So Edric was like, man, uh, he's like, man, I really need, I really need somebody, man, that's gonna that's gonna be like solid on the drums, man. So I was like, man, you know, I just kind of, without hesitation, I just threw uh, Erie and Don's name out. That was like the first two. I mean, I, you know, I, I could have named a whole bunch of other drummers, but for some reason, I just named the two of them. And so we just were just like, you know, we were just like, man, like they both solid. So who, you know, who, who do we, who do we go with? So we literally flipped the coin. Wow! Just a point and said, "All right, heads, it'll be Don. Tails, it'll be Erie." 
And I think uh, it landed on head, it landed on heads. And so we called, I reached out to Don. I was like, hey man, like we got this session coming up. You know, we need you to play and stuff like that. Well, uh, long story short, Don couldn't, Don was unable to do it. And so Erie, Erie got the call. Erie was like, yeah, man, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. So literally like that session came down to a, a coin toss. <laughs> wow. So, you know, who was, who was going to play drums? <laughs> and, and when I tell you, Erie was so solid, man, on that session. I mean, either one of them would have, would have, would have, would have, would have nailed it, man. Yeah, but, I tried to but, steal his snare. Eerie. Well, let me tell you, that's whatever snare. And I, that I, great I DW. Recall, I'm still asking for it to this day. Look, if I can recall, I think Erie still had his Pearl export. I think it. I think they were the green exports, and it was like a, it was like a seven piece kid, if I'm not mistaken. Like yeah, he with bought, the arrogant tone. Uh, it was the yellow <laughs> ones. Oh, he, he did. Oh, he had the yellow one. It was the yellow ones. Okay, I just yeah. remember. It being and like oh, you know, normally, kid. man, when you see somebody with a seven or eight piece kit, man, you like, oh man, it's gonna be Chop City. But when I tell you, man, it's like placement, like Erie, Erie laid down the groove on that record like a hand in the glove. When I tell you, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was one of those sessions where you know you go back and you listen to the playback and you like, man, I don't even have to worry like if the drummer is on on the click. Like it's 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 just that solid, and so you know, literally that session came down to 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 a coin a coin toss. That's that's crazy, bro. That's that's I don't know, man. Wow, that's awesome. I <laughs> never knew that. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> real. Something Not new every day. coming out. Oh yeah, yeah. everything, man. That's, what, that's yesterday. Yesterday when we was even. You know what I'm saying? Doing our little dress rehearsal. The same thing happened. Uh oh, Dre coming. Um. Uh. Who? Uh, Dre Britton coming on? Yeah. Oh, that's the that's the monster. Don, yeah. you about to say something? No, 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 no. I was just saying. I was just echoing everything everybody else was saying. Oh. But but but, but let's not get it twisted though. I, I, when the, we're associating Don with technician, don't forget, don't get it twisted. He got the soul. He got oh. everything. He got he got the juice. Oh, don't sleep at all. Please don't sleep. When we sleep, we don't sleep. We're we not saying we're not saying uh, technician, and that's all. Like, everybody on this on this on this in this room, man, is like an incredible musician. Like we always say, drummer. But at the end of the day, it's about. Music, you know what I mean? Like we do play drums. We definitely are all musicians because I, I mean, just like everybody's saying, we all got different styles of way or we look at music. You know what I mean? It's like painting a canvas. Um, yo, Dre. No, we can't hear you. That's what I think you're about to say. That must say Andre. That must say Andre raised his hand. That's fire. You gotta turn your audio on and stuff like that. Come on now, don't, don't, me. Don't, don't mess with my boy. We dinosaurs, y'all. The legend himself. Come <laughs> on in the room. Dre. There you go. He ain't connected. That must be connected yet. Yes, they connected. <laughs> ain't connected to audio. Hopefully it'll come up. He got a joy too now. You gotta give him some time. Oh man. So oh, that's, 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 that's the proud of me. Like that. Dog on 70s babies, man. Dog on Android. Can you hear us, Dre? Andre Britton? Andre Britton? Uh-oh. In the pro. Come on, bro. Don't come on here messing up our flow, bro. <laughs> Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Andre Britton, camera is hilarious. Uh -oh. Unmute your mic. Unmute your mic, Dre. Joy. See that, that draw, bro. It's the devil, bro. I'm telling you, don't get no. no. <laughs> I don't want to droid myself. <laughs> oh no. Yo, he actually has an iPhone. Why y'all capping? <laughs> no, I think it's. Oh, that must be Ken talking about the iPhone and cap. Uh -huh. I got, I got, a, I got a he, he the devil. Can't, can't. Uh, That's still a draw. 
<laughs> I said all all iPhone users are going to heaven and all Android users aren't. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> Amen. 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 Uh, why why Dre bring connecting? Why Dre bring connecting? Um, uh, Harrison, say your um, say your ear and dime story. Um. Honestly, I grew up with Erie. Went to the same high school with Erie. Hey, Dre, um, hey you got to share the food, though, bro. Bro, I wish I could. <laughs> when they created technology <laughs> that I can I can share my pizza through a, a TV screen, we're going to do that. But um, Erie's experience, um, oh, man, I just want to say this. Just being on the phone, it makes me have to think back about all the the experience as a drummer coming up, and I'm realizing we had a lot of them. Yeah. And I'm just, I, you know, I'm trying to, you know, put everything together right now. But anyway, Erie, uh, my first time ever experiencing him as like somebody that would, you know, had really kind of honed in on his craft was when he played on Terrell's album. And I was like, um, you know, Terrell came out with the album and uh, I went to go listen to it. I, I don't know how I got a hold of the album, but uh, man, you know, Terrell's very creative musically, killer bass player, songwriter, can sing his tell off. And I'm like, I'm listening to the stuff he's, he's doing. I'm like, who is this drummer? And I, I didn't even read the credits. I just thought he picked somebody he knew. And I saw Erie's name on there. I was like, and it was like, Erie had just kind of started learning how to, you know, do the whole uh, recording thing. And I thought, you know, it couldn't be him. But, dude, this sound like Erie had been playing for like 10 years and recording with people like professionally, you know. And it is it, it, like it's, it inspired me. I had never played on the record. Erie was the first drummer I knew other than David Anderson that played on the record from Baton Rouge. That's crazy. That's the first person I knew that, that did it. So I had mad respect for him. Plus, the other experience was uh, when he let me bar his pearl, them green pearl drums. <laughs> and man, if I hear about these green pearl drums. <laughs> this dude let me play on it. I don't know if you remember, Ear, when we uh, when we did Ty, Ty Cook's album. Yeah, I remember. Ty Cook's album, and you let me play on them drums. That was twice. Let me tell you the other one, too. When Kimball Real came down here, and we, I don't know what, I think it's fourth district or something like that. And he brought him up there and he put the whole nine, like he had about 80 symbols, about six splashes. Uh, he had about four Chinas lined up, like stacked on top of the phone. Like, dude, where am I? So <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna play every single piece of this drum before I get off here. <laughs> so, Eric, dude, Eric was like the, like he, he was the first person like, to inspire me to start to want to record. Secondly, to even hone in on just being tasteful about how I approach the drum set. Like everything I everything I felt on that drum set felt right. Like the kick drum was right, the pedal was set right. I mean, the beaters was right, the tuning was right. Everything was set up comfortable. Like I I felt like it was so effortless to play, and it, I was like, wow, this is what it feels like. To be eerie on drums, and that's why I, I feel, dude. Eighty-five percent. I, I realized that, that time I said eighty-five percent of your your drum playing, your expressiveness on on the drum set comes from how comfortable you are. Mm -hmm. That dude know how to make the drums feel comfortable, Whoa. and those are the kind of two experiences. Like I was like, man, this dude know what he's doing. Like I, I I was sleeping on him at first. No joke, I was sleeping on him because I was like he. He came from a band. I think he was playing saxophone at dinner. <laughs> so I'm like, he ain't gonna be no drummer. And then, uh, man, this dude, bro, came out with a setup. I said, man, well, how, first of all, what you, how you paying for all of this? That's what I asked him. I said, well, how much your drum set was? And so, you know, he was like, man, man, I took out a loan, dog. <laughs> so, man, I was like, I was inspired. I wanted to drum set like that. I wanted to be, but yeah. That was like, man, he was in, he inspired me to be more tasteful about how I approached it, like how I looked at drum sets, how I what 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 my comfort zone were, what comfort zones were on the drum set, and and it made me play better. 
and with Don, man, all I can remember was that little building, that little building that was shaped like a triangle. Y'all don't remember uh, that building on, uh, I think it was on, is it on plank? Yeah, yeah. It's on plank. Oh, you plank. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Let me scroll over to you. Yeah. I, look, yeah, I used to go over there, and, and bro, I'm going to tell you, it was intimidating. I'm going to just say it like that. It was intimidating to, to see. First of all, you were teaching, but when you played the drums, it was effortless for you. You don't show no facial expressions. Hey, um, so I don't know if you're serious or not. I don't know if I should take you serious, but bro, you you be killing it. You had independence like crazy. So I'm like, man, do I need to come take lessons? I wanted to take lessons, to be honest, which I, I couldn't afford it at the time, but I wanted to. But man, it was like watching like a teacher play drums. And he was it was it was like it was so easy for you to the point where you're like, you don't need no facial expressions, you don't need to, you don't need to act all out, spin your sticks while you're doing it and all that. You need to do all that, you just play. And man, it was just wonderful to hear you play tastefully. It was, you, it seems like it was very calculated, but also had feelings, and it, it it made it it was soulful. Like like Melvin was saying, it was very soulful to hear you play, and uh, just hear you play by yourself. It was it, it sounded musical, and that, another thing I learned from Don too was how to be musical. Like he didn't just play with you. I remember um, when I was dating my wife. Um, and she used to play organ at uh, I think it was Greater King David, wasn't it, Don? Richardson Chapel. Richardson Chapel. Not Greater King David. Richardson Chapel. And I used to come watch you play with him, man. I was, I was like, I want to play, you know. <laughs> I want to play, bro. Like, but you was, I mean, you held it down so good, man. I was like, and then he don't want to smile. He, he, he ain't trying to get into it, you know. You. You can't, you can't egg him on. He ain't gonna change, you know. I was so, but I, I just enjoyed hearing you play. You so musical, man. You, it, it, it brought back to me the love for music, not just being a drummer, but just being a, a musical person. So I approached it a little bit. I learned from everywhere. Like uh, CJ was saying, like he, he's sitting at, he's sitting there on the side watching all the time. Dude, I learned everything I know by watching. Yeah, everything I know. Yeah, man. I mean, I watched every everybody that's on here. I don't watched uh, either from a distance or I was next to you on stage. I took everything I could, and that's that. That's what made me the drummer I am. Yeah. Hey, hey, look, look, Andre. I'm gonna interject, man, right quick. Uh, I'm gonna say this about Don. Now, you know, Don and I uh, sometimes I'll sub and play keys uh, with this uh, top forties band uh, called Fathead. Mm -hmm. And uh, Don is Don is pretty much uh, you know the, the main drummer. Uh, Don actually took over for uh, I think Don took over for uh, Jabari. Didn't you take over for Jabari, Don? If you if you uh, you called me for Jabari. Um, yeah, I think at, yeah. well after Jabari after Jabari passed, I think you started yeah. filling in. So yeah, rest uh, in peace, Jabari. Rest in peace, yeah, rest in peace to, to my man Jay. Uh, but anyway. Um, you know, sometimes when I when I get uh when I when I call the sub at Fathead, uh Don, like before the gig, he is like on the drum set with a pad. Like I kid you not, with some with some headphones on with a with a foot pedal pad, and he is like shedding and practicing like before the gig. And this is before every gig. Yeah. So like on, oh yeah, to this day, it's like like he has all of his drum stuff set up, but in addition to that, he's gonna have like his pad, like a book. And it could be any book from you know stick control to syncopation to whatever you want to wow. want to say. And it's just like to this day, like he is still like on the on the pad and on the foot pedal and just like just you know shedding, bro. And I'm like, that's 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 a technician. It that's is. a technician right there. I like yes. I'm not yes. like I just get on the drums and I just start playing. <laughs> but like he like he does all the warm ups and I'm just looking like. You know, I'm looking at him just like, you know, just working it, like almost like, you know, just like he's stitching and weaving something together. And I'm just like, man, that's that's, that's crazy. That's 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 a craftsman right there. It is. And you know what? I wouldn't smile either. I would I wouldn't smile if I had to, if I was doing all that and I had very well calculated in my mind what I was going to do. And it's going to be so nasty and <laughs> saucy at the same time. Like, I wouldn't smile either. I'd be like, man, you know, I got, I got this thing woven together. And if I put it, I'm going to show you what I got. <laughs> and I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna show no expression behind that. I do I'm surprised Look, nobody is like that. that he has a microphone on the drums now. He's singing the songs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Leading songs on the drums. Tell, tell him, tell on him, Jermaine. Tell on him. Donnie, what happened? 
man, he got the microphone. I mean, he probably sings better than the lead singer. Oh, I'm putting it out there. You serious, Jermaine? Don? Yes. yes. Wait, hold up. Oh, yeah. The dude can sing. Bro, Don can sing, bro. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. There you go, bro. <laughs> but see. B. Hey, that's super fire. Uh, we got, we got, I know everybody looking like, man, I thought this was about drama, but it never was supposed to be about drama. It just was supposed to be musicians talking. But I know people watching, like, man, why they got a guitar player on here, bro? But what everybody probably don't know is it was a, a smacking drama back in the day. And all I've heard was Buku stories, mad stories about Dre. The lead drum sets and he doing this and then like when i come around i always see him on leave so it, it, it definitely can slip your mind because he's sitting on leave so he just really captivates your mind you like this nigga been playing lead all his life no sir um so dre let's go back to you tell us tell us who's watching bro, when you're coming up bro like tell us who you looked up to um you know what i'm saying in the area and you know what i'm saying about your style and stuff well, uh, when I was younger, I looked up to uh, Jonathan or David Allison. Those were the two guys, the two professionals of that time. And uh, I guess from afar, we got uh, Jason and uh, Ralph, Big Ralph. I don't know if you know Big Ralph. But for the He's most part, back. yeah. <laughs> but for the most part, it was uh, Jonathan and uh, David. You know, because, you know, with Tim, they grew up with Tim, Bosses of Praise, you know, Convocation, they were always the superstars. Real <laughs> on bass, Tim on organ, Jonathan and David playing drums at the same time, you know, stuff like that. And uh, I think Tim kind of molded how to play. I didn't take it seriously when I was young. I wish the way things are now, I wish I had that type of exposure when I first started playing, you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't, that wasn't the case. So I guess I kind of, you know, pretty much was a pocket kind of guy with, with a solid foot, you know what I'm saying? That was pretty much my style, you know. But I was lucky to grow up and under some great people, you know, now, you know, Tim, and Terrell, John Sims, you know, just the, the greats of the greats, you know. Yeah. So that's pretty much how I started. Then, uh, you know, me and Don, we, we grew up in church, you know, guys together. He went to college and came back a total just beast, you know what I'm saying? It's like his hands just just killed me. So that kind of helped, helped me up. And, you know, Dre Harris and Dennis Spring. Then, you know, Gary was a little bit under me, but he had his own own flavor. You know what I'm saying? So it was, I wasn't really getting pushed until I started hearing those guys. And Melvin, yeah. my boy Melvin right now, you know what I'm saying? Was the most solid guy I ever heard play. I couldn't believe, like, why is this dude so big and strong playing on the drum? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he, he looked like he could swing on the on food right quick, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was killing. But pretty much that was that was pretty much me. It wasn't nothing that I was, you know what I'm saying? I was really serious as being a musician. You know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't at that level yet. Yeah. And it's crazy. It's crazy that you even say that, bro, because I'm gonna let King go after after I say this, I'm gonna let King uh tell you about this story. He had we were just talking about yesterday. Uh, Ken and Ruffin, both of them had like elaborate um, Andre Britton stories, and um, like I said, you you just hopped on, so we had already we had already touched with um, Melvin or whatever. But I'm, a, I'm gonna go back to everybody, and I want everybody to tell, tell us, even Mr. Melvin, we'll start with you. Um, go back and tell us about you know what I'm saying about Drake, because we never discussed Drake. Uh, for me, Dre and I are, are the same age. Um, Dre had, in my opinion, Dre, he was able to have an icon of a musician as a brother. So he, Dre was in the lab. When I first saw Dre, the first thing I saw, I heard his foot and his coordination. I said, OK, I got to get in the lab now. I got to get in the lab because I could smack, I could groove, I could smack. But when I saw his coordination and he did a lick that was 
And I couldn't get it. I was mad. I remember it like it was yesterday. It goes like this. And I couldn't get it. That's why I do it. I, well, that's how we had to learn them licks, though. Yeah, right. yeah. That's how we really had to learn them and licks. So, man, you I sound thought... like you're speaking in tongues, man. Right. <laughs> and and Dre, Dre will tell you this. When I wake up in the morning, I listen to uh, his brother's station, and they play I Got the Victory a whole lot. That was the boy. And, and they play, and I text them every time, and I text them recently to say, man, can you, do, can you still do this hi-hat work? And he said, no, but this was a guy that I respected even now. And the crazy thing is, as good as he was on the drums, he's 10 times better on the guitar. That's and that crazy. ain't fair. I just told him that today. I'm like, bro, how you be killing on two instruments? First of all, how you be a legend on when you come on lead and you be a legend on lead? How you do that, bro? Like, and, and, and Dre was Dre was never arrogant. Dre is very quiet even to this day. So you you know Dre when he got on the set being a large guy he commanded the set. Yeah. He had all he had timing, his coordination. Oh my gosh, envious of his coordination. His coordination was beast. Yeah. I'm just being honest. I give credit where credit is due, and he had an arsenal of coordinated riffs and soul that was just beast mode. I bow to him. Oh man, I appreciate that, man. Legend. Me too. I'm here. Me three. King, go ahead. Oh, um, Trey uh, took me out. I think I was like 16 years old, man. Uh, maybe 15, actually. I think I was right before I was able to really drive. And um, like he was, like I said, I'm a product of Trey Britt. So, my power, like he taught me how to actually really project on the kit. Actually, he gave me his, uh, he had this set of 12 inch hi hats, man. I used to idolize him. <laughs> and he, when he gave them to me as an adult, I almost cried. I still got them hats, big bro. Believe it or not, I ought to pull them out right now. But anyway, so, bro, not only I looked up to from under the stairs. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> So not only did I look up to Dre as a, a big brother, but Dre uh, was one of the flyest dressing individuals growing up, man. Bolo Boo. Don't say that now. Man, Dre, Dre had a great job, man. Like, he had all the fresh new J's growing up. He said, hey, let's go. Look, at, look what I got. And I'm over here jealous of him. My heart black. Hey, <laughs> KC, that, up, that blue Cadillac. Yeah, exactly. I'm about to get to that. So Dre, big bro had this Cadillac on Vogue's man. It was, it was he was a musician, he had a great job. But you know, racist people thought he sold drugs. That's how fly yeah. he was, man. So he I was at the church one time and Big Bro said, Hey, hey, come check this out. So he has this case in the backseat of the car. And I'm thinking, like, what is this long case? I'm thinking it's a gun in this case. He pulls out a guitar. And I'm like, what, 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 what you gonna do with this? Like, <laughs> like what's this for? What is this for? Like, are you holding this for somebody? He was like, taking nah, for somebody, man. King. He was right. taking. <laughs> and this is was this wasn't no no first act guitar you get from Walmart. Like he really invested <laughs> in the real deal. And I was like, you really about to? Do hey, this? don't be knocking on first that. Hey. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> It wasn't a Fisher Price Plus, you know. So uh, yeah, and and a couple of years later, man, uh, Dre is one of the most sought out guitarists in Louisiana. Plus. Yep, yep. I appreciate and it's it, man. Crazy that I was there from when he first started to the monster he is today. I, it ain't can fair that these musicians can. Tell y'all can tell y'all the story, man. Uh, John, wait, 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 wait. We on you, my man. Don't, don't skip. Hold on. Okay, Jermaine, okay. Go ahead. He trying to rush us off of him. Oh <laughs> man! Again, I grew up Kojic, so I've known Dre, Dre, and my family. Like uh, my daddy's went to school with Tim, and my family's known the Britons uh, 
for, forever. But Dre, you remember the Juanita Bonham conference when I was in about middle school? And you said, man, let me show you something right quick, man. And he showed me a pair of it. And I said, Dre, I promise you. sounds just you like him. <laughs> Do it again, Jermaine, please. Man, hey, let me tell you something right quick, man. <laughs> I said, Dre, the next time I see you, I'm going to have this down, man. Like, I literally went in the lab. And I I, I, I tried and I tried till I got it. Man, I spent that paradiddle up so fast. When he saw me again, he started calling me fast hand. For me, that was it. But I want to let you know, Dre, you know this, man. Like, you you was my Jordan back then. Straight up. Like, no offense, nobody else, but you was my draw. You was my Jordan. Man. So, hey, so, speak the truth, bro. Speak it. Yeah. Like, real talk. That Dre was That's my, real. Because not only was Dre a great musician, Dre was my homie. Like, Dre took me in. You know what I'm saying? Dre encouraged me. He built me up. Dre is special to me, man. Like, all y'all are, but... That was my Jordan growing up, man. When we did the Juanita Bottom Conference, he had a, a like a 12 by 6, like a metal snare. And then he came back with that Mapex 12 by 7. That's yeah. when I went and jumped off the porch with one. Like, man, <laughs> probably 80% of my playing style probably came from Great Britain, man. Like, I wow. Really mimic this dude. Wow. That, this was my Jordan back in the day, man. All hell, Dre. All hell, Dre. Oh, Hey, that's that's crazy. I'm a uh, I'm a uh, I'm gonna skip you, John Jones, because you nixed in my view. But I'm gonna go to Don. No, 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 no. I I, I got to say something about my man, bro. You can't, you can't skip me, bro. <laughs> Listen, I, it's not that I'm skipping you, but go ahead, just go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go no, go ahead. I'm a, I'm gonna respect the moderator. Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, bro. Don, go ahead. Man, uh, you know we talking about, but um, me and Dre brothers, uh, I mean outside of just. You know, we 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 talking about the musicianship, all that good stuff. But man, I'm talking my my point of view of Dre is like on the parking lot of State Temple back in the day, as you know, as being teenagers at church. That's the time we used to cry to go to church because we was trying yep. to see get the. We was trying to see what David and Jonathan. And uh, Jonathan was killing so hard, hurting my head <laughs> back in the day, and uh, drilling a crack. hole in the base. What? Yeah. And uh, but but Dre on drums, man. Dre, uh, I used to try to play. <laughs> the funny story is every uh, it was one complication. I tried to play. Uh, that's when I got brave enough to try to come play. Dre, Dre always played. I respected him. He was smart. I just ain't. You know how the power Dre had, so I had to learn. I watched him. I wasn't never envious. I gave this property who's the man. So, man, one uh, convocation I got on, I had set my drums up, and um, no, I think they had to sit down there. I take that back. But I, I um, Dre played, then I played behind him. And Tim had the loudest legend in Louisiana. <laughs> right. <laughs> Them Leslie, there, nobody ain't got no Leslie like this. Straight up. Straight up. Straight up. That is that is the God's honest truth. That's yeah. the truth. <laughs> Stay Temple Oregon. And so <laughs> I credit that to uh, you know, and Tim taught all of us and showed us, you know, how to play and how to follow him. And, and he was our hero growing up, you know, still my hero. And uh trying to play uh I got on the drums and, and uh I'm like, come on, man, give me some more bass. Trying to, and and I'm trying to kick the drum, man. Ain't nothing coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, I realized then how, how much stamina you need. And Dre, 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 I really, from my point of view, Dre playing playing with that Leslie and uh, that that his chop, everything. He ain't had no microphones, none of that. Like we got. Uh, loops and all that, man. Dre play with just straight drum, bro. He murdered it. I respect him to this day, uh, because of he just had it, and that's you know, and, and be it, but beyond that, uh, the most important thing to me, and I want all y'all to hear this. I, I the, the where he has grown as a musician, it changed me and how I look at music, playing guitar. Man, it's a difference between talent and it's a difference between talent and anointing. 
Yeah. Right. That's, that's anointed. Dre, in my opinion, Dre don't say much, but when Dre play that guitar, it says it all. Yeah. But and and uh, I know anointed musician. I feel him. He don't say that much, but when he play, it's like my chest be burning. And I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, it's that fire, bro. You know, and that's that's what I that's what my focus is on. Not necessarily trying to uh, amaze everybody, but um, uh, you know, you know, be more in tune. That that's more important than anything. You know, what I'm right? Saying? You know, right. to be in tune with God. You know. So that's my great story. That's my dude. Yeah, that's <laughs> big, big. That's my dog. That's yeah. All right, Jonathan Jones. There you go. Yes, Lord. All right. So I'm gonna take y'all back to the early '90s. Uh oh. So this this had to be like '90, 90, '91, '92. Uh, years ago, Dre Dre will probably remember this name, but Frank Thompson. This is back when I was living in New Orleans. And so this bass player, Frank Thompson, was uh, was doing some, he had a group at the time uh, and was doing a project. And I don't know how I got hooked up with playing with Frank Thompson, but any, anyway, he, he uh, you know, he was saying he was doing a project. And so he was like, yeah, man, I'm gonna call my buddy Tim Tim Britton to uh, to come play organ. And, uh, and that's all he had said at the time. So I thought, you know, okay, well, I'm just gonna do the whole set on uh, on drums. <laughs> and, lo, and lo and behold, this 15 year old comes in and like big husky dude. And I'm like, oh, okay, like, what's up, man? And uh, I was like, you know, what's your name? He was like, I'm Andre. You know, he was like, man, I'm, I'm you know, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play the session. <laughs> and so, and so, but Frank didn't tell me. Frank didn't tell me like there was another drummer. So I was like, oh, okay, like, cool. So, you know, Frank later on was like, yeah, man. So, you know, Andre and John, that y'all gonna play drums, to, you know, y'all gonna play drums on the on the session together, you know, uh, you know, Andre will do a couple of songs, and then John, will, you'll you'll do a couple of songs. Uh, but you know, me then back then, man, I was, you know, I was a, you know, I was even skinnier than I am now. Can you believe it? But anyway, uh, I was, you know, I was more of a finesse drummer, so I wasn't really the guy for like, you know, really bringing power to the drums. But Andre, even at fifteen, was that dude. <laughs> like that bought like Yo. the hammer hammer down on the drums and so the, I think I, I think we did maybe five songs it was like the, the whole session was like five songs and out of the five I think Andre did three and I did two but uh, but Andre's songs whatever songs Andre did they were just so solid and so tasteful it's just like I didn't want to play I was just like hey, let, this dude, let this dude finish the whole thing man but I'm you got like, baby Thor like, on a kid. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ever since, ever since then, ever since then, like, like there was. I mean, Dre has always been a good friend. Uh, I, I could call Dre. Well, which I did. I called Dre. I wanted Dre to play the night with us. Um, but we, uh, but he, he had come. He had come a little late. But I was almost to the point where I was like, man, it don't matter, man. Like Dre is that dude. Where you'd be like, you know what? We'll stop right. the service for you, Dre. And come on, we'll take a break from the service and we'll set. We we got we got our guitarist. He's coming up uh, to set up his guitar, and so we'll start the service afterwards. Uh, but uh, oh. but but uh, but let me tell you, I remember, man, when Dre took was was starting to take lessons. I remember when he was starting to take lessons on guitar, and I was like, man, like. Like from what they tell me, like Dre, like even during breaks when he would make his routes and stuff like that, like he'd have his guitar in the truck and just be shed and practicing. And just to see, I think within two years to see the time that Dre grew when like, like starting like knowing nothing, absolutely nothing about the guitar from two years to like where, you know, into and beyond basically like where he is now. It's just like, it's, it's amazing, man. It's fascinating. Like the stuff. I mean, I know we're talking about drums, man, but like the stuff this dude plays on guitar, man, is just like, I'm like, bro, you, your ears are like so big, dude, to yeah, hear to yeah, hear that man, stuff, it, and it's just like, man, like you know, like I, like me and Dre, we like, you know, we do this a lot. Like I'll, I'll text him like some albums and stuff like that, and I'll be like, hey, man, you know, check, check this stuff out, man. And he'd be like, "Yeah, bro, I already, I already heard that." And I'd be like, "Man, you know, <laughs> he put nothing past this dude, man." But like his ears, his ears is crazy. So probably out of out of all of you all, me and I've known Andre Britton the longest, and then second to him, I knew Andre Harrison. So I knew both 
Andre's, you know, the longest. And wow. I moved to, to Baton Rouge. Wow. I, I, I was blessed to, to, to hang and know both Andre's. And so each, each the, the, the thing I appreciate uh, about the two of them, as well as all of you all, man, it's like y'all have your own sound. It's right. like nobody on this, nobody like sounds the same. And I'm, you know, like, you know, all throughout my childhood, like it's been drummers, man, that like I grew up watching and, and they all had their, like their thing. Like you knew them for, you know, certain things. Like, you know, we talking about Andre, like with power, like, you know, you know, Andre Britton has that, has that, has that power. Andre Harrison too is another power drummer. Right. Like, you know, yeah. he has like, you know, he has this, this, this versatility thing you know, happen where he can adapt to like different, different scenarios. You know, you know, you got Don, the technician, you got Erie, you know, the pocket, the pocket guy, you know, yeah. you, got, you got a roughing, roughing man who is, who is like the, 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 the diversity, chopper, the, 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 the diverse chopper. I'll say smooth that diverse criminal. chopper. He, 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 he's smooth on you, but he'll let you know you, you in the, he in the, he in the yep. building. Yeah, he'll, you, he'll wake you up. You over. got, you got you got Ken Chapman who is just like I mean I, it's just no words I got for Ken. Swiss man. Army knife, hundred hands. <laughs> Ken Ken is the kid is like that cat man that you know the the symbol twirler man like he the yeah. kid, like, <laughs> the symbols and stuff on the on the head, you know Jermaine you know Jermaine is another dude man it's just like Jermaine it's just like bruh, like you you just literally started playing keys like when I first got here it's like he had just started playing keys and it's like now you know I'm like man bro it's like dude you are like. The dude on, on keys, you know, it's like, bro, and I'm like, you know, sometimes when when and he and I will play together, man, it's like, you know, I'm sitting over there looking, trying to trying to take some of his chords. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, bro, you know, like, man, so it's just like, man, all thank you, John Sims. Oh, right, right. Shout out to John Sims, bro. That's 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 you know, that's another topic though for keyboard. Oh yeah, for sure. But, we, we but, but, we definitely gotta, uh, you know, what I'm saying, go to Kibo where too one day. Yeah. Um, rough story about Dre. <laughs> <laughs> I Bro. came from. I came. Whoa, what's up, big brother? As on with Dre. Hey, I came from Houston, man, on a nine-hour bus trip from a college tour with Southern, bro, just to hear you and your brother do y'all first recording that I have made, brother. I remember wow. that. Dog. Uh, I remember that. That that boss machine on the side was a game changer for me. I had never <laughs> seen any, no technical, you know, no loops, no nothing. No, you know, I'm listening to all at all y'all stories. It's crazy because you know me and Jermaine talk, but you know when you young, you just talk drums and you don't really know how the history of where people came from. So for him to say he's a, you know, you his Jordan, bro, I could really piggyback off that man because you know you guys grew up in Cody. I grew up in a just straight old Baptist church that wasn't, you know, with no sound system. You know, I was, we had house speakers for a sound system. You, you feel me? Brown with the black screen covers on it. Like the ones at the church. Yeah, like, like literally. Uh, but man, you know, I had just seen so much in Houston that day, I didn't want to leave, bro. And, you know, I, I got to credit a lot of my, my stuff with, uh, with my movements just to learn musically more stuff was Shantram Hawkins for me, man. I uh, got you. Shantram Hawkins, man, took me a lot of places, you know, just to get my exposure. And for him to say, man, I asked him, I said, why are we leaving Houston, you know, to come back to Baton Rouge, man? We like, we seeing a whole different world out here. <clears throat> and he said, man, I, we got to get back from Timothy Britton and Shabbat to record. And bro, when we pulled up off that bus, man, we we brushed and went home, took a shower, and walked in, bro. And it was packed to capacity. And I'm like, what in the world is going on here? Like, am I am I am I at a concert? Am I at uh, you know, what's going on? But man, when Latanya, the, Lord, Latanya Tanyo said, introducing Shabbat Praise Company, and you kicked that drum machine off, bro. Yep. What? Is Tell that, a story, Ruffin. Bro, <laughs> I literally dropped tears, bro, because I was like, hey, bro. <laughs> and then, look, I was mad because your first intro, a lot of people don't know this, bro. Your first intro was so dope, y'all had to do a retake. Yeah. And I was like, 
this dude is killing. And they was like, hey, it is too packed to the at the bottom. Y'all got to go to the balcony and all this stuff. <laughs> and I was like, man, I'm not going up there, man. I'm <laughs> right here. I'm I ain't move. I'm not doing nothing else. Like, Dre, you really set a standard in BR, bro, for drumming. Yeah. Like, I, I, listen, everybody mm -hmm. is phenomenal on this live cast right now. But you really set a, a standard, bro, that I, I never had paid a pre-order for a CD. And when that CD came to me, bro, I literally stayed on that CD for 24 hours trying to mimic every lick. God, I can still play your licks to this day. Mm -hmm. When you came up to me, bro, and was like, say, bro, let me tell you something, bro. I've been watching you around town. Man, you got all these chops and you stuff, but you really, you know, don't know how to place it. Dre, the main thing that caught me was your foot. I just yep. want you to go, shout out to you because I went and bought me some polo boots. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. I was like, I'm determined to get this dude foot sound because you felt it. Like, like, like Dre said, bro, you ain't, we didn't have no, no mics on drums back then like talking about it. So just to hear you just come out with that thunder, man, it, it spoke volume. It spoke. It spoke a, a presence of anointing about you, man. So, you know, shout out to you, bro. Really, real talk, bro. Like you, you that dude. You the guru or something. You, you like a Calvin Alpha to me. Honestly. Man, that's fire, bro. I was talking right. to Dre when I called Dre earlier today. He was like, "Man, I ain't even able to remember some of that stuff." I said, "I promise you, when you get on the phone with all of these dudes, you got so many stories that you can yeah, remember man. everything." Oh, we gonna make it. Uh, here you the last one. All right, so Dre, that's my big brother, man. You know that goes back to uh to the Kojic days, you know. And me, and Dre, I always talk. You know what I'm saying? And Dre talking about, yeah, man, we came up together. We did, but like everybody was saying, Dre was that dude, bro. And and just to watch Dre, bro. With his foot, <laughs> bro, it's unbelievable. You know what I'm saying? It was illegal back then. That's crazy. Yeah, you're right. You and couldn't even see the pedal when his foot was on. Like, well, at um, least he wore shoes, Jermaine. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, David Anderson. <laughs> hey, bro. To this day, and we said this last night, but I'm letting y'all know, David Anderson still wears sandals and still plays straight. Barefoot, yeah. Still down, huh? Sock off, bro. It still played barefoot. No socks. Everywhere, so. bro. They, I, I think, think Jermaine. Was, I think Jermaine keep his sock on at least. Yeah, I he do. does. Yeah, yeah, he did. Anderson is part uh, Eric Benet, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Hybrid. Hey, but hey, 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 can I tell my John Jones story, man? Dang, hold on, Drake. Here I'm almost done. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be so. Oh man, my bad, my bad, E, bro, my bad, E. Hey, hey, all love, bro, all love. But it's, it's gonna be short and sweet. Um, it was, it was really a challenge for me when I started playing with Shabbat because I knew I had to come behind Dre, and my foot wasn't as solid as Dre's foot. Yeah. So it was. It just, but it was an honor, you know what I'm saying? I learned a lot. Dre had some crazy chops, man. And I'm honored to call you my brother, you know what I'm saying? And I appreciate everything that you've instilled in me as far as my plan, bro. Man, you the man, doctor. All right, Dre. Now you can talk, Dre. Go Not ahead, me. bro. Yeah, man. Let me, you know, to piggyback off of John, 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 John I, I, I got to tell the story. story. Okay, the second time I met John Jones, they came to IFA and we had this pearl set. It was like a, a champagne color, you know what I'm saying? Some some Sabian B8s, you know, they about oh. two inches thick. Oh. And I, I think it was like a concert, man. So, you know, I'm thinking I'm about to come and flex, man. I get to the church. <laughs> 
it's a whole new setup there. And I'm like, it was, it was Tahila. I remember this, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot about Tahila, man. Uh, yeah, oh, it was a Yamaha you, set, bro. Scott? It was a Yamaha set. He had a snare on the side. I ain't know what this was, an MPC. I didn't know what it was. So, John, get on the set, man. And I, I promise you, I swear before God, <laughs> he had the whole church attention the whole time he was playing. The whole church, dude. Like, nobody cared what Tahila was singing. I, 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 I can promise you, this dude was so amazing, bro. And that was the first time I seen a drummer that was great and, anoint, and anointed. Because that's what it was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Say Dre. It was just amazing. To, I just could not believe the the demand and the the attention that that the way he was playing, bro. I, I can I can never forget it. Dre, I did he have that? Him, bro, he, huh? Did he have that pearl snap with that marching head on it? He had the marching head on it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm telling yeah, you, you say, bro, that story yesterday. That, that boy was a marching head. head? Dog. Yes. That's so, so let me, let me, let me, let me explain. Let me explain this, uh, brother Melvin. So, uh, when uh, there was <laughs> there was uh, a friend of mine, Glenn Glenn Alphonse, uh, yeah. uh, from New Orleans, and so Glenn was crazy as all get out, man. So Glenn will try anything. So I think when we were all talking about the band, like our experiences and stuff in the band, I think Glenn actually was in the band, but he got, he got kicked out. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh I think Glenn um I think he stole one of the one of the heads from the band room. Uh I don't know if it was at Easton, but it was it was might have been at one of the other schools he was at. But anyway, Glenn was like, Man, you know what, bro? I'm, I'm gonna try this head on my on my on my snare. And at the time, you know, we would the, the snares, you know, of the of the day basically were like those steel, you know, with whenever you bought like a five-piece kit. You would get like a, a steel. You get a steel yeah. snare. Yeah. Uh, so we we had like a I think a six and a half by fourteen steel snare with with like a may, may, I think if it's the kit that that Dre's talking about, it was a stage custom. So I had like a steel you know Yamaha ki, uh, snare with it, <clears throat> and I think he might have had like another. I think he was he was a he had a pearl kit. Yeah. So he he probably had a, like a pearl steel ki, uh, snare drum. But anyway, he was like, man. Like I'm gonna try and use this uh this flam this flam head on my on, on my snare drum, and so he he uh this was like you know I think he was because he was actually the drummer for Tahila and I actually the thing that Dre is talking about I think I had you know like something happened with Dre he, I mean uh with uh Glenn and he couldn't make it and okay. so I wound up I wound up playing so I wasn't even supposed to be there that night but anyway uh, I got the idea from Glenn because Glenn was like man. Like, bro, like, man, I'm gonna try this. And like, like the snare, the first time I heard it, I was like, man, it, it, that man, that snare sounded like a firecracker. Yeah. And so I was, I was like, and at the time, uh, you know, we were playing, you know, at pretty, pretty large size churches. So, you know, that was basically our way of being heard. And then, you know, we were talking about this yesterday, like with us watching, you know, drummers, like I think Chris Dave had kind of just like got on the, on the scene. So like he had just came to New Orleans at, at one of the churches and just play and so that that kind of blew all our minds right and so and so uh you know glenn was a huge you know chris day fanatic you know him and and guys like Ch chad brown you know yeah. alvin batiste you know all all of the all of those guys man so uh you know at the at the at the time new orleans drummers was about he, all we were about was like who could play whatever the fastest. Gotcha. You know, it wasn't yeah. nothing about power or nothing about you know <laughs> fast. Like who who can play the, the the fastest double, the fastest triple, you I, know, or whatever. That that was a, that was in, that was in, it in New Orleans. In New Orleans, I got to do this, bro. Shout out to Alvin Batiste and Bookie. <laughs> yeah, Bookie. Oh, oh, man. Man. Yeah, yeah, Bookie was my Bookie. dude. Bookie. And Alvin. Yeah. Uh, Bro, so I know I'm I know I'm opening up a can of worms with, with yeah. when I'm bringing New Orleans drummers in it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try and keep it, you know. Nah, but you got Bookie gotta be mentioned. You oh, gotta yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. But but I mean like all of these guys and you know, dudes. And uh who would you say and who deuce, Alvin? Oh that's Alvin. yeah, Alvin, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. We call dudes. 
Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, but the flam head, you know, was was like I said, if anybody knows about the marching head or flam head, like it it had a real um snappy sound, but it was also like a snare that would like give you like a real quick, you know. Gotcha. Makes sense. So. And so again, to kind of you know cement my my story, like it made us play like faster. <laughs> so you could like if you put a flam head on just like a regular drum set, you know snare, it, it would make good. it would make your 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 feels like a lot quicker because the the response right uh, the, the rebound off the the drum was just so so so, so quick. quick. Uh, so you know I was like, man, I'm, I'm gonna try this with my with my snare. So I you know. Uh, you know, now I wouldn't do this now. I wouldn't do this now right. because most of the drums uh, are, you know, are wood, and so like I think it could damage like your head if you if you make it damage right. your uh, shell if you did it. Uh, but I mean, I got like a, a Remo flam head, and I put it on the steel snare, and man, that was like the loud. It it it, it was it was a it was a drum that did not need to be mic. I put it gotcha. like, like I did not need to mic right. that drum. So loud, but like you, you, you know, I, I had, uh, you know, I had again. We were, we were focusing on being quick, so we weren't focusing on really just like being loud and, and right and that stuff. So it, you know, it wasn't as loud, but you know, you knew, I, you knew I was in the building if I had that flash. <laughs> <laughs> you knew, the, you knew, like, you knew a drummer was in the building if you had yo, he, he caught my attention so quick at Antioch on Mickens Road, bro. I was like, crazy <laughs> like you. I stayed literally right there, and it was packed to capacity. They were like, you got, I'm not moving. I'm staying right here. Man, do you hear this dude snare drum? Do you hear yeah. the placements he's doing? And you I'm could tune moving. that thing. Y'all you could tune that thing. Off that, that Paul Martin album. I was done. You could tune the deepest snare to sound like a, a piccolo with a, yeah. a flam head. So yeah, that's why it. that's why I really liked it because I was like, oh shoot, it don't matter what type you know head or what, what type you know deep snare you got, it'll mm -hmm. make it sound like like a like a piccolo. So gotcha. I was like, man, that's what I want. And that's, that's when a flam yeah. head first came out, so it was like Teflon kind yeah. of so really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think needle and thread. Hey, barricade material on that. Track. Hey, man, I, I, if, if I could really interject on something, bro, like I said, I know I'm the baby of this, 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 this feed to me. Man, I'm really a product of every last one of y'all. Right. Like right. most of I'm a product of every last one of y'all. You can't say well, that. You, of course, of course, that. But like for <laughs> me, for me to see like all like. See you. I, I always think about this, but for it to be put together now, it's an honor and a privilege to me. Yeah. You know, to to really humbly bow myself, man, and say, man, I thank Melvin, I thank Andre Harrison, Andre Britton, you know, uh, Trey, all of them, all of everybody, bro. Like, like, man. Again, I ain't have all this stuff you guys had. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, my whole thing was I'm I'm from Scott. All I had was my little front, the stoop that I sat on, played on the pillow, tried to make a drum set. You know, probably got my first set when I was about eight or ten. A Roy set from a pawn shop. You know, my mom and my dad blessed me with. I I stayed on it, and you know, I didn't know anything about traveling, technology, all this other stuff. You know, to see you guys. You know, the first video I bought was was Dennis Chambers. Uh, uh, it was VHS. Kyle Lee was serious licks with long hair. Serious moves, yes, yeah. sir. Serious moves. serious moves. Uh, and you know, I was just trying to mimic that man. I had never seen double pedals, you know, all this. So I was kind of still behind because you know I didn't, I didn't have too much of the the finances and the you know the resources to get pushed further than what I am. So I really came out of animal, on, on out of a jungle, man, just trying to learn from all of you guys, man. So. If I saw this, this head on this thing, I wanted to try to see what I can make it sound like for myself. Or, right. You know, if I could do this lick to change it and do something different or, 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 or you know, just whatever. Dre, I still remember a lick you showed me on Harvest Time, bro. I still trying to perfect it. Like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy, man. So, E, all y'all really took me, you know, and pulled me under each one of y'all wings, bro, and just, you know, plucked the feather into my Made my right, longer, bro. and I really 
really, y'all just don't know, man. I really appreciate you. Like, all it, my people I even work with to this day, bro. Like, a lot of people don't know, man. I really want to record a lot more than what I am, man. Like, shout out to people like Rodney Jackson, man. Rodney put me on one of my, my first recordings, you know what I'm saying? Santrum put me on amazing recordings. Uh, him and Reginald Collins, you know, a couple of other people in my life, man. But just to just to know, I was what prepared me for what I did recording wise was looking at you guys, and you know, I, I mean, I thank all y'all. I really thank all. Y'all. Yeah, and 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 a big ups to you, uh, brother uh, CJ, for for making this happen because. I'm pro Louisiana. People in Philly talk about yeah. Philly. People in New York talk about New York. <laughs> I'm pro Louisiana. We got something to say too. I'm sorry, we do. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and like I said, that was the purpose of of doing this, man. We got such a rich history, as you can see from you know from from all y'all just speaking upon each other. And that's why I'm trying to go from like generations or not generations, just phasing of from you to Dre, from Don to. Uh, Eric, we got to talk about these younger cats too. Yeah, these, oh, they on the way right now. We about to we about to start on these cats from going to them. You know what I mean? To, we can't even get the media. Because y'all got to, so we need to give y'all y'all flowers now, bro. At the got end you. of the day, all the younger cats that look up to me, Lil Mike, John Stutz, all the rest of the people, all the rest of the people that's around my age, my little brother, right. um, all of them. It's like this is what we look to. like. I was listening to. I, I promise you, I just learned today that Mr. Melvin was playing on. Um, that that album, and I used to listen to that when I was little, man. Like that's crazy, just for me yeah. to be able to connect with everybody on this joint. And like I said, it, we have a message to get out, so it's, it's important that we, you know, what I'm saying we share this with the younger generation, so that we continue to give back and we continue to grow this rich history that we do have here. Right. But um, so yeah, let's pick it back up. And down. I want to hear what y'all thought about when when the young cats start coming through. Like who was the first? I'm a, this is gonna be the first one. Who was the first young cat that y'all ever came and counter with? Um, out of this group, you know, what, what was your first? For me, for me, the I saw Jermaine before I saw Ruffin, and mind you, I can admit that I was on the tail end of my situation. I can admit that. Okay. When I walked in. The same session that Jermaine talked about when he said I walked in and he froze up was the same session that I knew the game had changed. When I walked into Harvest Time uh, Fellowship Church of God in Christ, this dude, Jermaine, was a freaking bulldog on the drums. Me personally, in my travels, I had never heard riffs like that. Yeah. He was doing stuff that I saw on video, like jazz videos, like Dave Weckl stuff. So he may not remember this, but when I walked in, I heard him when I walked in and I started walking up slow because I was like, who is this little dude that looked like he'll knock somebody out that's playing this drum like this? <laughs> so when I saw Jermaine, I was like, the game changed. When I saw Ruffin, the first time I saw Ruffin, was at Antioch Baptist Church on 4th Street. I think it's 4th Street. Yeah, yeah. Chantram Hawkins was still playing there, and they were about to do a go-away for Chantram. They were doing the go-away for Chantram. I saw Ruffin, didn't know he was. I was like, who is this dude whose vocabulary on the drums is just bonkers? Yeah, it's crazy. Ruffin was putting every riff he knew in the song, and he was killing with it too. But he all 100 riffs was in the song, and I was those were the Jermaine was first. When I saw Jermaine, I knew the game had changed. When I saw when I saw uh, Ruffin, I knew the game had changed. And thanks be to God, He had called me to ministry. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, who, who else, uh, Mr. Melvin, who else you remember coming after Ruffin? Uh, Jermaine, now, Dre, unfortunately, Dre Harris, Dre is the only drummer on here that I was unfortunately saw the least of because of yeah. matriculating through college. Yeah. But Dre, Dre Harris, I forget who said it, Ken Chapman said it best, and I'm, I don't mean to be offensive to anyone, but that dude is like a Teddy Campbell. Yeah. He yeah. really is. 
and he was a Teddy Campbell before, like when I was just when I when I was smacking on the drums, when Dre was smacking on the drums, uh Dre Harris was already doing that, had that Teddy Campbell vibe. So Jermaine was the first young buck I saw. Then it was Ruffin. I saw Ken. When I saw Ken, Ken, he was he played drums like a person plays piano. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Literally, Ken was, I, I forget what service I was at. Ken was playing something. He was grooving. Dun, 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 and he he would intentionally hit a cymbal like ding on purpose. Yeah, but he would tell the story. I was like, this dude is cool. He would he would set up the he would set up a story and he would hit the ride ding. I was like, okay, this is creativity on a stick here. I am like splash. Thank you, Rick, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, Ken likes flashes. Ken, when I watched hey. Ken, the few times I was able to see Ken, I was I was excited to see him because he was so excited about playing and he was so good at doing it. Uh huh. Now where Dre, where Dre, where Don doesn't show emotions, where Dre doesn't show emotions, Ken Chapman shows emotions. Yeah, yeah. Sure. It, it came from a different place for me. He man. set up that his drums my house. Real melodic, you know what I mean. His drum set yeah. is like in a melodic manner. You'll be, you'll be like, bro, why you? You got a keyboard instead of, bro. Right. Like, <laughs> and I, I was, I was able to see John Jones. I was able to see uh, John Jones late in the game. I'm gonna tell you, the first time I really saw John Jones was a, re- a something that happened where Dre was playing the guitar. It was at a smaller church, uh, off by my sister's off of Jones Creek or something. I don't know if it was a recording or something. And when I walked in and saw him on the drums, I was like, no, he plays keyboard. (laughs) Because I had never, I had heard of him doing things, but then when I saw him and he started playing, I was like, this dude is good. (laughs) I'm like, because he was, him and Dre was in that corner. They were smacking. And I'm like, why did I know John Jones was like this? Uh, I bro. The crazy part, bro, a lot of people don't even know Jay Jones played drums, bro. Like, bro, I was in my 40s when I found out. I was 40. Uh, hey, bro, I used to sit on Jay Jones, like, like Jay Jones would let me sit on, like, on the seat with him, bro, and really play him. Uh, a lot of people don't know, bro. Michael Pearl, if y'all don't know who he is, uh, yeah, Bobby, Bishop Michael bro, Pearl, bro, yeah. they played the drums, bro. These kids was like real. Lions back then, man, and they they were spitting some knowledge, and I was a, a cub to all this, so that's why I'm like, oh, this is amazing to hear all mm-hmm. y'all stories, bro. Like, this, this, man, this John is Jones, hey, I, I remember John, John Jones really with playing. the great Tay Run Lockett. I would yeah, not have known Tay Run Lockett if it wouldn't be for John Jones. Man. You are you mm-hmm. say it again, Jay. You telling the truth, Jermaine. Uh, me, and Tay Run, me and Tay Run developed a great friendship, but. I was at Faith Assembly one night, and Jones was like, my little homie coming down from Dallas. You should come check him out. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to come check him out. When I got there, John, when when actually, I was so blown away watching John play, I wasn't even really tripping on Tay Run. Right. Like, John, John is up here spazzing out. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, man, good it's thing crazy. I play another I instrument. I ain't going to never be able to play again. But I'm but trying to figure out how I lived in Baton Rouge the time and didn't know that John Jones played drums till I was 40 something. Oh, <laughs> That's because I retired, man. When I moved to Baton Rouge, I retired from playing drums. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't need to. I didn't need to play drums no more. Hey, yeah, like, John, 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 I used to fuss at John because he wasn't trying to play drums. Hey, hey no you more. know who else we got to shout out on this thing too, bro? <laughs> Jason Jones, bro. Jason yeah. Jones, yeah. Somebody did shout out Jason Jones. I did. I did. Oh, Jason Jones was a real trendsetter back then. Back then. Back then. Awesome stuff, man. Jason was. Yeah, for sure, for sure. We gotta shout out Jay Jones. Man. Jay so, Jones, I'm yeah. Dude, I'm definitely reach out to him. Too. I got kicked off the drums for Jason Jones one time. Man, man who ain't kicked <laughs> off the drums for Jason, bro? <laughs> got kicked off by the Clark sisters, man. Yeah, and then wow. Jason Jones would always walk in late. He'd always walk in late with a nice suit on, knowing that he, the drummers had to get off the drum. Hey, you, hey, you know what I really used to try to give wow. him? Wow. Jason got, he still to this day got Rico's father hair, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yo, I, used have, sit, you, I used to sit in the audience because I wasn't on the scene and be like, man, I wouldn't get off the drums as I was there. But every drummer would get off the drums. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. He was that dude, man. Uh, yeah. uh, Dre, now you talk about when you start seeing the young boys, the young boys come up, man. What you, what you, you know, what, your, what was your impression of them? Everybody. Um, I think Ken was more of a seemed like he could just play anything he heard, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, right. it's like uh, when that Strength Jumpy Kick album came out and we were trying to do all the uh, Liddell Abram licks. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> See, they, for they, some they. reason, can't know all them licks, man. Passing just said that earlier today, bro. That's crazy. Thanks Thanks to the, thanks and to the, um, he had the gloves. <laughs> yeah, he had the gloves. <laughs> Shout out to Dunn for that. <laughs> Wait, who had gloves? Who playing with gloves on here? Ken. Ken. I play with gloves on here, man. Man, Ken should have said the gloves thing down here, bro. <laughs> no, see, so I don't get calluses on my hands, bro, for some reason. <laughs> I hear you. Hey, shut up, man. You marched in the band. You had cast in the day. Cut it out. <laughs> right. Hey, let's not forget to mention the homie Chris Darvio with the gloves, too. You oh, yeah, LA, they, 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 they was the twins of glue. <laughs> and you yeah, know, that was Jermaine. Great Britain talking, Great Britain. No, and I guess Jermaine, you know, I just never seen a guy with a sock on can right. drum rolls <laughs> with his foot in it. And I was like, how is he doing it? You know, I, I, to this day, I'm still like, why you know what right I mean? <laughs> it don't make sense jermaine do you use on, J- jermaine on your pedal do you use heel up on your pedal because you got a quick foot are you are you heel down with top up how, how, heel, what's your technique? Heel up. i play heel up okay i figured it's much because you real quick on uh will you you will you real quick with the beater making it back to the head well guess who i got that from who andre harris Oh, okay. Andre was dating Go my on. keyboard player, Tony Jackson, at Pleasant Valley. And uh, he gave me a hard time. He said, man, you can't play, bro. Move, let me play. And uh, <laughs> man, I, I watched him for so long. <laughs> right. But uh, like, it, it, it was another guy, and I'm going to shout him out, the late uh, Michael Robinson. Uh, that was the first cat I really like started yeah, learning man. the double from. He was Rest playing at uh, Mike, New Beginnings. Uh, New yeah, Beginnings man. Ministers of Baton Rouge, Pastor, uh, late Pastor Stella Wright. And uh, I learned a lot of my like foot quickness from him. I was in probably middle school back then. Me and Ken went to Capitol Middle together, and uh, that's when I was kind of, you know. God, dog, Ken, how many schools you went to out here in VR, bro? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that boy, Ken, went to Bacon, Glenn, no, Capitol, Capitol High. Fresh, yeah, fresh work. Mm-hmm. God, <laughs> All that. Man. Ken was, Ken was a double pedal Ken, too. Yeah, man. He used to love them double pedals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Hey, what? I gave I gave my first double pedal, man. Here, bro. Straight up. Am I the only one that still owns a Camco foot pedal? Ooh. Yeah. I don't even know what that is. Oh, yes. Hey. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> you and you <laughs> them out, man. I know they did, but I still got the Camco. You literally got the right there, bro. <laughs> You can get some money for that That's one. Like the Ruffin don't want to play with it. Ruffin don't want to play with it. Hey, I got to fix that thing up, bro. That needs some work and iron. Hey, that's a selectable. You got to frame that. And, and the shameful part of it is the beater is a die. Oh, man, you got to frame that. You can't play on that. Oh, yeah, I remember that, though. You got to get your stimulus money and fix that one up. <laughs> man, <laughs> <laughs> Ken, why you always yeah. gotta say stuff like that? I'm just saying, man, it wouldn't be Ken. You gotta put that in a plastic shoebox and put that joint. That's some dumb. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's funny. You know, Dre, and Dre Harrison, my last one, Dre Harrison, man. <laughs> we was in Denham Springs. Hey, Ronnie. And uh, he was playing for Bosses of Praise, I think. And Dre kept doing this groove, this pocket groove with the hi hats, and it was killing. 
and he know it was something new, and he kept looking at me kind of with a little laugh, you know. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, they look like, yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> so, that's what he's like, bro, you got to show me this group. And to this day, that's one group I can still play. But it was just so funny. He knew he'd learn something new, and he was looking at me like, yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Hey, that's Tavon Lockett on there. Get off here. You ain't from Louisiana. Lockett, what up, boy? What up? I wasn't going to bring Tavon on to, 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 to our generation, but I had to bring him on because uh, uh, Tavon. You got to. There's a link here. That's the form of church drama right there. Listen, it's a link all in here because all of us are so close, bro. Like, we all are connected. So, I, I just had to bring him on. He'll be back, but we're gonna we gonna do this one now. Um, um, what, who else? Who was on? You finished, Dre? Yeah, it was Dre. Yeah, it was Dre. Um, okay. after Siri and Don, we talk about talk about these young kids, man. Oh man, um, John Jones, uh, man, was uh, I met him. And uh, part of till my parents house back in like first got the best cruise guy. Cool dude, man. But um, most of my time was like uh, the crew fact. Uh, when they was doing that, they was doing that. Those uh, they used to just they used to just like say, get my feelings hurt. No. <laughs> Uh, go back, go uh, home, back, go home, and uh, and uh, this, everything he, did, everything he, did, I loved it, and uh, it was great. And, uh, Andre Harrison, Andre Harrison, um, um, I think it was the, I think it was the, back in the day, back in the day um, he um, was so young, he was so young, playing, playing and uh, an amazing, pop, amazing pop. and he was versatile, uh, and he was versatile, and he was versatile, and he was versatile, back in the day. And that's what I, that's it really what I stuck out with. Really like how he, his place, I, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, um, real quick, rough and quick, rough and quick. Had chops. Uh, um, we, hey, book. Hey, book. Go get my laptop, please. Yeah, rough and rough. I was, he was taking his own self. The rudiments I could tell you had studied uh under somebody when he mentioned like you know uh I could understand that's the way when I heard about his roles and uh, everything his feels are you know they I could understand them because that's just how I think. So we he and him really bonded in that sense. Thanks, but Ken Chapman was uh like I said, man, it's a lot the Bron James or Baker High. Back in the day, man, Ken had so much talent. Uh, I was at our corner. I came back to work with the drum section. Ken had all. Uh, it was like the uh, him. He was standing out. I was like, this dude got so much talent to be in high school. And <laughs> right, was, right. Amazed by yeah. Uh, even back then, and uh, he was like, man, shut up. man, I'm like, dude, you need to tell me something because. <laughs> The stuff he, the stuff he played, I don't even think he understood. <laughs> it was, it was incredible. And today, uh, we played together. We, my best brother, we played with Terrell Griffin. Uh, and, uh, me, me, and my friend, Big D. And we, just, we developed a relationship. Y'all just playing, drums. but uh. The main, he had this stuff, uh, he the kind of drummer that gave you, you know, I've had that drummer, you go to the musical and you look at, uh, you want to hear somebody. Jermaine was that dude, I love to hear him play. Come in there, chopping it down, back at the yeah. Dark. yeah. He had, he wasn't scared of nothing. And so he had confidence, same thing with Dre. Dre Harrison was very confident. That's what I remember most. And that's what, you know, my thing is going, when you go to, when you go play, 
be focused on the music. And these cats, you know, Drayton them had that early. Instead of be worrying about standing on the wall, you know what I'm saying? But be focused on your job and what they they understood it. And I heard it in their plan, they locked up and sync. And I think of that's everybody, all the kids, all the young kids. <laughs> That's eerie. Hey, we um, we forgot to, to mention one name that stands out to me. What's that? As far as like the young cats or whatnot, uh, and that's little Mike. Right. We right. talking about we talking about on here. We talking about on here. That's another that's another topic, bro. We talking about on here. <laughs> oh. We talking about y'all right now. Everybody on here. We talking about y'all. Tay Ron not here. He just sitting here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm talking about these young cats. When John, we talking about from y'all from under y'all generation with John and and Eerie, Andre Harrison, all of them. We talking about them when y'all first heard them. What was the what was your and your yo what did you think when you saw them? Man, all of them super nah, dope, man. Super dope, uh man. Uh, man, him used to shed the game. Now, I'll tell you this. Like with Ruffin and Ken, I used to get on them all the time. Like, man, y'all got chops for years. You need to get in that pocket. Feel that groove. Yeah. Yep. That's why they call you the pocket. Uh, <laughs> the pocket can, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> pocket. I can go on about all you guys that are in this group, you know, and I've really, I've always wanted to have a connection to uh, Brother Harrison, man, because uh, we really never got to encounter each other much uh, while I was in Baton Rouge. But um, he was always the talk of the town. And if I can look at all you brothers, it's like I, I had my one-on-one experiences with all of you guys, man. And I thought that was amazing, you know, the, the time I was there. And even, you know, with you, CJ, you know, little brother, like to just see where you come from. This is like when I came there, I felt like how you're feeling, you know, to be able to like create stuff like this, yeah. you know, like the new guy, you know what I'm saying? The, the new feeling, the new blood, but I definitely wasn't from Baton Rouge. So it was much more of a nightmare for me because this is like, I'm starting all over. But each and every one of you guys and Dre, even though we didn't get to you know, spend time together, or really, you know, talk, man, your presence was there too, brother. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I have to tell you that, brother Harrison, like, like seriously, yeah, your presence was there. Cause it's like, Bethany, I want to be yeah. You know, and you know, this is I'm gonna say this and shut up. Thank you, know, you bro. This, this ain't my thing. Shut up, man. <laughs> but, like uh, kudos to you, CJ. Again, see all y'all on here. It's like all y'all played an important part of me for me while I was here. So I feel like I owe all you guys a lot. You know what I'm saying? I know I don't owe y'all nothing, but I feel like I do because it's just like y'all took time. Right. Took time. I spent time in majority of y'all's houses. Lil John, you already know, five o'clock in the morning on that road. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Every Sunday morning, you know? And it's amazing to see years later you know, the effect that all you guys have. And to the point now we have an outlet to, you know, present things like this and everybody can be together because I've never seen this before. Right. Right. Not, big up, CJ. Not, not, yeah, big up, CJ. Cause big I up come, to y'all, bro. It I, I, I come home all the time. And I, I mean, I come to Baton Rouge a few times and I still ain't seen Dre Harrison in person. <laughs> Next time you come, come over to the crib, and we go, I'm gonna take you over to him. Fix that, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like the Dre, I've been wanting to a long time, man. Sorry, man. Hey, I, come on, I wanna, man. I want to, I want to say this. I want to say this, this man, to kind of piggyback off of what uh, Tay Ryan was saying. Wait, everybody mute their mic. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I want to say this, man. Before uh, 
you know, to kind of take uh, piggyback on what uh, Tehran was saying. So when, you know, coming from New Orleans and, uh, you know, the scene has changed in New Orleans, I'm sure now. So I don't I don't know if it's if it's still like this, man. But, you know, being a musician in New Orleans, man, it was always competitive. And so, you know, you would have, you know, different bands or different church bands or different, you know, drummers, you know, like a lot of guys wanted to challenge you. You know, a lot of guys wanted to say, oh, man, you play with such and such church, man. We my my church band better than your band. You know, it was always a, a thing of, of challenge. But when I moved here to Baton Rouge, it was almost like a culture shock because like everybody was just so like chill and, and embracing. Like nobody was like, oh, man, you know, like, man, I'm better than this person or this person better than me. <clears throat> like people <clears throat> welcome all these drummers and all these musicians, man, welcome me with open arms. And it's just like, you know, it started with, you know, it started with me meeting Ken, you know, out of outside of, you know, meeting the two Andres. But it's like, man, Ken, Ken could have been the most arrogant person ever, uh, but he wasn't. Ken was Ken was just as uh, Ken. Like when we first met, it was as if Ken knew me for years. And it's just like Ken embraced me as if like we, you know, I had been down here forever. And it's like Ken didn't know me from Adam. Ken right. introduced me to Don. <clears throat> And Don didn't know me from Adam. And Don invited me like that little square, uh, that little square, <laughs> no, not the square, the little uh, rooftop building uh, <laughs> which y'all were talking about. <laughs> like, like, like we all went there and Don was like, you know, Don could have been like, well, who is this dude, man, you bringing, you know, and especially, you know, the stigma some people have about, you know, New Orleans, <laughs> New Orleans people. Man, what you bringing this New Orleans dude in here for? You know, but it wasn't like that. It was like, you know, it's like, man, he a drummer, man. Like, like bring him in, let's shit. And it's just, like from Don, then it came to, you know, uh, you know, Ruffin and then Erie. And then I just started meeting, you know, all these guys. So when guys like Tehran came around, uh, you know, I couldn't help but be as embraceive to him right. as 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 you guys were to me. And so when Tehran, yeah, I'll never forget it. We were um uh I think we were at Gloryland, if I'm not mistaken. No, nah, it's that church off Mickens. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, uh, full gospel. The uh, the Almond churches. Uh, Almond churches. Uh, yeah, uh, Pastor Almond. Yeah, Pastor Almond. Yeah, it was that church. Yeah, uh, and so man, Tehran, <laughs> Tehran. Apparently, I think uh, this was one of those times, Andre Britton. I think I was I was filling in for you because you were you were coming from somewhere, and I think you had asked, you had either asked me to play for Tim Britton and Shabbat. Or your brother had asked me to play for for them, because you were you were coming from somewhere, playing from somewhere, and you you were you were trying to make it, but you, you I think y'all were running late or something. But anyway, I wound up playing, so I wasn't t- technically I wasn't even supposed to be on drums, and uh, and I wound up playing for 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 Shabak that night, and then afterwards, you know this this uh this this you know kind of tall light skinned dude come up to me and be like, yeah, man, my name is Tehran. You know, it's just like, he started like spitting stuff and I'm like, okay. He was like, yeah, man, I want, I want to, I want to, I want to share it. You know, I want to share with y'all. Y'all share it, stuff like that. Like, I was like, I was scared yeah, as hell too. <laughs> <laughs> like you and Robin I mean, was murdering them. But I mean, I, I had no, I had no choice but to be embracive to, to, to you, Tehran, because everybody else was that way to me. And so right. it's just like, Pay man, it I, I yeah, pay it, exactly, pay it for, and so I had no, I had no other option, but to but to open him, you know, and to and to surround him with with everybody that's on here. So I, you know, immediately I grabbed Tehran, and um, you know, <clears throat> Kwaman Fowler, my good my good college buddy, he had uh he had already kind of told me some things about Te, you know about you Tehran before you had you had got there. So I kind of knew you know I kind of knew who you were, but I didn't know you know I just didn't know what to expect. Imagine and walking. So, look, imagine walking to a rehearsal, hearing, hearing some drums going off, and you you know you're supposed to be playing. You hear somebody killing the game, and then I'm like, <laughs> who is on the drum? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. And when I walk in, I'm just like, man, this dude killing. What am I here for? Like, hey, you 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 really speak some stuff on the set, bro. And I'm honored to even know you, man. Like, like you said, bro, you came out here. <laughs> Not knowing nobody, nobody, son. And a lot of people don't know, man. 
I was scared every time of my life, man. I was scared <laughs> of everybody, but I was I wanted to know everybody because that was the only way I would have an opportunity to, you know, to play or do anything. You know, right. closed mouths right. don't get fed. And well, you you a great drummer, but you suck on Madden because when you came to my house to play video games, <laughs> you were poo. I stopped that Super Nintendo, man. I don't play games. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the crazy thing is, man, these connections, John, Mr. John introduces Tehran. At that time, uh, our church was having Nissan Stewart come down for a drum clinic. And ministry was transitioning for me, and it was getting challenging to preach. They shout, I got to jump back on the drums, all of that stuff. So here comes uh, Tehran. And... He, uh, he's like, man, y'all, uh, he's like, y'all got to set, he set it. I'm like, yeah, he get, he comes on. He, and it was initially supposed to be a shed or whatever. He does something on the drums. I'm like, I'm good, dog. I'm good. Because I didn't want none of that. But he comes and he brings this mentality of, I want to, he comes to me, he says, big bro, I want to bring something to Baton Rouge. He said, I don't want no shed. I want it to be a, you know, jam where we get together. And it starts there. You know, and he brings a, uh, he brought a cooperative mindset, a free mind where people could just, whether you were good or bad, nobody frowned upon you. Say, bro. I think Until we had to deal with black poles and black holes. Hey, Tayron. <laughs> I think at the time, bro, I was, really playing, <laughs> I was off and on playing with y'all at X. And I think your sister had asked me one time, did I know anybody? And I think I came to Tehran and I was like, yo, I think I got a place for you where you can play, you know, because at the time we was riding. You At one time you said you hooked up with somebody, bro, you needed to borrow my shit. And I, I remember you coming to the house and get it. You know what I'm saying? Because I had everybody you know, set. You you did, but you was found because you're like, rough and I need, I need a set right now and all this. And I was like, well, come through. And at the time I couldn't make it to act like talking about it. And I was just like, yo. Go over here, bro. They they they, they gonna take care of you, man. They, they love, you know, they, they're heart of gold people. And that's that's honestly why I'm still with X to this day, bro, because I feel a real, real relationship. You know, I know I ain't grow up under the Sanders family and all this other stuff, but you you would think I was there in all in part of y'all lives with your mom, your sister. Oh yeah, mom. you a star, bro. Hey, hey that's, shout out that's to Chris Gross, one of the best organs ever. Oh, uh, sure. yo. For sure. <laughs> but I was like, Tay, bro, go go over here, bro. You're going to like it, bro. And, and Tay did some amazing stuff in Baton Rouge, man. And I'm yeah. proud of you for bringing that here. Yeah. We, we didn't know nothing about that, like talking about it. I just wanted community, man. Where I come from, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a hard, it's a lot of drummers in Dallas, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, you, you wanna be you know, and, and coming from that, you know, the, the, so I like come and not knowing nobody, man. I wanted to. I wanted the same community, you know. Even before all that started happening, I I met all you guys individually. And even like CJ, I wanted CJ just close to me, man, because CJ, you just so cool, bro. Like real yeah. talk, man. Like you just so cool to me, man. And and that's why, you know, CJ, I know we don't talk as much as we used to, but. The Red Monte Carlo, man. Yeah. Like, man you know, I, I I remember that. Like things of that as part of my life. Ken cutting my hair, rough and going to shed at your church. Jermaine having me at your house. Me and John being on the road early in the morning before the break of dawn. Me leaving set pledging. Hey, hey, hey! You can't talk about that. I'm it's not man. about to talk. I'm not going in. Yeah. Just yeah. like to have that in. in Dre, Don Thomas. Harry, and, and I'm gonna still say Andre Harris, and then I didn't get to meet you, man. Yeah. <laughs> All that was like, a, seriously, that was just a big influence to me, man, to come from nowhere, well, from somewhere else, and be, you know, be a part of another community, man. And everybody was so cool. And I don't, don't get me wrong, it was still competitive, but it was still home. Right. It was still competitive. But it was it was home, man, and it was like nobody could really overshot it. It was enough work for everybody. Man. Yeah, and yeah. you know, John, I always tell you thank you, man, because it's just like you, you really put me on. Yeah, 
like for real, for real. You know, <clears throat> you really did put me on. And and you know, Jermaine is like, man, you know how long them nights were. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know how yeah. long them nights were. Yeah. And it's like I'm serious. Don't be uh I'm a cancer and I start getting emotional. It's just I'm glad I got everything I got from all y'all, man. Yeah. Right. Like, and I, I never forget BR. Like that's why if I always if I ever have the opportunity and I come back because I became a man there. You know, wow. I be, I became a man there. And I needed that for my life. I needed that fellowship. I needed to learn different people. You know what I'm saying? CJ, I needed you at that time too, man. I don't care how else you feel that you know it was the other way around. I needed you too, bro. I did. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I don't even know why the hell I'm on here, man. But it's like, you know, I because you family. You know, I, I needed that. I needed that from all you guys, man. So I'm appreciative to know y'all. For sure. Right. You know what I'm saying? This this is amazing time to even for us to be at this downtime where it seems like nothing is going right. You know, right. we've never been in this position. It's so good to be in a place of thankfulness and gratefulness, you know what I'm saying, right now in this moment. And right. You know, I needed y'all. I needed y'all. Right. right. We needed you. We needed everyone. Hey, can I, can I throw this monkey wrench in there right quick too as well? Ken, I'm gonna really say this, bro. It's going up side by side with you, bro. I thank you. <laughs> I thank you because you were the only Baton Rouge drummer that stepped out on something big. Right? <laughs> and, you know, we knew what your potential was, bro, but you went to, you 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 said, man, I remember all these conversations, like we were talking about, man, trying to become a great drummer, professional drummer, get on the yeah. road, try to, you know, travel, yeah. see the world and all this other stuff. But Ken, you went to that making the band thing, bro. And you know how many people used to even ask me, Ruff, you want to do that? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't uh, have the funds. But Ken, for some dog animal reason, you made your way. I, and when you got on, on TV, bro, you know, I understand how that pain felt for you because you from here. You and I called him, him. I called him every minute and second when he was down there trying to, <laughs> trying to reach out. <laughs> because Ken, I can only imagine what the story was for you, bro, just to get there. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? But you you know, for you to get on some professionalism stuff, because let's just be rude. I mean, real. Our our backyard wasn't full of tools, bro, like we like a lot of cities have. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But to see you on TV, bro, see you trying to progress to that level that 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 level and you know, to come back, and I was like, I think I even hit you up afterwards, bro. I was just like, yo, you, you, I'm proud of you. You I'm did. I'm proud of you because you stepped that. out on something that was, that was, that was, none of us was thinking about doing. You know, we just hear cojones. And we like, man, I don't know, but you was like, nah, I'm gonna take this opportunity. Yeah. And bro, yeah. you put VR on the map with something with that, bro. So thank you, bro. Man, that's love, man. That's fine. That's good, man. Yeah. That, that means a lot, bro. That's right. I mean, at the end of the day, I know for me, um, I ain't say nothing because I've been trying to let y'all talk, but I know for me, just with all of y'all, um, especially with that, since we talking about that, with that, I, I heard somebody from Baton Rouge was going to be on uh, making his band. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I, I, I was playing with Rod. I was playing with Rod and Brandon. We was at Oasis, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. I was like, from Baton Rouge? What? Yeah. I was you know I'm TV. Man, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, you know what I'm saying? I'm younger, so it's here and I'm like, whoa, this is like huge. Like this is, you know what I'm saying? You don't really hear a lot of people from where we from make it to do anything like that. You know what I mean? Right. Like at the end of the day, we got we got church musicians, we got, you know what I'm saying? David Anderson was playing with Ralph Moore, uh, that's his name, right? Yeah. Yeah, yep. you know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying to make it on that magnitude, like mainstream like that, and to he was on TV, nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, before, before niggas was talking about, yeah, man, I'm gonna be on TV. Like, I didn't been on TV before, but we talking about TV when 
from Baton Rouge didn't know nothing about niggas being on TV. Like, let's just be real. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> and for you to have the, like, 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 uh, like Mr. Melvin said, for you to have the balls, you know what I'm saying? To even, yeah. to, man, I'm about to go do this no matter how many people from wherever, all these musical cities, so called, you know what I'm saying? I'm going up there and do what I got to do. So to see that, that encouraged me for sure as a, and, and as a young person, like, man, bro, you can do whatever you want to do, man. Put your mind to it. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's like just being able to touch. I, I talked to everybody, you know what I'm saying? All of us, we were talking yesterday even. No, like just saying, seeing people being in LA or being in Atlanta or being in Dallas or being, you got all of these people that you get to see. Ter- I, me and Tehran talk like, like you know what I'm saying? I, I know his stories, he know my stories. So seeing, being able for him to go to those clubs he was able to get to, to see those cats he was watching when he was growing up. We didn't have nobody who we can say, man, we saw this dude on TV, but when, we, when you did, we like, nigga, we got nigga on TV. Right, nigga, right. Wow. We here, my nigga. And it was like, man, you, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you definitely, you know what I'm saying, set a bar with that, bro. So it's like just to be able to be doing the stuff that I, you know, I've seen my brothers in, like, man, like I said, the rich history of Baton Rouge, bro. And if for all of the people that's on right now, man, if you don't know the history, like you're getting to to know it. And like I said, we're not gonna be able to get through all of this stuff tonight just because yeah. it's so many people and it's so many different point of views and it's so many stories that we still wanna tell, that we still gotta tell just because. As far as just helping people, man, we like the, the one of the main reasons we all came together to do this was to give back to our younger generation, right? Back to the people, you know, what I'm saying that that want to be that want to touch us, that want to ask us questions, that want to get to know us, know the other side of being musicians. Um, it's called behind the music because it takes a whole bunch of stuff to be a musician, you know what I mean, from, from your mindset. from you know what I'm saying? Your daily routines and all this other type of stuff. Like I was saying yesterday, it's our superpower because we're able to change the the mood and the feelings in the room with, with however we want to do. You know what I mean? So when you have that power, man, you can make somebody cry. You can make somebody happy. You can make them dance. You can make them right. just fall out. You know what I mean? And just to have that as a power, that's a superpower. But at the yep. end of the day, we still got to hone that and know how to, you know what I'm saying, to just spread our love and our peace to everybody within our community. Um, so you right much, man. You're, you're chosen, CJ. Like, Shut at up, this bro. point, man. No, bro. <laughs> no jokes aside, man. I'm going to tell you this. Because this you're the reason why this is even, you know, curated like this. You're chosen for this. Like, you're the vessel to make that move for the city. It takes a community, man. But obviously, look how many people are on here. That's the <laughs> that's the push. Oh yeah, this is this and this is this is what we've always talked about, bro. Like this is the start of the history being made right now, bro. Tonight was the first night, and we it's it's our like we said it's our it's our night. And I told everybody I put it on my back because um, since you're on here, you know, I called you. Um, I started the gumbo jam night, which is like a jam session. Basically, it's the same thing Tehran was doing. You know what I mean? Everybody could come there, no matter if you good, bad, whatever, and you want to be a, a musician, you want to be an artist, you come there and showcase. Baton Rouge is built on old school and, and, and you know, old school music, blues music. Classic um, R&B? Uh, no, I ain't going to say that. I can't go there because... Gum, if you think about it, my, my, my jam session is probably like the only R&B night that you can have in Baton Rouge. True, so You didn't pull up. So, yeah, true. Um, I, I created that because when Tehran left, it was definitely a void gone from connecting with people. And me being around him so much, people thought that it was about the plane and it was about him doing all that other type of stuff. He said a little bit earlier, not, let's not get all into the tape because we got to come back. His purpose was doing it. I'm going to say this because he ain't. His purpose was doing it was to get to know everybody, was to come together with people and to put. So it wasn't about the plan. It shouldn't be about the plan. It's about building that community. In right. If we all support each other, can't nobody take nothing apart from us. I remember coming right. around him up. I remember coming around him and just, I, I, I wasn't able to meet physically meet Jabari. But I know all of y'all and I've heard a story about Jabari. So I feel like I know Jabari. Tehran used to share with Jabari all the time. All of y'all have been in the house. I know about the, the, the multiple kids in the house. I've never met this dude before. Mm-hmm. Never met him. 
I know about the multiple kids. I know about all of this stuff. And this is from talking with y'all, talking from Rye, talking with different people. I'm going to ask you a question. If I don't know, I'm going to ask you a question. I don't care. You can only tell me no. So whatever. But it's just like, man, once, once building this community starts with us, bro. And like I said, this the, this was the, the foundation of us coming together and saying, hey, man, let's get back. Let's, 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 because Dallas history and other people with musical, rich musical history, y'all know who the people are. Y'all know who the OGs are. Y'all, y'all give them respect. Y'all pay them their flowers. Us in Baton Rouge, we don't really never do that. So I said, you know what? Today, let's reach all the way back. Let me get with Jermaine and them, and I'm going to ask them, man, who y'all was listening to? They said it, Melvin and Drake. All right, cool. I'm about to hit them up. Let's go back to them. See who they was, who they was listening to. All right, yeah. now, let's, now we can really start a history and start moving forward. So you can't get the men to run yet or uh, uh, the rest of them because we need to show these people, that, you know what I'm saying? We need to give their flowers to them while they're here. Right. Respect, right. You know I mean? Come on, so, man. You're saying the word, CJ. I mean, bro, at the end of the day, like I said, man, <laughs> all of us play a different part in each other's lives from if you older, if you're younger, no matter what. And if you listen to any one of us on here, we all have the DNA from each other on here. And it's crazy. It's super, super crazy that we're all able to get together on here and connect like this, bro. Like, it's just crazy. May I interject, Mr. CJ? No, go ahead. The beautiful thing about this call, man, is the diversity on here. For me, you know, I'm strictly a church drummer. I was strictly a church drummer. And, you know, my pinnacle was when it, it had came and gone. But I love the diversity. We got blues. We got jazz. We got funk. We got people that can play any genre of music. We got people that can read music. That's the beauty of it. And for me, even being a preacher, I'm glad that you guys can have diversity in different genres of music. I received flack when uh, with some, uh, you know, there were some people, how could you, you know, he played for them, he played for that. Okay. You do, uh, but the diversity is what's needed. Yeah. yeah. What's Man, you know, one? with the caliber of musicians we have on here, we could record a record right now. We got oh, yeah, keyboard players sure. on here. Like, with a, a whole album, no. We can record album. a dope album with just the musicians on this live right now. And it'll be right. real talk. Real talk. Well, I wouldn't be playing drums. I'll sing tenor. <laughs> hey, it's, all, it's, it's cool. Look, it's cool. Hey, all we need is your one league. league. <laughs> <laughs> your one famous league, and that's all we need. <laughs> What this? Hey. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! I never, Tehran. I never told you this, man. What's I up? I never told you this, but I, I really appreciate you for introducing me to Snarky Puppy years ago, man. You, oh. you definitely changed my life with that. I know that was so random. <laughs> no, nah, man. But when they first came down to Melvin's church that time. Hey, you can't say that. My mama might be watching. She ain't know they was in there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly why I had to take the jam session from the church, man. It's all like weed and everything. Yeah, yeah. Y'all check it. I know how to handle that, bro. Y'all check it. 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 Y'all yeah, I played a funeral. <laughs> what? You still can put that on your resume. You work with my no, I played a funeral with him. At the time, that's when the, 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 the Set Me Free song came out. And you was like, yeah. bro, you need to check this out. And everything, like, bro, you brought so much different, you know, music, knowledge, sound. So, yeah. You yeah. brought a different feel. You brought a whole different feel, bro. So, like, like the, to get to know a person to like, know a person like this, bro, that nobody knew, nobody knew. That's yeah. one thing I can actually one say. Thing I really am so great. Really so you great. know, most cats, when you know, they hear about, man, I know this man, this famous drummer, this famous musician, you know, he would go crazy. He would go crazy. You came here, we didn't even know. I I know I speak for myself. I didn't even know at the time you knew, you know, Spud and you know all these other kids, um, JT, Bobby talk, Sparks, and all them. Yeah, all of them, bro. Like mm -hmm. when, when you, you know, when you told me straight up, hey man, Myron Butler, and then I had to set me free off. 
man, the first thing I started doing, I was like, I need to go learn this because somebody might call me to, you know, play this joint at their church or musical or something. So you was putting me on some some future game stuff that I'm even to this day still trying to A plus it. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get to the to the better person that I am. So man, we 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 got something right now that's able and we all gotta learn how to just connect more and work with each other, man, like on different stuff. So I I, I really appreciate how you brought that diversity of, of a happiness in music to this city, man. So shout out to you, bro. I had Real to talk. learn. I had to learn too. I knew nothing about, you know, Zydeco. I, I <laughs> about second like man, I got schooled when I got there. Just because I had a history from somewhere else, man. Like you come to Louisiana, if you don't know that, you gotta go to school also. Uh -huh. <laughs> You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I definitely had to go to school once I got there. And, you yeah. know, because if I didn't know that, I wasn't going to be playing no gigs. Hey, you know, John I'm wasn't going to be calling me. Uh, <laughs> nobody was going to be calling me. Hey, I'm going to put this out there, bro. I got to shout out my dog for this, too. Daryl Snipe Miles, when he pulled me to Dallas, bro, and I did not know Tayron was going to be in the building. And this is for my dog, son, birthday party. Son. Y'all heard Tay Ron in Baton Rouge. Here's Tay Ron in his element at home. That's a different Tay Ron, bro. Like, that is. Oh, my God. Bro, I still play the clips that I recorded, bro. I, look, y'all, I was dog tired. We drove the whole time. I've never been to Dallas. Shout out to Brew Brock, because I need to get to my spot out there, too, bro. I need to really go to Dallas, bro. We got a Brew Brockers here. I'm about to say what? No, 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 no. No, no, no. I mean, not Brew Brockers. Uh, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Brewers. Brewers or something. It's downtown. Whatever it is, man. But, bro. Buzz Brews. I was all tired because we drove to get down there. And when we got there, bro, you just don't know. I was actually falling asleep in that joint. But when y'all kicked off, Man, I came back with like, I got to get some stuff straight in my life on this music thing, man. So, <laughs> bro, uh, <laughs> I, I came forget. back home with a whole different energy. Fam, you know so I got to get my life right. <laughs> I had to get my life man. right. Uh, Cause I was like, bro, when you stuck, when you stuck in one place, you only confined to that one box. Exactly. Exactly. So when you get out and venture this thing, bro, you come back with so much more. And I'm like, that really put a whole different twist in my plan to hear these, you know, cats in Dallas. And, you know, I was like, bro, I know him. I'm like, this is my brother. This is my homie. Like, I don't, you know, I don't care what situation goes on. When you get to know a person and get in a relationship with a person, bro, you got, you could have not talked in years. Something could go on, but you just never know. Murder. God may just put you in that predicament for y'all to open that door back up again right. and connect on some things. So I was very honored to be in that, 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 that area and, you know, be able to bring something back home to say, hey, bro, check this out. This is what I learned in Dallas today, man. You know, let's try to, you know, meet this in Baton Rouge and, you know, get some new things and ideas going. So, yeah, bro. If I could have did that for sorry. everybody. I'm, I'm I'm sorry, Pastor Mel. Why am I calling Go you? Ahead. Yeah. Big bro. Big bro. <laughs> it was like, man, I used to drive back to Dallas, pick some Negroes up, and drive to Baton Rouge so they can play, and then drive back to drive them back yep. to my class. It's like, man, I wanted the city that I was living in and I cared so much about <clears throat> what I experienced, you know what I'm saying, growing up, you know? It's yeah. like, man, what y'all understand, that was hard for me coming from where I was coming coming up at, man, because it's just like, I just feel like everybody's just so good. Right. And, and, and Tehran, you brought up a good point when you said that it was competition, but, you know, it was respectful. Because, you know, without question, if I knew Andre was going to be at a spot and I had to play, I wanted Andre to know I was in the building. Yeah. yeah. And vice versa, Andre wanted Melvin to know that Andre Britton was in the building. It wasn't no competition, but I want you to know I'm here. It, it was a motivation. Yeah, yeah. 
I tell you what, hey, man, it, 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 it wasn't it wasn't like that in New Orleans. I can promise you that. At least, <laughs> least, at least in my head. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, like they would they would they would send word to let you know, hey man, like I want to challenge you. Like I would get like I would get like people come up to me and be like, hey man, you know your boy that play at such and such church? <laughs> yeah, 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 man, I'm yeah. I'd be like, yeah, I know. He'd be like, yeah, he want to challenge you after service. I'm like, what? What? Come on, you know challenge you. Are you serious, John? I'm dead serious, man. I never forget it, man. I, I, bro, and and especially playing at the church that I played at, man. Like everybody wanted to challenge me. I, I'll even go as far as to say there was uh there was a drummer who all of you all know, and if I say his name, you all would know exactly who it is. But, but but he was nah I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not. Anyway, he came, he came, he was from LA, but he came and uh and he uh he was in town for uh, the GMWA, I think. And uh I, I think at the time they had like one of the GMWA uh musicals or something like that at the church. And I think uh Tri City and Donald Lawrence were doing like a concert, and so our church opened up, obviously. And so the drummer came and and another keyboard player and you know they saw us open up and stuff like that and so they left they left like during offering and stuff like that and so uh, uh word comes back to me like yeah man them dudes want to challenge y'all man like they they like they like saying like come to such and such spot so we can so we can like you know so like we can really challenge and see them. <laughs> And I'm just like, really? <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm just playing offering, man. I'm not, I'm not even. <laughs> not even. <laughs> hey, did you ever, did you ever accept any of those invites? No, sir. No, sir. Can no, I sir. tell y'all a funny story about John Jones, bro? Right, fast. Go ahead. Hey, John, I went to, I came and saw you at Greater St. Stephen's. Uh, I want to say that's the East Bank. And at this time, when I got there. Because uh, Antioch was affiliated on the full gospel. You, Big Mike, whoever was on base, I think Jem- was Jermaine playing with y'all at the time? On base? It could have been Jermaine. It, it might have been Jermaine. But, uh, <laughs> bro, this was a whole band, different band in there at the beginning. You guys walked in there like some Star Wars uh, people on a picture. <laughs> <laughs> stormtroopers. They walked in yeah, there like stormtroopers. Check this out. Service is done. They walked in for the Call of Discipleship song, the uh, I Want to See You on That Day by, you know, uh, the world's moving much too fast. Bro, they played this one song, killed it. Him, Big Mike, and whoever the whole crew was and walked clean out and walked up the steps in the choir stand and just disappeared. I was like, <laughs> that's Oh, that's some Prince shit. Who does this? Why are they doing this at a church, bro? Why are they doing this at a church? Why are they doing this at a church, bro? Kick the other musicians out, kill the song, and then just disappear. <laughs> I, I'll never forget it, bro. Man, I have no hey, recognition of that at all. They had the smoke and the lights, too. They had the uh-huh. machine and the lights too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. They had I have no recollection of that at all. They had flames and everything. So you said the whole revolution just walked out of church. <laughs> <laughs> the whole revolution, the whole revolution, bro. They was out, bro. They was just like on that day, bow, walked out. I was like, whoa, where y'all going? Where they all do that? Oh. <laughs> man, you you got to you got to realize though, man. Like we had a bullseye on our back, man. Like any anybody oh, yeah. any, at any time, man. Like anybody. Like they had dudes like literally like come up to us at church. Uh, I'll never forget this. It was it was. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we. It was it was before a service. I don't remember if it was like a conference, a full gospel conference, or whatever. Uh, but I remember like all of the uh, all of the musicians in the church uh, were, were outside. We were talking. We were just chilling, man. And some dude comes up and he was like, yeah, man, like, you know, I'm looking for a church to play for and stuff like that or something like that, something to that effect. And then, the, you know, but the, then, then the dude started talking about like personal stuff. Like, yeah, man, like, man, I bet, I bet y'all make a bunch of money playing at this church. And I'm just like, <laughs> like, what? What? like, where did that come from, bro? Like, man, really? Like, hey, bro, and I'm so we just, playing a, a we just playing a dumb role. We like, man, like, I, I don't know about that, bro. Like, you know, like he literally asked like one of the dudes like, yeah, man, how, about how much you make, bro? And like, <laughs> I think he asked, I think he asked, if I'm not mistaken, I think he asked Joey. He asked Joey. And, I, and Joey is like the wrong person to ask anything. Like, yo. So, so he was like, man, 
wow. he was like, man, how much you enjoy was like, nah, I, just, I don't think I'm gonna answer that, bro. So it's like, man, it was, it was, we just get crazy, you know, crazy stuff. We, do you, does New I, Orleans musicians, do they still have that mentality com- competitive you know, like that? I, I don't, that I don't know because I've been out of the city for so long. So, okay. I, so the scene has changed and especially after Katrina. And this, right. this is what kind of, this is what kind of, uh, uh, you know, this is really what kind of changed a lot for me when Katrina happened. Because... It's more of a gentrified phrase down there, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Again, I, I haven't really been on that. But I mean, since <laughs> Katrina, when Katrina happened. To rob, y'all, right? Huh? <laughs> That's what I thought too. I was like, man, this is a It might have been, man. It might have been, man. It's bro, it's some, it's just, it was some craziness, man. But it, it, like, you always had the bullseye on your back in New Orleans, man. So it, it was crazy. I've Some heard the story. Were crazy. And it's crazy that it's literally right up the street from Baton Rouge, bro. Right up the street. Night and day. It, it, yeah, I was just about to say, it's crazy that it's night and day and it's right up the street. Like, hey, man. Right wow. up the street. I put it like this in New Orleans to me. If you ain't get fussed there by uh, John or Cleve, man, all right, man, rest in peace, Cleve, Cleve, bro. Uh, uh, Alvin, Buki. Well, I'm gonna I'm shout out some other New Orleans drummers, man. So, I, since we all kind of talking about old school drummers, so so uh, obviously I mentioned Sean Raymond, and Sean yeah. Raymond has ties with Baton Rouge. You know, and really, Sean is really, you know, and I, I've kind of told Sean this man, but Sean is a, a big reason why why I play, why I play, well, why I wanted to play drums because he just made it look so cool. Yeah. Uh, Sean will use these uh, Silver Fox drumsticks, mm. and I don't even know if they make them now, man. But like, they would have like the they would have like the nylon tip, the little gold uh, yeah. nylon tip, still make- man. But but I mean, those were like the, the, the hippest sticks ever, man. But like, you know, drummers like Sean and uh, Chris Dexter. Chris Dexter's the guy that played on the We Are For Christ To You session. And so, okay. wow. you know, like drummers like that, Kevin Wharton, Charlie Brown, him, yeah. uh, you know, all those guys. So like that was my lineage. And that's what I Wait, Chad had and Charlie played? The, the brother? Wait, is Chad yeah. Brown related to Charlie? No, 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 no. So, okay. so Charlie Brown was his nickname. Kevin Warren oh. is his real name. Yeah, I got, just got, got him got Charlie you. Brown. Now, where that name came from, I have no idea. <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, Ke- Kevin, Kevin was the is literally the reason why you know I know how to tune drums. Like he, he, Kevin told me something years ago that has stuck with me for my life. And he said, I don't care how much it costs for you to get good sounding drums or for you to get good sounding gear, man. He's like, if you got to put it on layaway, do that. And like, I like to this day, man, I, I live to that. So like, if I can't afford it, man, I'll put some on layaway or something like that until I can until I can get what I want. But he was like, man, stop. I don't blame you. So, for the so, gift. Ever since I'm with it, man. Like I it's stopped. I gift, stopped. John. I stopped getting B8s. I stopped getting like the. the <laughs> yeah. I did. I, and and you know what? I I used to I used to think I was smart because I would get the B8 Pro. <laughs> like, you know, the, BA, the BA Pro ain't as bad, you know, but you now he was, he was like, you know, because Kevin Kevin was a big Sabian guy, so like he would always have like the shiny A's and the shiny AAX, and like yeah. I come up in there rolling with BA Pros and stuff like that, and it just didn't sound the same. Kevin was like, man, he was like, bro, I don't care if you have to put it in layaway, bro. He was like, bro, get some stuff that you gonna you gonna you gonna you know want to keep for two or man, three years instead man, of man. BA Pros sounded like a gong. Oh, yeah. so, uh, they did. They did. I thought and I was sonic. rocking when I had them Sonic Pro symbols, boy. Oh, sonic man. Pro. No, y'all Negroes had them stags. I had never heard of that when I came oh, home. Man. What is this? I yeah. lived on stags for a while. He had I mean, yeah. Who, me? <laughs> no, Ruff had them stags. I had, I had, I had stags for days. Don't, don't sleep on them stags. stags now. You stack, you stack some stags. Dre right Harris, you had stags, Dre right Harris. See, I wouldn't even use the stacks. I, I was in bad rules when I started using stacks. Hey, bro. I went to see them. I went to see them, and my dog Chris, like Ruff, got some new simple calls. Stags. I started hitting every last one of them, and they sounded like glass. Oh, I got to get all these. That room don't stay. Ruffin had the whole collection. I remember that. I remember that. Man, Ruffin was so in love with them symbols. I thought he was a whole collection. Ruffin was 
pushing Stag on me like it was a new religion. Like, you ever heard about Stag? Oh, yeah. Hey, for sure. I feel like that. I'm like, what? They sounded amazing. Can't remember that Wuhan sandwich you used to get? Oh my God. I had a Wuhan. Remember that Wuhan? Had a Wuhan sandwich. Hey, don't sleep on Wuhan. Don't sleep on Wuhan. Wuhan's a part of everybody's history, man. It's, it's, Wuhan's important to everybody's history. I bet you Erie oh, don't have no Wuhan. Oh, Erie got Wuhan. <laughs> Erie oh, got some Wuhan. Oh. Yeah, I do. No, nah, he had the you 12. Do? Uh, Erie had the 12 when I met him. Oh. I ain't great. Hey, hey. I still got Yo. the S series. Don't sleep. Wait, let me clarify this. I keep it in 200. <laughs> Andre Britton, Andre I need a, Britton. I need an autograph signature for your snare drum. I'm still holding, bro. I'm still holding, bro. Which one? That you that snare drum that you recorded on. <laughs> well, Jermaine still got my gold one. <laughs> Dre, you giving away snares? You giving away snares, though? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> bro, I know, I know. I know um, you send your picture, Mister, so you can see it. Every time y'all say Jermaine, listen. Every time y'all say Jermaine, I know y'all, I know y'all ain't think about this, but y'all remember Jermaine Hart, huh? Oh, yeah. Jermaine yeah. Hart from Hammond, Louisiana. Yeah. Oh. Hey, bro, dude, you. dude, to run, sure. I don't know if you ever met him, but he is scary, nasty. Nah, let me tell you, Drew Barry, Jay Marcus Hart, even. Let me tell you my connection with my boy Hart. When I was working on my masters in Hammond, I would connect with him, and I still had a little gas left in the tank, a little bit. So I connect with him, and we'd go to his mom's church. I would just be amazed at him. He's still a hidden gem. He really did get out of Hammond. No, he did. All of those Hammond dudes are dope. Jay Marcus, Sean, Jeremy, Carl, Carl, Jason, Ray, 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 Ray on bass, yeah. Hey, uh, hey, I know Ray Jermaine Ray Hart kind of reminds me of uh, Jermaine James. James. I went to him at one time with uh, Jermaine. He took me out there to share with uh. I don't remember. Was it a? Uh, is it Jamiris? That's his name. It, it was Jay Marcus, 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 Little Alvin, and Jeremy. And Jeremy. It, yeah, that was the only yeah, time I ever got to meet the Hammond crew. Hammond crew. Yeah. Them dudes are dope yeah, out them there, man. Yeah. Let, let me tell y'all something, man. Look, 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 look uh, about Jermaine Hart, man. About Jermaine Hart, man. You know, a lot of people, you know, um, people back in the day might remember, um, remember. Andre Harrison. Andre think, Harrison. Uh, think, uh, 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 what's the guy? What's the singer? What's the, guy? What's the singer? That was in John P. <laughs> Lamont, Lamont, Lamont Jackson. Lamont Jackson. Lamont Jackson. So, <laughs> so, so back so, in the day, man, oh, man, when Lamont's band, Lamont's now band, this was now, again, again, Jermaine is kind of a, a, a segue uh, from my from my time, time in Baton Rouge too. Uh, but right. when I was in New Orleans, I was playing with I just to heal her sometimes, but I would play with this other group more so called Total Praise. Well, Total Praise would do a lot of stuff in Hammond too. And so sometimes when we would do stuff in Hammond, we would we would kind of double, you know, like whatever with uh, with Lamont's group. And when I tell you, like this was like around again like that time when uh, John P. Key's strength album came out. came out, right? And when I tell you that band you sounded, that band identical, sounded identical, identical to John P. Key's band, John P. Key's I kid you band, not. Like you Sean, like, was Sean was on keys, and, and Jermaine was on drums, was on drums and it might have. I think Ray might have been on bass. Ray's on bass. Jason on organ. Yeah, when I tell you, yeah, I they tell were locked. They they, they were, were a solid, solid, solid band, band, and they were just as tight just as tight as John P. Key's band. Absolutely, absolutely. That's fine. I learned a lot of my chops too from Jermaine. He just don't know it. That's a lot of stuff. I could, I remember them late night um rehearsals they used to have to like two or three o'clock in the morning, and uh, Lamont would preach until like <laughs> he was blue in the face. I was like, man, is this a service? I thought it was in rehearsal. rehearsal. In rehearsal, you're right. I mean, but they was they was on it. They was like following him and everything. Like it was, like it was the real deal. So I was like, okay, this must be like, uh, you know, what they do on a regular basis. But they was killing it, man. They always was killing it. This a uh, this a uh, this is a good question. I just thought about it. It's crazy. But um, as far as the the shed mentality that y'all had back then, um. um 
let's let's discuss that. I, I remember a picture from Southern Band Room or Southern uh, the Jazz Room. I think Tehran, this one Tehran was here. And I, I remember seeing a picture with Ken and Ruffin and John Jones. And, and it could have been some other people in there too. But I remember, yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember a couple of y'all saying, "Man, we should be in there for hours." We should be in there for hours. Let's talk about that. Yeah, dude, that was like that was that was like early 2000s i remember i don't know about yeah. about john and john probably did it after i left too but uh dude i was in there my babies and everything me and my wife, <laughs> we was coming in there we standing at two o'clock in the morning at southern university and t hudson was there playing keys i, yeah. know, I remember him yeah. but uh dude we've been at all night what was it what was the bass player's name um uh, you about the bass player's name? No, you no. talking about Romel, Romel Ville. Romel. 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 Shout out to Romel. Dude, honestly, like, that's what I, I felt like back then when we were shedding like that, like, that's the part we enjoyed the most. Like, we, we did, you know, I think Tehran kind of hit it on the head. We enjoyed doing that together. <clears throat> like, it wasn't about competition, but if I got with you, like, I knew I was going to learn something, you know? Uh, so it, it was all like, family stuff so we we were shared to two three o'clock in the morning next thing you know we we walking out it's it's about to be daylight you know because we just we loved it that much you didn't make time for me Dre to... huh? <laughs> you didn't make time for me Dre <laughs> <laughs> who talking that's Tay Ryan bro you talking about three in the morning I'm hearing this I'm hearing... like what about me <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on, y'all. Me and Tehran did a gig some years ago in Houston, and we left the gig. It had to been about maybe 12. So we go to this church with some of his homies. We shed when we leave. It's like 8 o'clock the next morning. I'm like, Lord have mercy. What is it? And I mean, it was full throttle the whole night. They didn't slow down. I'm like, Lord have mercy. These dudes going to kill me back to school for eight. Tehran, you yeah. remember you came to Baton Rouge. You did that, that drum. Um, that whatever jam thing, I came to it, and I was. I think that was the first time I ever heard you play, or was it when you played uh for uh? It, it, Red, it wasn't Reddit, a catering, uh, huh? No, no. Did Erica Johnson put it on or something like that? Erica, Erica Jones. Jones. Yeah, Erica Jones put it on. And oh, uh, you talking about recently? Really like, you talking about recently? No. Oh, no, you like, know, uh, talking about the clinic. Uh, I was supposed to be, I was playing for, where John at? I was playing for John. No, that was the first time. <laughs> hey, Ron, is somebody dying in your background? <laughs> yeah, man. I, you know, I got to definitely got It costs too much to live in LA. Got my son. I got a simple. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, y'all talking about shed, man. We. It's crazy. Dre and I, Dre, did we ever share? Did we ever share? No. 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 What about Dre Britton? What about Dre Britton? No. No, that's what that was talking about. That's what that was talking about. No. Oh, that, yeah. Because, oh, that, yeah. I, I didn't have anybody to share with. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. At all. Dre, did you, who did you share with? Who did you share with? Me? <laughs> 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 Like that's crazy. Oh, that's crazy. I shared it on my mom's um, recliner. She had to throw it out. But like Dre and I, I, I don't think Dom or Amy and I have ever shared. That's crazy. That's crazy. No, I you know I heard about the shit through like John John Jones. Then we used to put this stuff together like at Southern because I think John was going to Southern at the time, and so he was taking classes. I don't even know. We you know we don't know if John was really on the roll. I thought he was just in Mister. He was in Mister. Batiste's class. He was showing up for the jazz stuff, so he <laughs> let it play. So, you know, I think every time he called roll, John just raised his hand like this or something like that. He's like, oh, okay, okay, you can play in the festival. But anyway, <laughs> I, John, I, I guess John, John had... Registered. He just showed up. <laughs> he wasn't registered. That's how he wasn't registered, man. So, <laughs> like, he had, he had keys and everything to the doggone uh, music department. <laughs> Man, let me, I'm gonna let you in the building, man. I'm gonna go in the back and unlock it. Hey, <laughs> no, but, you know, we you know how I knew John, John wasn't human when he was at Southern and he just went to the class, but he never came 
to the union to see you. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. You know, I'm a picky eater, man. Boy, so not about to eat. It was hey, but you know, you know, as well, I don't know if it, I don't know if they got the doors fixed, but you know, man, the thing was, you know, if you go to around the back, you yeah. know, what they would they would never lock the doors or like the doors if you like pull on them real hard, I, yeah. they would open. I remember so that. that's that's why that's why I would get in. Like I would be like, hey man, I'm gonna go in the back, open the doors <laughs> back, and they come around around the front and open it up for you. Hey, so I, I never had keys. Hey, we low key was breaking in the school, but we didn't. Need <laughs> yes, we were. <laughs> criminals, bro. Y'all was criminals, bro. We, and oh, guess what? Right. You just told on yourself on national. Uh, <laughs> Twenty years later, man. It's, it's, it's man cool. You could just look. You was in Mr. Bad class, so you don't worry about it. I hear. I, I hear. hear I for you. Hear, hear. Hey, let me tell y'all this. About Mr. Bad too. If I can say this, because y'all talking about Mr. Bad. I came to the band. I'm thinking, oh man, this is gonna be all great. I'm about to be. You know, I'm about to get talked about Mr. Bad Tease. Woo! I get there. I get there. Killer Joe. And I had to drop the class because I'm like, they said he retired. And it's like, whoa. It's like, man, this whole thing was built up in me about, you know, and, and no disrespect to, uh, you know, the guys who were teaching at the time. It's like, I was really expecting what y'all got. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And that didn't happen for me. That didn't happen for me. So I had to get away from it. And... <laughs> That's what started the journey. That's crazy. It's like I wanted what y'all got. Uh, hey, I say that too. I say that too. I, I still be here. I still hear um, people talk about Mr. Mac or whatever. It's the musicians, the caliber music that we that we're coming from and southern and southern. I mean, that's John. That's what John's going to get into. I let him talk about it too. It's about two issues after Katrina went off. You know, it it kind of left it kind of left. Or in, the, in the field because it was so many people there. So many people there. Crazy how so many people, how so many people come to Baton Rouge. To Baton Rouge. You're like, what? What? And, and to, 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 to Southern music program, music program, music music program, program music like, really fire. Really fire. It's like, man, I could have went, I could have went, and I didn't say myself. So I was just the same. I was just the same. I all of the stories about the stories about how they, how they, John, you went. Well, tell me, tell me. So, so how you saw this key, bro? Take this key, bro. Take it to school, bro. In the school, bro. <laughs> I told y'all, man. You you would go in the back. Go in the back. You would you would. Oh, that's door. how you open it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. Um. Oh, Andre so, Harrison, you, so Harrison need you need to mute your mic. Mute your mic. Oh my bad. Uh, as far as so as far as like I said, as far as the um. As far as y'all shitting, bro, like who whose idea was that for all y'all to come together and do that? Cause like I said, the picture that I seen, bro, it's it's about thirty of y'all in there, bro. And so to so I so want that picture. Yeah. So I, what happened was, I man. So I don't know which one of y'all. So so I think I I think I know what picture you're talking about. So I don't you know again with, with Mr. Bat being there, man, you had a whole listen. That that, that could be a whole nother discussion in it right, within, cool. within itself. But but just to make a long story short, when I got to Southern, uh, you know, you had uh Quaman, obviously, uh you had Maurice Brown, you had Ramel Ville, you had Calvin Ville, you had John Gray. Uh, you had so many other, I mean, like, uh, you had a whole, uh, whole slew of musicians, man. And, and like good, you know, musicians. So everybody Maurice in the Brown, the trumpet deal. player, John. Maurice Brown. Yep. Yep. The, the Maurice trumpet Brown player. that's out here. That's yes. Yes. That Maurice Brown. He was at Southern. Yes. Hey, it's crazy, he was bro. actually, he was actually at Southern. He was actually at Southern on a scholarship for the band, for the marching band. I'm around this dude all the Maurice time. And I did not know that. Yep, yep. Maurice, Maurice and Quaman were in a group together called MQ 2020. Matter of fact, I remember that. I, I didn't write this little history wait. lesson down. Where is Quaman? Quaman is back in Fort Worth now. Uh, did you but, tell but MD 2020? MQ 2020, because oh. it was Maurice Quaman, and they just put their two initials together. 
That's now with right. the 2020 mid, I don't I don't know. But the, the very <laughs> first time oh. the very first time that uh that all of us kind of got hooked up, uh Maurice and Kuman wanted to do a talent show at Southern. And this was at the this was at the mini dome when they were doing the talent shows, I guess before uh during homecoming or whatever. And so um they were like, man, we, we want to, you know, we want to do a talent show, but uh, but it's just only three of us. Like, we didn't have a keyboard player or a bass player. Well, I think Ramel was supposed to play, but he couldn't find an amp or something like that. So it was just only myself, Kuman, and, and Maurice. Mm -hmm. And so they did this, like, uh, they did, like, this crazy, like, little intro thing, and they just wanted me to play. Now, I bought, now, this is a mini dome, mind you. I bought, at the time, I had that blue hip gig uh, drum kit that, uh, that little small uh, hip gig kit that I had. Tay Ron, you, you should know that kit very well. Well, most of y'all on here should know that kit very well. <laughs> I use, I bought those drums in that. No mics, just 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 that kit with some cymbals. And we just did the talent show. And I think we I think we came up in like second place or something like that. I think. No, I heard y'all blaze the talent show. Y'all didn't just was, do it. it. I heard y'all blaze. It was crazy. It was crazy. Um, um, uh, right, even right. Uh, told me about that talent show that y'all did, and it was just like, bro, everybody was looking like, what is going it was, on? Like, it was crazy. They were they were booing so many people off. So I was I was like, man, they don't want to hear, they don't want no jazz, man. <laughs> but it was it was cool, man. But yeah, Maurice Maurice is a uh, was a was a student at Southern University, man. Wow, I, I would hey, just somebody send me Maurice's uh, Facebook page, bro. I ain't talking Maurice in years. Man. I was in the studio with him. Uh, during Grammy week, uh, because I was playing with um, this group, Sara, and he shares the studio with uh, Omos Key. And man, he, he was playing his record, Lil Mike's playing on his record, mm -hmm. Lil Mike Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And um, I went in there and we just started vibing, you know, talking. Like, I swear, if I would have known he went to Southern, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, that's it's, 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 bro, it was, even it was, Southern his, history is, is rich, bro. Like, it's crazy. Like, it's especially that music. Like I said, I hear all of the stories about all of the cats that was here, bro. And, like, Mike Foster is old, bro. Like, real talk. Like, that's my... <laughs> Mike Foster, like, crabbed in, like, I want to say 85 or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, real talk. So, to him talk about Mr. Bat and his experience, and then I jumped... John Jones and I hear about that experience. Then I jumped to Rod. Like, y'all, do you know how much history that is in between all of that? Like, Mike is 10 years older than Rod Jackson. Je Rod Jackson is 10 years older than me. That's a big old gap. And to hear how much, how much um Mr. Bat played a point in all of these cats' lives, bro. It was musicians coming through for years, bro. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Man, I'm about to hit little Mike now. Give me that man's number. <laughs> hey, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna shout out another drummer too. Uh, that's uh, he. Uh, uh, some of y'all may know him, but uh, but he passed away. But he was uh, he was a big part of Baton Rouge drumming too. Uh, real good jazz drummer, and he played uh, upright bass too. But Lou Mark Gully, Lou Mark Gully. If y'all hadn't heard of Lou Mark Gully, man, y'all need to look up like some of the stuff. Matter of fact, his picture was on the door. His poster yeah, was his picture to this day. His picture is on the door. Uh, you can his picture is on the door in the music room at Southern. That's fine. Uh, say that name again. Lamar Lou Mark Gully. Gully. Some people just say Mark Gully, but it's but it's Lou Mark Gully. I gotta, say, I gotta say something about Mark Gully, man, because that's the pointy goatee, huh? I feel like Lamar yeah. felt like he was underappreciated, you know, especially mm -hmm. in the Dallas community, man. So I, I feel like I know he's gone, but I feel like we have to give his flowers. I can give his flowers right now. Yeah, yeah. Most much. He's from Dallas, Tate? Yeah. I, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I drove home from Baton Rouge one time to go watch him play with Uncle Bobby and end up having to play that gig. And I felt so bad. Like I, I held that in my heart for a long time, man. Especially after he passed. And it's like, wow. It's like, man, I wasn't going in to like overshadow him. You know what I'm saying? But he was like the perfect person writing music and all that, man. But I feel like, man, he's the story of a lot of us that actually acted out. 
you know what I'm saying? We feel like we're not good enough, you know, or we we don't fit. I don't know. We don't fit a thing, man. And, you know, he deserves more than what he got. Yeah. Yeah. He deserves yeah. more than what he got, man. And he was an amazing drummer. I, I wasn't expecting to hear that name, man. That Yep. He... I'm gonna tell y'all the album. Matter of fact, I'm gonna tell y'all that he he did an album. Uh, John Gray actually. Uh, Daryl Reed. At, uh, well, Daryl. I was just about to say that, but John uh, Lumark did a, did his own CD. But uh, and I think I think Andy Bourgeois is on it. I think Coman is on it. It's a it's a whole bunch of cats. Stephen Stephen. Um, What's that boy named saxophone player. He's from Dallas too. Tehran, you may know him. But anyway, it's a whole bunch of um. My I think my uh. I forgot the Rollins on that on that CD, but it's it's a it's a good album. But the the CD to get is a Daryl Reeves CD. Uh, Robert Glasper's on it. You gave me that um, CD. I did. Wow. I think so. Uh, yeah. But that's a that's a good CD to check uh, check him out on. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it out. Diary Diary of a Bandstand. That's the name of it. All right, I'm gonna check that out. Damn man, he's so nice, early, bro. I felt so bad about that for years. <laughs> John, you think you overshadowed him at a gig or something? No, it's not even about the. That's really what it was. Whoa. But it's like, man, it wasn't. It wasn't supposed to be an act of that. Gotcha, you this, bro. That's one of the pit. No. Oh, it, oh, again? I can't see it. Put it up, this, bro. Yo, I remember that. I can't That's see. It. Oh yeah. They go Ken, they go Philip. Oh, wow. Wow. Jason, Jason, Jason Marshall. Wow. That's the first time we ever hey, showed bro, it together. Really That's cool. when you gave me the kit, John. Say, bro, I really. Well, let me borrow it. <laughs> <laughs> I need that pic, man. Guess who? Guess who in the background? Bro, is it, you got more pictures? Guess who in the background, bro? Who? Jabari, dog. Oh, that's Jabari. Listen, Philip, so bro. check this out. It, it's me. It's, it's me, Tehran, John Jones, Marshawn on bass, Ken in the back, Justin Doherty, and Jabari. Wow, we all said it that night, bro. Oh man, and this is Southern, bro. Wow. Hey, it's, I'm telling you, that's not even a picture that I saw. It's a whole other picture, y'all. Like on the side. Like on the sides, like all of y'all, I'm looking at, I don't know who, who I saw that picture from, but one of y'all got that. I don't know if it's John Jones, if it's you roughing, I don't remember which one of y'all got that picture, but it's a whole, it's a whole nother picture. With this, it's like the same crew, maybe with some more people in there, but I think Harrison on it. It's, it's, it's like from the side view though, but it's all of y'all. I was like, bro, that's crazy. I wish I could have been in there. Like, hey, so, hey, so, Jane, so, you remember we shared it one night? night. John, you remember we shared it one night at Southern and you had that Fender Rhodes in there and I bought it from you on the spot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> you bought it on the spot, Jermaine? Yes, he said, give me 300. I was like, all right. Man, I, I <laughs> had so many Rhodes pianos, man. Right. What, you got you all it. still have it, Jermaine? I still have it. Really? Wow. Yeah, I still have it. Man, I think wow. I was helping John search for Rhodes at one point. Man, I done yeah. had so many. Right. And, and now I and now I have none. <laughs> oh, rough and send over that picture, man. I Yo, remember I, that picture. You you got that? I'm gonna I'm gonna take a snap and send it to you, bro. Hey, right. on a, on a real. I need a I need an organ. I need an organ for my wife. Anybody? Anybody? Man, if you find an organ, I know I'm looking for one. Hey, you can ask Chris Gross if, ask Chris Gross if he want to sell his. His still at the family house. You lying? Is it? Yes, and my Uncle Willie, Mr. Glenn Dallas, gave him a straight Leslie. Got two Leslie. Hey, man, you, here, you know man. Chris ain't gonna sell that, that argument. I asked Corey. Especially not after Twinkie Dark sat on it. Nah. Nah. Right. <laughs> nah, he ain't selling that. That's, 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 that's a history piece. What'd you him. say, CJ? The mic said that uh, it was John Birthday shit where the picture came from. Who got that picture? Talking about the picture that Ruffin has? No, it's another picture with all y'all on it. The Mike said, uh, the Mike said that was John's birthday shit that y'all did. I remember that. Y'all got the picture, bro. Y'all holding out. 
I don't have any pictures, bro. <laughs> I was too cheap about the camera. Bro. I saw the pictures. I'm like, I can see the picture in my head right now. I just don't remember which one of y'all got the picture. You know what I'm noticing? Like everybody was there. I'm Probably noticing in, in, yeah, in, in our conversation, John, you are the resident historian. John Jones? Yeah, he's the John resident Jones. historian. He's the second pastor behind you, doctor. Yeah, <laughs> he's the resident historian because he's bringing up names. I had to write down this gully, Mark Gully. I wrote it down. Hey, man, I'm telling you, man, you, you got to you gotta check man out, bro. You gotta tell like John, John, Listen, John can play drums, bro. Like John, 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 John. I don't know. Everybody, like everybody that I hear talk about John, always say something about Chris Dave. So, when you think about a Chris Dave person or somebody comparing him to Chris Dave, you always think about abstract. You think about, you know, what I mean, um, it's the artistry side of musicianship. So, it's like when you hear John, when you hear people. Talk about John Jones, bro, it's just crazy because not only they talk about him for well, now it's like people don't even remember. I'm sorry, people don't even remember that he played drums, right? But it's like if we go all the way back, bro, and you ask if anybody on here about John on drums, bro, ooh, oh boy, scared listen. the hell out of me. Bro, when I saw him at that recording, the only, the only time I've seen John play was at that recording. I stood up the whole time oh, yeah. because I was in amazement. I had, I've i seen him on keys or whatever. I was like, so he been all these years in the lab and decided to come out for an hour? Man, no, oh, man. I, I, man, I, listen, y'all, what y'all don't realize about John is, man, he is a professor on the slick, that's that's what it is. Now I, I don't watch John since he was about. I think he was about. The first time I saw him play was on uh, Paul Martin's one of them greatest St. Stevens records or something like that. And he was young. I think he played like one or two songs on there, but that was the first time I ever seen him play. And ever since then, I was like, I want to I want to know what this dude lived. At. I know he lived close. <laughs> we can share it together. Right. And, um, <laughs> We ended up meeting. I went to Southeast and I, I was um I was minoring in music at Southeastern. And we did something with one of the uh I guess we did like a uh, I think it was like a little concert for drummers or something like that. It was like a final or something. And I was I was playing and I saw him in the audience. So, oh, that's that dude that played on Greater St. Stephen's album. Wait, 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 so wait, hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. John Jones played on the Greatest Man Stevens album? Yes, sir. Yeah. Come on, man. I'm man, where you I'm only, on, I'm only on one Let album. me pull out my yellow. Let me pull out I, my I, yellow I, envelope. Look, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't last long, man. I only, I only did <laughs> one album. Man, look. You don't matter. You killed kill, kill that one, night, bro. bro. You killed. I only but played after that, one. like, after that, this dude introduced me to all of the drummers I need. Like, like I'm gonna just name them all: Dennis Chambers, Dave Welker, uh, just through the years. Like, Spanky would like when when uh Ty Trippett first came out. Like, he was like, dude, you need to listen to this cat. Spanky, Chris Coleman, all just all the dude. Steve Gad, he was the one that was like giving me the videos and telling me to go look at this dude. And then he had CDs. He was like, hey, bro, come to the car right quick and listen to this. Y'all understand, this dude is a, you know, you call him historian. He's really a professor at music. He was playing with big bands. This dude was writing his own scores. Wow. I mean, y'all, I mean seriously, like, y'all sleeping on him, but he, uh, he don't want to talk about it. Oh, I, ain't, oh, I know. This this dude knows music. Teron, I know you know, but he can write his own stuff. He was playing, he was I, he was doing a TV show. I, don't, I remember a whole lot of stuff I was hearing. And I was like, man. How in the world? <laughs> I mean, I because I knew you. I knew you in the, in a sense of like growing up with you. But it was like I ain't know you was going that far with it because you went from I thought you was at Southern, but you wasn't a student, and then you was at UNO, I think, and so you was getting your masters and stuff there. So I was like, oh my gosh, this dude, him man, you going? I thought you was gonna be a teacher. So I was like, man, yeah, that's 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 who I want to be around. And ever since to this day, like. Even this last recording we did, I called John to play keys on because I felt like he would understand my mind because that's the way he thinks. He's like, 
he's a professor. Yeah. He's a professor at what he does. He's professional. Right. But I think he knows the music well enough to be able to interpret what you're trying to say. That's why I always, I called him one time when I needed a replacement because I knew he would probably be able to handle the stage I was on at the time. And I was just learning it myself. But, you know, switching from gospel to CCM to rock to all that stuff. And we, I was mixing everything in because, I mean, the church was kind of evolving, you know? And I, I was like, I bet you John can play this. And that's what I would call him with man don't swear John Jones, bro. There Joy, he is right there in front of you. Joy, can I get a quick hey I'm I'm a quick thing for me. Uh one John Jones is the only person I know that ever recorded with a 23 inch bass drum, DW. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, you bringing up mem you bringing up memories, hey, man. Bad hey, memories. You know how- and I sold him that kit. Yeah, hey, you know how we felt about that because e, we saw that kid was worth some money, bro. And you you did it. E, hey, sell me a kid. I want to start shedding in my house. E, sell me a kid. <laughs> hey, I let me mention, let me let me mention something else about the dude too, while we on John, Bishop John Jones. <laughs> uh, this is the most giving dude I know yeah. as a musician. Yeah. He is the most giving person I know as a musician. I'm not lying to you. I have gotten Dennis Chambers snares. I've gotten a full Masters, a Pearl Masters kit with the with the with the glitter kind of champagne color wood grain that you can. I know that he I know gave, that it to you? gave it to you. Gave it to me. Wow. So now you need to pay for it and give it to me. I'm like, hey, that I got that I want to interject as well, man. Um, I worked with him for a couple years in the ministry, man. And John transformed his ministry. Uh, we went from uh, monitors on the stage to headphones. John actually had pre-sonus to come in and put in that. Uh, digital pre-sonus uh, studio live board. Uh, John did some stuff to get the CP3 uh, 100 board in there. I mean, man, the dude just, everything he touched turned to gold, man. I got to get it to him, man. Uh, John changed the way I approach uh, learning music and just the way I, I, I'm actually like taking, I took the job over that he had and I didn't have to do anything because he had already laid the ground for it. Right. I'm trying. I'm trying to figure hey, out check why this I out. look like he's going to do a drive-by. Hey, this is <laughs> this is something I want to know. For Andre it's, it's bad lightning in this truck, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so Andre Harrison, here's my question for you: How did you get hooked up and doing CCM so early, bro? Look at the church. Oh, look at the church. Man, well, no, um, no, I know that. It, I know that it's like it's like, like what. Is, like, where did you come from to start to get to like, was you going to visit me at first or did you pull from somewhere else? No, he, he, here's the story. Okay, so, um, so, wow. Here's the story. The, it started like this. I was playing, I was already playing. I, I remember Ricky Washington had started his church and I started playing there a little bit. And then, you know, I just kind of got away from it. I, I really didn't want to play nowhere at that time and I was working. And uh, I was at the bank about to deposit my check, real real story. And uh, I ran into, Ty Cook was in front of me in the line, in the car. And, uh, you know, I blew at him. He said, man, I was just thinking about you. And I was like, wow. He said, man, look, I want you to come. Now, this is how it happened. I want you to come to Bethany and audition on drums. I said, Bethany? You know, I ain't even know nothing about Bethany like that. But Ty had been going over there and, you know, kind of helping with the praise team. He wasn't there. He wasn't on staff there and nothing like that. But he was helping with the praise team, with the choir and stuff like I that. I remember that, too. And I so, remember that, too. Yeah. And so he said, man, why don't you come audition? And so I did and ended up getting it or whatever. And I would do it. I'm, I'm straight gospel, bro. I was, a, I was a gospel drummer. So it wasn't about me trying to come in there and learn nothing. I was like, y'all, look, let me show you what I got. You know, that's kind of drummer I was and so man I got there and then I realized I had no idea 
what CCM was. I, I didn't know nothing about no Hill song. I didn't know nothing about no Chris Tomlin, no Micah W. Smith, no, no, uh, I mean, it was just like a whole nother world. And they would ask me, you don't know this stuff? I was like, man, I ain't never heard of them. What are you talking about? So everything had, a, you know, I had, I had put my twist on everything that they were doing. And it was like, that ain't how you play that, you know? And it was just so weird because I had to just. Bethany was like Paisley Park. like Paisley Park. Dude, I, I, had to, I had to adjust so much, like all of the rhythms and the, the subdivisions I thought I needed to have that, you know, they were getting dwindled down to like eighth notes <laughs> and sixteenths. And I'm like, wow, is this what, I mean, I was doing this in first grade. So. But what I started, <laughs> what I started to realize was, so I was evolving into uh, into something that. So a lot of the things I thought I was doing real nice, and and you know it was a it was a it was a nice lick for for gospel. It was too much for what I what I was involved in. Yeah. So what I had to do was learn how to take it and evolve it into something that was my own identity, still be simple with it, but start putting my own flavor to it. Yeah. And so after yeah. a while, man, you know, you know, I did a couple of recordings, you know, was scared out of my mind about it, but I, you know, I did it because I didn't know how it was going to come out. I just wanted to do it. And so we, we did a couple of recordings and then I started getting involved with different types of producers and people who were going to pull out some stuff that you ain't have or, or you had, but you didn't know how to use it. And so all that kind of evolved and like over time, it kind of it kind of grew me into being a more professional drummer. And I stopped thinking about what I could come up with to, to show off on a record. I started thinking about, man, how can I change the atmosphere with what I'm playing? Or how can this how can this fit with this type of music? How can I make it my own? And so getting involved into it, man, I just honestly, I was a part of the change that was going on. You know, Pastor, Pastor, you know, the pastors, Pastor Jonathan was coming in as a praise and worship leader. So he was wanting to change the music anyway. So we start, believe it or not, we play more mixtures of, of CCM and, and black gospel than you know. And I know Ken probably know, but we was playing from Fred Hammond to Don Lawrence to Israel Houghton to Hill Song to, yep. you know, yep. uh, Nicole C. Mullen. I mean, it was all in one service. That's, that's so when you all that kind of right? yeah. yeah. So all of it kind of yeah. it kind of meshed together. Like we we actually started making our own music from that because it was such a good mixture. And so uh, you know, like I said, I mean it it, it just happened overnight, man. Honestly, I, I don't I don't know if I just started going to Bethany. I just I honestly kind of it kind of ran it. I kind of ran into a situation, but um. That's what happened, man. But it, I'm gonna it, tell you this. Really, really really I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, Andre. When I moved to Baton Rouge, like Bethany, I know I said earlier, Bethany was kind of like the Paisley Park of Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. So to go get to work with Amos, y'all talking about these PB drums? I saw from a distance. I never got to play on. You know, you know, you were like the Michael Bland ghost of Baton. Yeah, you know what I'm saying because you were able to explain. Perfect way to explain. Perfect way to explain it. It's like, man, we were just hearing. Well, for me, I was just hearing about you. Yeah. I was hearing like, yo, hey, Andre, he's a man. It's like, man, okay. It's, it's how I felt about Chris Dave, or, uh, Jason Thomas. You know, before I first met them, you know, and it's like, okay, God. Let's let's see what these people are about, man. It's like you were kind of like the guy that I wanted to see that I never got to see. So, you know, and that first started with John. You know what I'm saying? And then you have people like Jermaine and, and, and Andre talking about you like that. You know what I'm saying? This is like your reputation, you know, preceded you. For sure. And, you know, it's like, man, it's like, oh, Bethany. As if, like, think about it, it's like Prince is the gig or Eric Clapton is the gig to have. When you move to Baton Rouge, Bethany was the gig to have. Right, for sure. You know sure. what I'm saying? 
you know, because Amos had the access to the studio. Yeah, we used to get to come up there and stuff. But it's like I'm sitting here, like in the aura of this is supposed to be here, Andre. <laughs> I'm just helping out because <laughs> Andre can't make it. <laughs> you know, Dude, I, I you know, and that's how that made. That's and really I, how I felt. Y'all should go listen to uh, some Deluge. And yes, I was just about to, to say that. And listen to Dre's excellent <clears throat> play. Deluge? I mean, it's, it's What's great Deluge? drumming. Hold on. Deluge. Deluge. Let me put that on my phone. It's Pastor Jonathan. Spell it. And, and Dre on drums. D-E-L-U-G-E. I listen to Jonathan Jonathan Martins Martins. and Erica for singing backgrounds on there, too. Okay. Ain't, ain't that right, Dre? Right. Yeah, I got this. Yeah, yeah I got this. Yeah. I forgot the band name. Yeah. Don, Don, what you say, Don? I said I got the CD of Deluge. Uh, it, well, that is on my. So when I, um, when I, you know, when I needed the CCM feel, I would actually listen to the band just to have a feel because it's not. Well, I band, yeah. But um, but I knew what I wanted to hear. Had what I wanted to get because it was a good mixture of what we come like he was covering you know covering all ground he he played it well. it was, it's a it's a great record, great record. Right. I mean Dre gave me a copy of it too so I remember on the, uh, I'm definitely going to check that out Harrison for sure uh, this is Dre uh, crazy. What's the name of that song, uh, Dre? Dre Hansen. Dre Hansen. Yeah, it's called Crazy. Crazy, crazy for you, crazy. Yeah. The, the energy that this dude is playing, this high yeah. level energy, man. It's on the day day crazy. Day. Yeah, it's like the energy hey. that this dude is playing. So on, um, hey. so yeah, on uh, you gotta go listen to uh. But you breaking up, brother? Breaking up. Yeah, you sound like Karen Clark when she used that. Uh... Oh my! God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm I'm tripping on how y'all driving at like midnight, man. Y'all Bro, know. first of all, first of all, Harrison been driving since the, the whole call. The whole I'm, story. I'm yeah. going, I've been trying to be quiet. I was That's gonna ask, like, where the first day lose album we did. Arkansas? Andre, you're going to have to say all of that over because we ain't here none of that, bro. Am I feeding back now? Yeah. A little bit. First of all, 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 I'm not gonna lie, that sounds horrible. <laughs> so horrible. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, somebody called Jeremy. Take Ron, you stupid, bro. What you say, Ron? Jer somebody called Jeremy Peters. Where's the sound man? <laughs> I, had to, I had it too close. Is this <laughs> Hey, Jeremy Peters been in here going hard the whole night. Talking about tell him, tell him this, tell him that. He just texted me asking what I'm drinking. <laughs> Hey, uh, but yeah, you were saying something about the first about the first album, Dre. What you said? Yeah, uh, just making sure y'all can hear me now. Yeah, yeah. So that was like the first album they lose did. So the crazy song, dude, it originated from like chicken picking on the on the acoustic. We were actually on like a conference in Seattle somewhere, and we were coming up with the song, and it was it was like a little country pick, you know, chicken picking song on the acoustic. And then do it. Once we got back, we decided we were gonna put it on the album, and it just evolved in rehearsal to this like, to this kind of like this R and B ish rockish, you know, you know, slam yourself into somebody rocking thing to this breakdown of like. like it was crazy how it evolved on us. So 
that's probably one of the main songs that kind of like made it really popular between the uh, between the uh, you know the youth group and stuff like that because it was just it was just wild and the energy from it like Dre was saying is so wild man like that night was crazy it really was crazy. Hey y'all, the last recording that y'all did when John was playing keys, bro. Um, I ain't gonna hold you. I probably watched that whole concert on like I think Brian Jones was going live, and me and Brian went to high school together. And I think he he held the phone for so long. So however long he held the phone, and I just kept telling him, bro, don't stop recording. Keep it up there. Keep it up there, cause I'm gonna tell y'all how I was mad at John. So every time John play i'd be like yo just call me whether you playing drums whether you playing keys just call me because i just be one see so i don't remember what i had to do i don't remember what it was but i was like bro remind me bro please remind me that y'all that you going to play he's like man yeah bro all right cool 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 so my homeboy takes me i hate when people call me and they got the drop on me like yeah man he over here we die i'm like hold on bro wait a minute let me call him they was in sound check and he ain't answer, so I'm texting him like, yeah, I see you. You ain't got to answer my phone. I see you, bro. But, um, bro, the, 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 like, I felt like I was in church on Facebook Live, though, because the dude who was playing bass, bro, I ain't going to hold y'all. Him and Dre was so locked till it was just like, I, I was like, I, I, I literally thought they was, I, I really thought I was listening to a CD, even though they was recording that joint live. I was like, bro, these dudes too locked for this, bro, to say this is live like this, bro. I'm telling y'all, I don't even know if it's still on Facebook Live or if if it came out, if y'all put it out or nothing. But, man, that joint was so locked, bro. I was just glued. I was like, yo, kill him, bro. Yo, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this, man. Like, uh, please don't sleep on uh, Andre's productions, bro. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so serious, bro. Like, his... his uh, you know, when he brought me in on this session, bro, like pretty much I'm like, man, what you need me for, bro? Because all this stuff is 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 like super produced. And I mean, bro, it's just like the tracks, like when he hit these like these certain tracks, I'm just like, bro. <laughs> bro it's, it's, it's been so like that, man. This fool been like that since he was like 18, man. I'm I'm just saying it was just like it was so Dre, cool. Dre like, Harris, can you do me a quartet rock album? I want to do a quartet rock album. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that was yeah. I'm I'm in on on I try to pull it out. Can I fill in on something? <laughs> uh, Go ahead, Tara. That I did notice uh, when I did move to Baton Rouge from all you guys being amazing drummers, but all the drummers that's on this feed that moved to this different <laughs> instrument. Like Dre Britton, right? John, you know what I'm saying, and Jermaine, because it's like some. <laughs> I don't feel like it was a lame made for me because I feel like I was already doing this, right? <laughs> but it's like, yo, I remember the first time I played with Dre. I played with Dre with his brother. I remember the first time I played with John. I didn't even know he played keys because the first time I saw him, he played drums. Right. Same with Jermaine. And I really just think that's cool because I never took time to learn nothing else. Right. And then they, they Tehran, they transition to new new instruments and they're making living off of their new instruments. You know what I'm saying? They that good. Yeah, because keyboard, especially uh yeah, yeah, especially playing keys. And us drummers, we definitely don't make what y'all um, if I could play the organ, I, still I, just I used play to drums. tell the Lord if he would give me the ability to play the organ, I would take away my drums. I wanted to play the organ so bad, but I would have been in the flesh so much. Well, you better be so, <laughs> you better you better knock the dust and webs off your fingers because I'm about to learn keys, bro. I'm about to give these drums up. I would have been the gospel liberati. Hey, I, I, I changed uh, instruments at the right time. Yeah, 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 that's what it is. I, yeah. I, I shout out. I, it's crazy too because not look at Erie. Yeah, E, pick up that bass, baby. Um, Jermaine is so crazy. It's, it's the crazy part about Jermaine is not only did he switch keys, but Jermaine played an organ like somebody been playing for years. Like organ, yeah. organ, soul like a mug. Yeah, I love organ, bro. Like, 
still, I mean, people don't really give Oregon a lot of credit except for gospel people or, you know what I'm saying, people that grew up in church. But, bro, Oregon has one of the most beautiful is tone. Like, the way the Oregon sits in the mix and you feel the warmth in the body of an Oregon, bro, when it's played right. Oh, my God. Like, that joint go crazy. I called John the other day on um, one of the recordings at Rose Hill. I was like, bro, I can't hear the organ, bro. I, I need to hear you on that organ because I know you playing some fat stuff like that. You're playing the body to, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, somebody, got, somebody got cartoons on in the background. Could you cut that? Could you cut that down so I can see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who is that? Who that is? That's probably Tehran. Oh, Tehran muted. muted. Yeah, Tehran. It ain't Tehran this time. Who you know. that is with the cartoons in the background? Not me. Everybody mute their phone. Everybody mute. Somebody, it's one of y'all because I ain't mute mine, so it ain't me. <laughs> 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 but, but yeah, man, just playing, bro, playing Oregon, bro. Like, that but, but, you, but Jermaine knew why he wanted to move to Oregon because the organists always get paid the more money. So yeah, he knew sure. why he wanted to get off drums. <laughs> For sure, bro. <laughs> Oregon, dog. And like I said, man, to be able to do that too. And just like, he, you know, you, we use our limbs, all our limbs as a drummer, but as in playing the organ, you basically use all your limbs, especially if you don't have a bass player. So that transition, it should have been smooth, but now you got to play all these chords and all this other type of stuff. So, bro, I, like, I don't know if I ever told you, Jermaine, like, you always killing on organ to me, bro. If I see an organ video of you, which is, is you know what I'm saying, it's like, I'm like, God damn, this nigga make this joint feel good because, like, the organist to me is the body. You know what I mean? So once you hear, like, once you hear a good dude on the organ, bro, like, you like, sheesh. But I thought King played a different instrument. I'm just around with it. I'm not like that. Yeah, because I I vaguely remember him messing with another. I forget what the instrument was. He He played played a rolling guitar, but I can't lead no praise and worship. Look, Ken is a, Ken is another one, man, that could that could put together a well produced track, man. Yeah, yeah. Ken can yeah, play I'm keys, bro. I'm telling you, like Ken can play keys. I ain't gonna say he no virtuoso, but Ken can <laughs> play, and play keys. And you be like, you be like, hold on, bro. Who this is playing? I'm telling, nah, I'm telling you, like he hey, yeah. like, don't let him fool you. He um, said he know eight chords, but he said he know eight chords, but I know we were playing the same chords to him, so. Don't it ain't him. fair that y'all able to move to other flames. You ever just seen something go up in flames real fast? That's that that's been playing keys I mean, behind somebody. Like like me and Jermaine saying, Don play keys as well, bro. Don plays wait, keys wait, 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 Don, speak up. Don Thomas, wait. speak up. What, what kind of keys you play? <laughs> Boy, Don playing organ, bro. Oh, yeah. I can unmute play. that mic, Don. Unmute. You keep touching the screen, Don. <laughs> hey, Quit playing, you know bro. What? Don on her like a security guard. Like, oh, <laughs> boy, you know you play. So Don, you mess with keys? Yes, indeed. Yeah, man. Don, you ain't answer. Yeah, bro, I mess with keys, bro. You know me, bro. low key, bro. I ain't making <laughs> no noise, bro. I'm just trying to. Bro, I, 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 I know Tehran can pluck at the base. Ruffin, can you play anything extra? Yeah. You got See, I'm the only one. one. I, mess with the keys I, too. Actually, I, I begged the Lord to let me play the organ. I begged him. And he no, said, I think I heard no you on organ before, man. I, huh? I, I think I heard you on organ before. Who? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I heard Melvin on organ before. If I'm not I mean, I was, I was hitting a pad. I, I know a couple of chords, but I wasn't playing in no service. It uh, was sweet. I, know, <laughs> I know for me, I could play, I could play a little keys and bass on this one, man. Yeah, that's it's like I said, man, for for cast like John, Jermaine, and 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 Dre Britton to just be so good on this one instrument and then you flip over and then go get another instrument and then you be so good on it. It's like at the end of the day, it's it's like my mom always used to say, bro, when you when you walk in when you walking into your 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 element or whatever situation is and your gift, like can't nobody take you out of that. And right. you, yeah, music is literally the gift, you know what I'm saying? Because like you just pick up an instrument and just be cold at it. You're like, dang, this nigga, what? And and it's like, I don't know for sure, Jermaine, but nigga, how niggas talk, it's like, man, Jermaine was playing organ in the year. Like Jermaine <laughs> out of nowhere just start playing organ. You like, wait a minute, what? 
Dre yeah, was the same way. Dre I was the same I heard they told me Dre was playing guitar. I said, nah. A few months later, I saw Dre playing guitar and he was playing good. I was like, so from that short amount of time? But it was like, oh, he was in the lab with Amos and stuff. I said, oh, okay. Right. I was subbing for the Negro on drums and he was right beside me on guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making even drums. That is so, the ultimate stunt right there, man. Yo, Dre. <laughs> Dre is playing at higher ground, you feel me, on drums. I was yeah. already excited because I was a fill-in. And, bro, we at rehearsal one day at higher ground, and Dre just walks in and, like, in the client people uniform, talking about, uh, yeah, man, uh, I got this guitar, <laughs> man. I'm about to try starting to learn, bro. So he said, check this riff off that I'm about to play. Me, Will, and Gordon sitting there like, where he come from with this white guitar? And just <laughs> music, yo. Like, he was like, yeah, bro, I just started picking this up. And then he started playing something else. And he was like, he was like, yeah, I'm about to learn this guitar thing. No one knew this was set up years later that this dude was about to be one of the best guitar players yeah. in Baton Rouge. Man. You feel me? Like, hey, I remember Dre having a conversation say, Hey man, I just bought me a good top, man. I'm like, yeah, I'm about to go. Yeah, man, man. I've been sharing on a little bit, man. I'm about to come on out. I'm like, I'm about to come on. I used to see Dre. I'll mean, be going to racetrack and Dre be in the Klein Peter truck. I'll say, what's up, Dre? What you doing? Slanging that milk. Ain't I telling the truth, Dre? Ain't I telling the truth? Slanging that milk. Man, slanging that milk. <laughs> hey, this question for Lil John. Lil John. I got off the hey, drum. I'm, I'm using your phone, Lil John. Hey, look, I know I've been asking you this for the last 20 years, but I still want to buy that DW snap, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly which one. Look, I'm. man, look, I, I promised I promised myself and I promised the Lord I am not selling anything else. Because whatever <laughs> whatever I sell, I wind up wanting to buy it back. So I'm not selling nothing. I'll else. let you borrow it back. Mm -mm. Man, I'm, I'm just done, trying to I'm get that stuff. There. It, it, it can be a community. It can hey, be a community. Uh, uh, red off Friday. It's like it's both hours. <laughs> I got a question. What I got a question with all the drummers here is, uh, and Jermaine, with you, you having it? Is it possible that 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 snare can be restored at all and given to anyone, even if you want to keep it? Yeah, we can. We does, can do that. The, does, the it still is, have my, does it still have my signature on it? The signature plate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It still does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the thing is, is the, the type of um, the type of um, I don't want to say love the type of um, case form. That's, it's going to be a little weird, but they have something called Drum Factory Direct. I just never got around to doing it, but I'm sure- I'll, give you, the, the I'll give you the money, bro. I just want to see it restored. I don't even want it. I ain't, I ain't got to pay for that. I got you. Well, hey, what is Drum way? Factory Direct, what's that? That's a website? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Drum Factory Direct, they have a lot of- uh, They make parts for, like, uh, say you got a purpose. Yeah. Well, no, they, they make parts that you might not normally be able to buy them store. Like, oh, you got a specific type of- Tom or specific snare. Say like you're getting a snare made. I, I got a snare made and I bought all my uh stuff to go on my snare from Drum Factory Direct. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, what are y'all talking about this? And I think this is really cool. What is a, a way that we can donate to somebody in need? Yeah, for sure. There's, there's so many people on here. That's for sure. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know. And and I, I know it's people who are probably watching and viewing who are in need. What is a way right. we can give back? Because I always think about that. You know what I'm saying? Is it, right, and that's, dope, that's it's, important. It's dope, it's dope bringing all of us together. But it's like, what is a way besides us just talking? What yeah, is a way sure. we can give back? You know what I'm saying? And how can we affect change? And Let's rap about it. Let's rap about it and then come hey, up with, can, a, with, with can, something. Can I more. start on that? Yeah, I was, just about, to, I was just about to say go to you, Jermaine. I was just about to say yeah. go to you. For, for a lot of the musicians that are producers, uh, I don't know if you know, if you register with BMI and ASCAP. ASCAP has something now where they have medical benefits. I don't know how deep it goes, but I have been looking into that. I have a heart for it, like the musicians because I was telling CJ, 
I've been back in the workforce. I've been working a nine to five for like 12 years and I have benefits and stuff, but I know both sides of it. I, I, I know um, chasing your dream and then your reality. Your reality is I have bills, I have kids, I have a wife, I have these things. And you never want your dream to take away from your reality. That's because this, that means a lack you of You preaching, brother. Let me write that down. Hold on. out on your responsibility to chase your dream. So what I'm saying is, is there are there are ways, if you just even go on Google, there are ways to get stuff like medical benefits. If it's somebody that needs something and I can help them, DM me on Facebook. I'll do as much as I can to help you. God knows that. He's but been a help to me. He's yeah. been a help to me. <laughs> Yeah, and me gotta, too, man. Gotta, uh, yeah. Let me know. Let me know as if if there's a family that this group picks, I'll get the church to donate fam- food or whatever. You know, I'm all about. We all about that. Yeah, yeah for sure, man. And, and like I said, that's that's the importance of this. Um, is is just giving back and you know what I'm saying making sure that we do we able to touch people, man. Whether whether we can help out or not, because like I said, it's enough of us in here. I mean, you know, to, to come up with some good ideas. So we can, we let's chat about it offline. And like I said, first of all, this is not going to be the last thing because we can't cover everything. Like if we would have talked about half the stuff we were talking about yesterday, we can still be on here for another, you know what I'm saying, three, four hours. So it's like, we'll break it down in a section. The time we come on, it'll be another section just talking about whatever we need for the next time. But we also, you know what I'm saying, we can do giveaways and stuff or see who, who wants to. Or uh, who needs some help or whatever. You, know what you can hear all of us up, DM us or whatever. Just let us know. You know what I'm saying? No shame. You know what I'm saying? Or nothing like that. Like, at the end of the day, we're here to help. And if anybody got any questions, anything, I know we ain't answer no questions. I'll do anything to like that tonight. But next time we'll do it. Tonight was questions really on what? How? People questions ask questions? From us, bro. Yeah, I'm saying. I got a question. I need somebody to tune me in drums. I want to come out of retirement. We didn't. It's people. Man, it's people I just, we just put you an A flat, Melvin. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but but I, I will. I say this seriously, man. When all of this COVID really gets kind of settled, I want all you guys to come to my crib, man. I got some space. We gonna sit and chop it up and reminisce. Let's do it. Hey, I, hey, I really was about to say that could even happen. Oh, CJ, you, CJ, K, Ron, y'all, y'all already know. I know some of y'all haven't been in my house. Man. Y'all know I got a big size for the house, man. Eat, yeah. I got hey, enough yard. Let's keep it going. Right, it's it's going it's to take a little bit more for me and Ken to get there. Yeah, it's cool. Y'all hey, y'all hey, y'all hey check it hey. though. Hey, we'll hey play. check this out. I'm in LA, so it's really going to take a little while for me to get there. What you say? Hey, hey, whoever crib we going to, I'm bringing the check sodas. Yeah, <laughs> come on with it. Come on with Not it. Mountain Dew, but Mountain Lion. I got the check sodas on come deck. On with it, Great strawberry cream soda. It don't matter. I got y'all. <laughs> I'll bring the alcoholic beverages. Hey, here, Pastor Mark gonna fire you. You know he said that's too many grams of sugar. <laughs> oh, what he but- don't know won't hurt. <laughs> he says 48 grams of sugar. We ain't supposed to be having no check cold drink. Drink some water. <laughs> That's funny. I, uh, hey, you know me. I'm old school. <laughs> Go ahead, CJ. Go we, ahead, CJ. We'll be we'll literally be talking for, for all night, bro. Cause all of us. I mean, it's just so much. But I just don't want to. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to have everybody on here. Just I don't know. But I say um, we about to bring this meeting to a close. So we can um, come back next week. I say we'll come back next week and just have a whole another game plan for everybody, man. We'll discuss some more stuff. We'll answer some more questions. But I just wanted the first one today was to get to know pretty much everybody. You know what I'm saying? That has a that plays a part in Baton Rouge history. I brought my brother Tehran on because Tehran, um, you know what I'm saying, plays a big part in the Baton Rouge history. Also, it just gives another view on what somebody else coming from the inside, like him and John was both from New. John's from New Orleans, Tehran's from Dallas, and they just both came down to into the culture. Uh, you know, so I, I thought that was a bit, that would have been a great twist. And just to have the the greats, the legends, like Mr. Melvin and Dre Britton on, like this was a pleasure, bro. It was an honor to just get to talk to y'all and to get to pick y'all brains about some stuff. Um, and just get to know who y'all was checking out, man. Who y'all, who y'all had y'all tape, y'all, y'all tape recorders listening to. 
um, and just, you know, just learning from that type of stuff. Um, tonight was pretty much, you know, like we, we definitely talked about a lot of music and stuff. And I don't want people to think that musicians only talk music because we don't. Like we, me and Jermaine, uh, we fuss and fight about sports all the time. Um, me and John fuss about, I fight with all of these dudes, bro. It's crazy because I'm not- Jermaine, okay. make up your mind, bro. You was a rep at LSU, now you got Florida State, bro. I told you I have two teams. I root for Florida State and LSU. So okay. why, you got, why you got LSU on? We don't what what you mean? Why you got what LSU on? This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> CJ, um, like, so many kudos to you for bringing all these fine gentlemen together. Man. Yeah. Yeah, man. You, you know, this is beautiful. And thanks for even inviting me in, you know, on the on the back end <clears throat> to, to come in something you already curated. I know we've talked about this years ago. And you know, yeah, for sure. I'm I'm proud of you, man. And what you're doing, like me too. Much, much peace hey, and many blessings to you, man. And, much. and great for putting this together because you put together everybody that I admire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I admire. And only people that's missing to me is like Devin and, and your brother and Lil Mike. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. We, I'm telling you, we all gonna come on next. You know what I'm saying? We gonna hey, do it too. Uh, we, we had to. We had to start with the great, bro. The legends, most, they, most, they, most they, definitely. They, like this is beautiful to me, and to see all y'all, man. Much respect to y'all. Like y'all don't know how much even just coming in here means to me and seeing all y'all. You know, it's, it's been a long time. It's been years, but I'm grateful for everything that y'all have done for me and. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to tell y'all this in front like this if CJ wouldn't have did this. Right, right. So, like, hey, I'm making, wrong. I'm making everybody a mink snare, bro. A mink snare? <laughs> mink snare, bro. <laughs> With fur on it? Yeah, bro. Okay. Hey, T Ron. Can you make me like a meat Yamaha motif? Cause I can't use the snare. You got that. <laughs> hey, kid, you better let them know, kid in here. You better let them know. CJ, hey, look. Know. And CJ, I'm gonna give you this charge. Oh my god. A charge to keep my head. Yeah, I'm gonna give you this charge because you, you spearheaded this, and I think this is beautiful. For us to pour into somebody. I want you to find that person. All right, cool. You know, I believe every square in this Zoom has something that we can give. You know, shipping and all that stuff on us. And I'm right. charging all of us, man, because I believe we can at least afford that. Because what we're giving, we're giving up free anyway. Yeah. Right. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Somebody has to get something out of this. I know this, you know, what, what's going on right now, it's, I feel like it's dope for everybody to see, but I feel like this is more for us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, this is making me feel whole in a whole nother place because I haven't been able to be with John, Don, Harrison, Chapman, Britton, and pocket, you know, pocket, you got roughing on here. I said the F word, and I'm so sorry, Rev. Oh, hey, be you. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, this is this is so beautiful to me, and I've been trying not to get on my cancer stuff and, and get emotional, but this is so beautiful to me. Hey, man, let it out, bro. CJ. Hey. No, I ain't finna do that, man. Tay Ron. I'm so Tay proud Ryan. of you. What up, what up? Hey, say, bro. I just want to say thank you. You know, if you know what I'm saying? Just for being you, even though you are like well known in the professional drummer industry, you still consider this home. You know what I'm saying? And for me, and I know I can speak on everybody here, if we text you or call you, you respond. Right. And that, that means right. that that means a lot, bro. You know what right. I'm saying? I know I'll when you was hitting that, that road, I'm I'm not hard, bro. And I don't mean to say it like this. I'm not shit. Y'all helped me become a man. Right. So it's like, man, whatever I have, 
I owe it to y'all too. <clears throat> I don't care what nobody says, man. Y'all are just a pig, you know, y'all are just as big of my heart as what I had before I got there. I needed y'all. I really right, well. Uh, right. So, right. Hey, man, and we feel, always gonna be there for you, bro. Y'all feel mm -hmm. so many boys in my life that I feel mm -hmm. like I didn't have, man, because I didn't have my nana, I didn't have my mom, I didn't have my family, what I was used to, you know. And y'all just embraced me for who I was. All I wanted to do was play and create a community. It wasn't about no competition. Right. I needed y'all, and that's it. I I, I have this question, and it's and it's serious. And y'all might say, "Oh, here come the old man." But if I needed to talk to y'all, and to, and I needed a shoulder to cry on, could I call, call me? Don't call man, me. Let me let me answer that. Let me answer <laughs> Don't that. Call me. No, but I'm being serious. No, let me answer Most that. definitely. I just experienced a major, major, major loss. I, everybody that know me personally know who I lost, and I talk to everybody on here. I think I might have said something to you, Melvin, on Facebook, but yeah. I, I reached out. I talked to everybody on here, and I can answer that question, yes. I got you. Because sometimes, and I say this, we can be in this arena, but in times of need, you get what I'm saying? You were there for me on Zoom, but you get what I'm saying? No, yeah. call the phone. Yeah. You don't know it until you call the phone. Yeah, yeah, hey, I was just asking in general, you know, for all of us, just in general. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, I was talking to Andre Harrison and his wife, Toya, the day that my grandmother passed away. Everybody know my grandmother raised me from four months old. That was, I called her mama. And uh, it's just crazy. And Dre Britton called me. and I mean, it just brought me to tears because he was like, he knows my family. Um, I talked to Ruffin. Uh, man, I talked to Tayron. Tayron was telling me his nana wasn't doing too well. Uh, man, like, everybody. I mean... We we here for each other. I believe yeah, right, right. Right. Can, can, I, can, I, can I keep this one hundred? And this is just off the record. Uh, yeah, man. Why why would you even? You know, I get why you say that, but you could definitely call us, bro. And it ain't got to be just when you need a shoulder to cry on. It could be Chris to say hi. Yeah, yeah no, but I, I was asking that not for me personally, but as a collective group. Oh for yeah, each yeah. Other. Check, just yeah. check it out, bro. I'm, honestly. On some stuff, me and Jermaine was talking some Christian stuff, man, like for two, three hours the other day. Yeah, bro. Like, real, real talk. Like, I love that Bible study. Hey, bro, like, we, it, it ain't about just music, like we said, bro. It's about life. It's right. It's really about life, you man. Like, honestly, bro, and I'm, I'm going to take my choice for it. You know, I know I, a lot of people don't understand this, and we should have got on this earlier, but I know we was just happy, man. We was all on here. Yeah. Uh, it's a struggle when you're trying to, you know, raise a family, especially being a musician. I, I don't care if you're married or single, bro. If you got kids, you know what I'm saying? You you need an escape goat, especially as a musician, because, you know, it's a lot of times, man. I know my sons, bro, my son's like five and, and eight going on nine. And I had to start hearing certain people in my corner say, man, you got to take the time out with your family. You got to take time out with your kids. You know what I'm saying? I love anybody that knows me, bro. I go hard behind family. And it hurted me so much because I was missing so much time with my, my kids because, you know, so so many things in music was pulling me. And, you know, I, I get those certain traits and stuff, but, man, you, you're right. We all need somebody that we got to, you know, have an experience. Oh, with. You right. Know? Come here. Hey, Ron, like, I, I honestly, bro, I play this every day in my head with you, bro. I'm like, what if I ever get that call to to go somewhere further than what I've normally traveled? You know what I'm saying? How would I prepare my family for it? How did you prepare your family for it? It's questions like that. I mean, I want. I'm going. Being that I've, 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 I've yes. you know, I've always had my time where, you know, I want to call you, but I'm be like, man, I know he's busy. I know he. I don't want to disturb him. I don't, I don't want to take him out what it is, but. You know, that was my my guiltiness. It, it wasn't from, you know. I'm going to tell you this, Ruffin, man. Ain't nobody. I thought I had it rough. But ain't nobody had it, you know, as rough as this kid. Yeah. And, like, traveling on the roads, like, that's, I ain't going to lie. That shit is amazing, man. But it's just like, you got to think about who's missing out. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. You know, and so I appreciate like times like this. We're all parents here. Yeah. So Ken, you about to have them, man. <laughs> Can't just can't like nah, no, man. Can't no. like no. I'm speaking but, into like, existence, man, bro. I, I appreciate this young man right here, and I appreciate his growth because he's withstood that you know with his mother and myself. Yeah, he's yeah. been without. Yeah, he suffered, <sighs> but he's so damn cool. Yeah. yeah. This children kid inspires, children me. Often this kid often inspires often. me, you know what I'm saying? And you know, I, I be needing that strength. And honestly, like we all need that from each other. We're not, nobody's exempt. Right. Nobody's right. exempt. And I feel like sometimes when you get into a position, people, people put you on a pedestal that you don't want to be on. Right, right. Right. You tend you, you you tend to forget. It's like man, I'm normal as hell. <laughs> yeah. I just want to be cool and I just want to play. And you know, there's neglect because right. it's like you're always away. And so when I think of things, I look at this kid, you know, he, he's 14 now. And and John, when I see Joshua, bro. Josh was a man. Josh I remember. A man. I, I remember he was in the. I remember he was in the back seat of the Camry. <laughs> I remember he was in the back seat of the Camry. It's like, man, now I see him. We got the the, the big hair. It's like, man, he was he was I'm looking at a grown. I'm looking at a grown man. But people don't understand the things that, like, you give up in order to live your dreams. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. Hey, bro. I'm gonna say this, man, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say nothing else for the rest of the, the rest of this call, man. But uh, now, this our bit. closing statements, anyway. So yeah, that's what I'm about to say. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 to piggyback off of what Tehran just said, man, like you know, you can give, you can, if you lose money, man, you can, you can make back Dude. money. If you lose like your house or something like that, you can get another house. Yeah. But the one, one thing you cannot get back is time. And so, man, you know, the thing is, man, you have to cherish the time that you've been given. I look at, you know, I look at my situation with my son and it's just like, man, the years, you know, that have gone by where I really didn't establish, you know, that type of bond and relationship with him. And now that he's 19, you know, he still lives. 19. 19. That's when he's 19. Yo, yo, wow. like, as long as I've been in Baton Rouge, that's a, that's how that's how old Josh has been. I've almost been in Baton Rouge 20 years, and Josh is 19. So I'm just saying, look at that time, man. Like time. Ken, the only time. one on here with no children. The, Ken, the only God. one. Only one hey, holding on. Hey, look. Um, that's that on the knee and sin. I ain't gonna talk about that on the knee and sin. You spilling it on the ground. <laughs> hey, look, man. <laughs> just messing with you. Hey, it's a beautiful day. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, John? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm done, man. I'm done. The next, you go to the next person. I know we got to wrap see, it up. I, I, I see this, man. CJ, Pocket, Ruffin, mm. Big Brother Melvin, both Dre's, Ken, Ken the, uh, the jack of all trades because he cuts the shit out of some hair, too. Oh, man. I'm talking man. about this. He's a celebrity boy. He don't cut everybody. Right. Big brother Don. <laughs> Big brother Don. And, 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 and John, man, it's like what I see here. Yo, this is a whole... Besides unity, man, this is an amazing brotherhood that, that has to start now. It's like we can't recoup for the years missing. We can only recoup for the years now. Redeem the time. I I want us to make a pact to start making a difference. Cause that's the only way, you know, I know I'm away and I know Ken's away. We gotta start making a difference for that city now. Yeah. What kind of event can we make an annual event, man? I didn't know. Yeah. You know, offline, like, we're gonna talk offline. Offline, yeah, we're giving our you know, stuff. Uh, events. That's I feel like events. That's no, that's, I'm talking about community. I'm talking about community, even that's yeah. quick. That's quick pop. 
events, we can do that all day. But the communication, right? You know, break. And there's so many people, just how we got on here today, there's so many people, like I think about Jack Jack. Jack Jack was my art when I was in That's Baton Rouge. That's the homie, bro. Yeah. I felt like, man, not Jack. Jack didn't just need me, man. Jack need all of us, man. And Jack ain't the only person. Right. It's so many people that's like Jack. Or man, we all need each other at the right. end of the day, man. Cause there's no right. way we got there's no way I got to where I was without you guys. That's fair. Yeah, there's no way CJ got to where he was without you guys. You know what I'm saying? There's no way John got to where he was. Nobody got to where they were without each other, man. So it's like, man, it's Start accountability is what's needed at this point. And if we don't start taking accountability, like we're not, not gonna affect nothing. Yeah. That's fact. If we want to affect change, if we want to affect change, man, we need to, you know, we need to start being accountable on all the shit that we say. Cause we all can have good conversation, but what are we gonna do next? Mm -hmm. this, this, say, let me say this to Ron. But what Ron, do? I'll tell you what we can do next. And I'm going to come from a different angle because um, I know all of us as musicians on here have made careers out of what we do as a talent and a gift. And uh, out of that, man, we've all been demanded of. And a lot of the times that, get, that pulls away from your family, it pulls away from your health, your life, the time, sometimes your legacy, things that you're trying to do as dreams that will set your grandkids up, that pull away from that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times we don't we don't recognize that most of the times you, you need to go back home and realize that, you know, even with your gift, even with your, your ability to do what you're doing, um, home is priority. I had to learn that even in ministry, that uh, it can't be ignored. So as men, I'll say that first, as men of your houses, as men of your lives, you have to take advantage and, and take responsibility of home first. Don't neglect it, nurture it. Why are you doing with something? Don't yeah. nurture home. And stop making our gifts be the priorities. A lot of the times that's what we do because we think we're good at it. We're good at it. We are good at it. That's what we God gave us. You get paid for it. But I think sometimes it, it, the other things that are important and that are a priority, we don't hold each other accountable for or to because nobody's talking about it. Everybody's talking about how good you sound. Mm -hmm. Everybody's right. talking about how, how well you played on the last album. Everybody's patting you on the back while, while the 14 year old, the 16 year old, the 13 year old, the 12 year old sitting at home and saying, hey, where my, where my dad at? So I, I, say that all to, I say that to say this, I mean, what can we give back? We can give back our responsibility to our families first. And then we can show the rest of these guys, these men, these, these musician people, how to, how to raise family like that. How, how, to, how to not make the same mistakes we made. How not to neglect home. How not to neglect our relationship with the Lord. Oof. How not to neglect relationship with our wives and uh, especially our children. And also, man, just really put in perspective that it's something that's God given, so it has to be given back to him. Sometimes we, we can live off of it for a while, and that's that's our choice. But uh, as, a, as a group of men that are understanding where we came from and where we're going and what we have to leave behind, we have to make sure everybody else does not go down the same path, in a sense. Yes, sir. And so set them up for success. Let's set the community up for success, the, the next musicians to be the next people that can get on a Zoom call and say, hey man, you set up the history of this city, of, of, of you know our churches, of our bands. I mean, let these next generation guys be able to say, man, well, you know what? We did that, but at the same time, I brought my family along and I didn't neglect them. And I ain't, I ain't tripping about, you know, I ain't sick, my, I, I'm, not in, I'm not in bad health because I've, I've stretched myself thin trying to do what I do. But you know, um, Man, this is, what I love about this is we get to speak in each other's lives. We get to really connect with each other on another level. Know what we've contributed to the city. 
and to each other. Like I would have never known I was affecting you like this unless you told me. Yes, so these are the kind of things that, you know, these are the, I think these are the things that are important to a person. Drums can't save a person. No. But, but, but no. my effect on you and the Christ in my life can. Right. So, so if I use the tool called drums to get to you, to say, hey, man, God loves you where you are, but he wants to save you and set you free. I know you've been going through that, but let me pray for you. That's accountability. That's responsibility to what, to, to what God has given you as a gift. He just used it as a tool. That's all it was. And sometimes, man, you use your platform as a tool. Amen. Whatever. That is, you know. Hey, man. You cannot, you cannot interject this, Andre. And that's the thing. I feel like I feel like I need to say this too, man. Like we should never use who we are to manipulate a situation. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of people out here that look at us and they value us more than we think. And right. we should never use who we are to manipulate. Manipulate. You know, people should feel comfortable enough with us to ask us, "Who is this Jesus you serve?" People right. should see that in us. If you serve, if you believe in Jesus, you should have some attributes of Jesus. It should be something about you other than you can play well, you have a lot of money. Right. It has to be something. There are people out there that, that, I, that I hate to say idolize, but they look up to us so much. And we have to have something positive to pour back into them. They should be able to read the Bible from our lives. They should be able to understand responsibility and how to work hard and how to get where they need to be without hooking yeah. and crooking from us. You know, we got to live that life in front of them. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Close us out, CJ. Anything, anything y'all need, man. Look, look, I'm going to phone call away. I ain't, look, I ain't that far. Yo, I'm Somebody, uh, Dre, put your number in this bro. thing. Uh, Dre, if you don't mind, put your number in this thing because I want to. I have everybody's number across the board except yours. I yeah, I was about to, I was about to say I don't have I don't have your number, Drake. I send it to you. I'm gonna have to start a new thread and just put everybody in this one thread. So yeah, we'll be straight. Um, nah, man. Uh, King, go ahead with your last minute. With your with your last thoughts too. Oh, my last thoughts, man. Look, I I love every last one of you guys on this thread. I respect y'all. I'm bad for y'all. And I can honestly say, say uh, from whoever is watching outside of this, I can close my eyes and absolutely trust every last person on here to cover for me if I needed them on it. Hey. Like that's how much trust and faith that I have. Lot. That makes a lot. Cat, uh, on this call, man. And um, it's nothing but love, nothing but positivity. Uh, I love this. I uh, can't wait till the next segment. And um, positive and, and light, man. Yo. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Jeremy Peters. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, tell Jeremy Peters quit texting me, man. We all <laughs> <don't know. laughs> He's texting everybody. Go ahead, big brother Don. Hey, so like, I ain't had much to say, but I, that Dre hit on a lot of different things. And, he did. Uh, he touched on some things. It woke some stuff up in me. I'm sitting here thinking about it, but uh, if the last two years, just I love all of y'all, and I love. Uh, we might not be together every day, but much love to every. It comes from the bottom of my heart, bro. It's sincere. But man, the last two years of my life has been so tragic, and to the point, man, uh, I forgot about uh, who I was, and I'm just sharing this first. About it, man. I really who I was in God, and and uh, music was the thing. You know what saved me was uh, my foundation in the church, and then just having uh, being able to play every weekend was the thing that saved me from losing. My Seriously, real talk on everything. You forget about all. This. I forgot about everything. Uh, some, and, and my life had been smooth. I'm 44 years old, all the way up until this point. And then tragedy, tragedy was hit one, one another. But it was, I think this God was where it transformed my life and put me in a better perspective. My mind is totally different. It's, and I, so not to be all deep in things, bro, but uh, 
we just need to really uh going through this time just be grateful for where you are in life and really uh check on one another and uh it's more than you know just get together but this this is transforming cj thank you so much bro i appreciate this it's gonna make us get together more uh when you know and even even if we even if you know we at home we'll call each other yeah so yeah man it's this is great for me bro it it did a lot for me just listening no transform tonight bro i appreciate all y'all bro. I love you, Don. Love, yeah, man. Yeah, bro. Oh, Real man. Talk. Real love talk. you, brother. At the end of the day, bro, Um, I, I mean, we're going to go to the next person, but Don, we already know it's sincere. You don't say too much. So when you say something, we already know it's going to be sincere coming from you. You know what I mean? If you if you opened your mouth to, to say it, we know it's sincere because you you quiet. Like, you don't really be saying too much, bro. Like, that's why when you said earlier, you're like, you know, I don't be doing too much or be into too much drama. Whatever, because you don't, you don't say nothing. But nothing. when you get behind those drums, all the all the talking is we we understand where you're coming from. So I get it, bro. And I, like I said, man, I just appreciate all of y'all for just being on this joint. Cause y'all could have told me no, y'all could have said nah, man. We don't care about Ben Rouge or we don't care about helping nobody else or we don't want to do none of that. Y'all could have been like CJ, I don't even know you like that. Well, y'all couldn't say that y'all lying. But you know what I mean? But we all did it, bro. You got a life. You know, like like I said, man, I'm just grateful to know all of y'all to to say like, man, check my DNA out. If you don't, go look on my Facebook live and you'll see all everybody that has something to do with me. Um, so like like I said, man, I appreciate it. And y'all keep telling me thank you, bro. But Erie started it because he wrote this long comment on one of my posts that I made. He's like, bro, I almost died out of that. We'll talk about that later. That's another story for Erie. But um, I was just like, I don't know what hit me. I say, man, you know what? We got to give back to our people. You know what I'm saying? The, the music community in Baton Rouge is not what it could be, but we can make it that way. It just takes somebody to change it. You know what I mean? It just takes somebody to say, and not somebody, but a group of people, because everybody that's successful, and if you think about it, like I said, I was talking about Adam Blackstone and BBE. They're successful, but it's a group of, of them. 1500 is successful, but it's a group of them. You know what I mean? Like other cases that we know, it's a group of people that come together. They all have this one mindset to say, hey, man, let's all bring our talents together and be great together because it's enough shine for everybody. And, you know, you don't be thinking about no shine. At the end of the day, you want to work. You want to make sure you can take care of your family. You want to do all of that. But we we got we got sidetracked back in the day of, of just being workers. You know what I mean? I said that earlier, too. It's like, we get sidetracked of being workers and you can be a boss. Come together with other bosses and put together a plan to say, just like we're doing, Tehran charges up and, and uh, uh, Harrison came right behind him and charges up some more. It's like, bro, we put all our minds together, bro. Imagine all of the stuff that can come from what we're doing now, just starting tonight. You know what I mean? But it's just going to take all of us. And at the end of the day, we all made the plans tonight to come on here to say, hey, we're going to do this for our community. We're going to give back. And now, you know, we got we just take this and run with it. I told everybody earlier today, it started, my, my dream started with something small just from talking to, you know, the people that I was looking up to. They go back from the people, now it turned into the people who they was looking up to. And the people who Mr. Melvin and Dre was looking up to, like, this is, it, it got bigger than what I even expected it to be. But it, like I said, man, it just takes all of us, bro, and to keep on doing it. Consistency is the key. You know what I mean? Sure. Everybody in here know we didn't all sure. shared it and tried to do something. So in order to see improvement, what you did, you consistently did that. If you wanted your foot heavier, you consistently worked on your foot. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is. So it just takes that same thing in life. And just, you know, training our younger people, man, like, Nothing gonna be given to you because one thing, one thing I hear from older K say, uh, the younger generation, and they speaking to me too. They say, um, "Man, y'all just want everything fast track to y'all. Y'all just want the big gig, but you it never work that way." Yeah, it does not work like that. You gotta go through those free gigs. You gotta go through those hole in the wall gigs to even to get there. You know what I mean? So, like I said, just with all of everybody just putting in their knowledge into this one pot and we just giving it all out. You know what I mean? I hey. The sky's the limit with this, bro, and we just gonna keep on evolving and keep on getting better and keep on, you know, what I mean, making sure that we make we get we bring topics that 
that touch people, you know what I mean? That can help somebody along the way. Because at the end of the day, like Tehran said, and I tell y'all, everybody this on there, it, it wouldn't be no us if it wasn't for y'all. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? We got it. We got to pay that back to y'all. But who else? I don't, I'm done. Who else? Finish. Closing remarks. Who else? Pastor, you go last, Pastor. You're going to close us out, Pastor. No, I, we need more than to pray us out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's going to do that. I'm going to say this. B before you find gentlemen, leave out of here. Thank you, CJ. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> like, for real. Thank you. See, I wouldn't be on here. I didn't even know this shit was going on. Well, I kind of did. But thank you, CJ, for creating this. Yeah. Big thank you. Like, for real, man. And I didn't... Real talk. I, I meant that when I said that it's like, it's going to take you. Like, you're that vessel at this point. Like, you set Bridge this up. Builder. You set this up, man. man. So if anything I want us to pray over, I want us to pray over you to keep you covered because oh, you I brought this together. Day, man. You know, no, 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 but un understand this, man. You brought this together. Right. You brought this together. It's like, I'm just hyped over here. I'm being a fan right now. Hey. I'm a fan because I'm sitting here looking at people, you know, when I moved to a city where I didn't know anybody, I became a fan of everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because anybody I met when I was there was talking about the next person. Mm -hmm. And right. that's what stands out about all you brothers. It's like, man, y'all wasn't about y'all selves. Y'all was giving to the next person. Right. <clears throat> and that what speaks volumes. That's what this industry don't have. Yeah. That's professors. That's teachers or master teachers, what we call. It don't matter that y'all names ain't called because of the big gig or none of that. Man, y'all are the big gig because it's like y'all gave me something to believe in. Thank you, John. Thank you, Jermaine. Thank you, Ruffin. Thank you, Erie. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Dre. Thank you, John. And thank you, Melvin, for keeping me at the church. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, you know, ain't no way you can go over Latanya's head. <laughs> you know? Ain't no way you can go over Latanya Tanyo's head. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. So, there's there's a blessing within everybody here and Dre Britton that you know I guess you have to leave. Y'all are all amazing. And I wish the world could know about y'all. Like just this little chat that we had. Eric, that was a big y'all. <laughs> 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 it's like I, I really wish you know Baton Rouge humbled me and I right I feel I, you I, I wish people would know how it is to come up from nothing and just shoot your way up right cause everybody played a part in what this person is today. Everybody played in part with that person with the yellow highlighted beanie, cer certified weirdos. Right. This is like, we are who we are because of the community that's on here right now. For sure. Not me just because of my Dallas community, I had that too. But it's like, like I said, man, Bat Rouge made me a man. Yeah. And I wouldn't be a man if I didn't come in touch with you guys. Right. So it's like, y'all are old a lot. If there was back taxes oh, yeah. <laughs> or, or, or interest, we owe y'all 79%. For real. For real. We owe y'all 79% because y'all didn't just give up your hearts. Y'all gave up your families. Y'all gave up y'all's time. And y'all owe everything that's coming. Y'all are owed everything that's coming. And people need to know y'all's names. Mm -hmm. I wish this was on like a Instagram or my Instagram live or some shit, you know, where people can see this because people need to know about y'all. Right. And 
I believe this is going to become a book. Right. This be, like, this, like everything here is a testament <laughs> of how things should be. Because it starts somewhere. It starts with people believing with you, people giving up themselves. You know what I'm saying? It's like John, Jermaine, Dre. It's like y'all was going on other instruments to give of yourselves for other people. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's the crazy part. People don't even know that. It's like, what? No, they don't. What? You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm appreciative. I'm a little tipsy now because I haven't had a, a few margaritas too much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, he said, be not drunken by dying wine, but I might have had one, two, a few. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, Boy, crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for this. CJ, you're the man, bro. You know what I'm saying? And Melvin, Pastor Melvin, like, pray us out of here. I got you. Thank you for this time of fellowship with these men of like mind and like attainment. Dear God, allow us to fulfill the words that have been spoken tonight. Let this seed germinate and grow into full fruition. Protect everyone. Protect everyone's family. Lord, we thank you for Brother CJ for spearheading this. Give him the strength and the drive. To continuing to continue doing so. Let if obstacles come his way, give him the strength to still continue. And we thank you for the blessings that are here and the blessings that are to come. And we look forward to this next segment. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 So good to see y'all. Love y'all. Amen. Hey, everybody dropping off. Somebody send me Dre Harris's name. Somebody send me Dre Harris's number. All right, bro, we got you right now. Hey, y'all, peace. Hey, y'all be brief.